Hello and welcome to the first video of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our goal is to become job ready to provide freelance services as a WordPress and Elementor page builder expert. So throughout this course we are going to cover and learn about the WordPress from the basic step by step we are going to learn about the advanced skills and after completing learning WordPress we are going to start learning Elementor which is really easy so that we'll be able to create full functional beautiful websites for our clients without writing a single line of code so without further ado let me give you an overview what we are going to learn from this specific video which is the very first video of our freelancing with WordPress and Elementor beginner to professional journey so here as you can see I have got these points Oh yeah, I'm going to talk about the overview of WordPress and I'm going to give you some context on other CMS available on the market. And then I'm going to talk about demand of WordPress on freelance marketplaces, going to show you some real examples directly from the marketplace. Then I'm going to talk about the difference between WordPress.org which is self-hosted and the difference with the uh, WordPress.com, the free uh, WordPress managed site. And then we are going to talk about if you need to learn any coding to get started and provide WordPress based services on freelance marketplaces. And finally, I am going to talk about the support group. So if you are going to follow me, watch the videos and learn, then you are going to find access to my private Facebook group completely free obviously and then you can ask me any question if you need any specific help regarding to WordPress and Elementor. So here we go. First of all let me start from the overview of WordPress and other CMS. So what is WordPress and why it is more popular than other CMS? So WordPress is a very beginner friendly, flexible and easy to use content management system and WordPress is this easy like if a beginner watches few video tutorials and if they try to create a website, they will be able to use WordPress to create beautiful website or blog site for themselves. And for its easy to access, easy to use functionalities, people are loving WordPress than any other content management system. So if I want to show you some other CMSs available uh, out there, so let me just click here, just take a look. We have got WordPress, Drupal, Zoomla, Magento, Shopify, Wix and many more content management systems available here and each one of these CMS has their own specialty. So now if I want to give you some brief about a CMS, let's say, let me take you here. As you can see, I'm visiting the WaltDisney.com website and as you are seeing here, the header section where we have got this menu bar with these menu items we have got this logo we have a, got a background image and all the contents available on this page if i want to show you in inspect mode just take a look these are written with long quotes long quotes available here but please don't worry these were just written by some other uh, developers but wordpress has made it easy for us to create and operate websites using their content management system so basically we'll be able to use pre-built templates pre-built themes plugins to create and optimize a website so easily so what content management system does here as you can see this website where you have got the, all these information some developer has developer has written these uh, contents and then they are using wordpress cms to maintain this website properly and if i want to show you some other popular websites here as you can see sony music which is powered by wordpress this bbc america this website also powered by wordpress if we just notice mtv news this website is powered by wordpress and if i want to show you a statistic from here let's say wordpress website or wordpress cms usage statistics usage uh, statistics I'm going to hit enter here and if you just notice WordPress now powers 39.5% of websites from all around the world. Just imagine it was uh, 13, uh, 35% back in 2020 but in 2021 it is powering 39.5% so the ratio is 
increasing just imagine it was popular it is popular and in future it is going to become more popular than any other content management system so you are going to have lots of jobs so i'm going to go with this uh, question now demand of wordpress on freelance marketplaces so here if i take you to my upwork profile and let's say fiverr as well if i make a search here for wordpress and hit enter you are going to find all the active jobs available on upwork as of now as you can see 11910 jobs available for wordpress as you can see avada wordpress landing page design and for this basic task you are getting 22 sorry 200 budget here reveal my entire site on oxygen this is another builder as we are going to learn about uh, elementor but oxygen in oxygen is another builder and then we have got many many job posts here wordpress design and just imagine the number or actually just check out the number 11910 if i want to take you to fiber and if i made a search here for wordpress and if I select this service here, you are going to find 85,970 gigs available on Fiber alone. People are making money by providing WordPress based services. If I open a few of the gigs from here, let me just open a few of these gigs and let me show you. Just take a look, 1K plus reviews here. So five orders in Kiwi. This person is currently working with five different clients. This person is working with five different clients. This person is working with three different clients. And this one doesn't have a job as of now, but it's totally fine. And I was been able to show you the demand here. And if you just roam around and if you spend few more minutes, you are going to find many more big personal. Wow, just take a look. 29 orders in QE. This person is currently working with 29 different projects from his fiber gig just imagine the demand here on freelance marketplaces so please don't worry about the demand even i myself is providing wordpress based website design elementary based website design services on upwork and fiber and i am generating money right as a freelancer so now let's go for the next question which is the difference between wordpress.org which is self-hosted and wordpress.com which is wordpress hosted so let me just show you the difference here actually explain so wordpress.org is a self-hosted platform we are going to host our website using wordpress but all the contents all the systems everything is going to be owned by us like we can use whatever plugin we want to use we can use custom templates we can use custom plugins we can use custom functionalities as we want we can make whatever we want in our website so this is the feature of um, self-hosted websites and on self-hosted website you will be able to find thousands of themes as you can see here let me just show you free themes available 3911 here we have got these popular themes latest themes you are going to find thousands just take a look 8039 themes available which most of the themes you can use completely free on your wordpress sites and then we have got these plugins to generate functionalities each one of these plugins has functionalities like rank map helps you uh, with seo works and then we have got many other as you can see classic editor akismat spam protection bb press jetpack gotenberg many many more plugins you are going to find to generate if i just click here you are going to find thousands of plugins hundreds of plugins to use to build some more custom functionalities on your self-hosted WordPress website. And you'll, you'll get many more other features as well, which you can do with your self-hosted WordPress website. But in WordPress.com, this is managed by WordPress. You are hosting your website directly on WordPress and it has got some uh, like limitations. So if I just want to show you some uh, features and uh, functionalities from his, their pricing and plans page as you can see with personal page their monthly charge is four us dollars per month and you won't get all of these functionalities which you can do with your um self-hosted wordpress website pretty easily and then we have got this function just take a look we, we don't have access to this even with this 25 very costly um package you don't have access to 
these features and even with this e-commerce just take a look if you want to run an e-commerce store you have to pay them 45 us dollars which is too costly comparing to your self-hosting or self-hosted websites and you might going to face some difficulties face some limitations on using your own custom designs own custom templates own custom plugins as well i'm not sure though but you have no limitations here on your self-hosted website and now let me just give you some example when it comes to hosting let me give you some example or some brief information of what is hosting and what is domain here which we are going to learn more in our coming videos for sure so let's say this page as you can see the waltdisneycompany.com this is a domain name or the address of this website and all the contents as you can see this logo menu bar this image this post all the contents are placed in the hosting right so we are going to learn more about domain name and hosting things in our coming videos as this is a part of our course so please don't worry and if you just notice the new york times this one is hosted on what uh, part by wordpress this uh, website mtv news this one is also powered by wordpress this bbc america website powered by website so, so wordpress sony music this one is also powered by wordpress and there are thousands of other popular websites which are powered by WordPress. So this is how popular this uh, platform is. And I have just shown the demand in the marketplace as well. So let me just take you back here. So our fourth question, do you need coding skills to get started as a WordPress uh, service provider? And my answer is no, absolutely not. You don't have to uh, learn codings to get started. But if you can learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript and PHP only in a basic phase, still you will be able to increase the possibility of the jobs you could do, right? So even I have got only HTML, CSS skills and I have got very few or let's say I am a starter in JavaScript but still I am being able to provide freelance services to my clients through Upwork, right? So now the clear answer is no, you don't have to have any um, coding skills to get started and provide uh, freelance services as a WordPress and Elementor specialist. Now let's talk about our Facebook support group. So as I am going to make this course a complete one and I'm going to make you job ready to start providing freelance services with WordPress and Elementor on Upwork, Fiverr or on any other freelance marketplaces. So I have got a support group for this specific reason and here is the support group if you are going to follow me step by step throughout the course and if you are ready to watch the videos ready to practice on your uh, demo works which i might going to provide you then i'd request you to join other than that please don't join in the group if you are ready to learn properly if you are ready to work on the practice works then send me a join request i'm going to add this group link into the description field below so that you'll be able to join here and you can ask me whatever question you have got regarding to wordpress and elementor if i know the answer it would be my pleasure to help you with the solution or with the answer so this was it for the video so thank you so much for watching this long and i hope to see you in the next videos thank you once again Hello and welcome back to the second video of our WordPress beginner to advanced course and the ultimate goal of this course is to make you job ready to provide freelance services as a WordPress and Elementor expert on Upwork, Fiverr or on any other freelance marketplaces. So without further ado, let me talk about this specific video, what you are going to learn throughout this video. We are going to set up a local server on our computer so that we will be able to create beautiful websites using WordPress without purchasing any domain or hosting so no cost at all you can start practicing creating beautiful wordpress websites and i'm going to walk you through how to download install and set up samp i'm going to walk you through how to download set up and install wordpress in the local server so that we'll be able to start creating beautiful websites and at the end of this video we are going to have our very first website created using our local server so without further ado let me just take you on the first step so let's go to x uh, x a m p p and hit enter and you are going to find this website apache friends this is the website from where we are going to download xamp into our local computer so let's just 
click here let me click here and it's going to load up here and as you can see here are the download options for windows linux and for mac computers so as i'm using windows i'm going to click here and we are going to see this downloading panel appeared so let me just click on save so that our download is going to be started as you can see it is a quite a big file 157 megabytes and it is going to take around half minutes to get this tool downloaded on our computer and while it is downloaded let me talk about our dedicated facebook support group where you can join and you can make posts with your problems with any question regarding to wordpress and elementor and i'd love to help you for sure so here this group i have created yesterday and we already have got 16 members and many are waiting and i'm going to approve them here right after making this video so don't miss to join this group all right to get my dedicated support so here we go we have got this tool downloaded now let me just click on this tool and we are going to click on this yes button here so that we will get the installation widget appearing right here so here it is working let's click on yes we are we want to continue the installation and then you are going to see this warning for user account control so we don't actually have to worry about this thing for now so let me just click on ok and then you are going to find this setup wizard let's click on next and make sure all these features are selected okay then let's click on next and you are going to find this option to select the targeted folder so it is currently selected to see but i am going to change the folder or the drive because on c i have got my windows installed for any reason if i face any issues with my windows i might going to uninstall the current version i might going to upgrade the windows i might going to decrease the windows to a uh, earlier version so if i for some reason if i forget to take the backup i might going to lose all my hard works which i am going to do so in this case what i can do i can simply select the folder from here and then instead of my um, instead of my let's say program program folder or I, i'd love to take this file into a new folder so let's say I'd, I'd love to go with this l drive and then i'm going to select this folder so let's click on uh, select folder here and after that let me just give a name here x a m p p and then let's click on next and after that you are going to find this language option to select so we have got two options dutch and language english so i'd love to go with english but if you know dutch you can simply select dutch as well so let's just click on next and after that you are going to find this option where they are suggesting if you need bitnami for zamp actually we don't need more information about this so let me just uncheck now let's click on next to go for it and as you can see setup is now ready to begin installing zamp on your computer so now if we click on next the setup is going to be started so let's click on next and it is going to work as you can see unpicking then um, it is going to work and it will take around one to two minutes to get this tool installed on your computer so let's just wait well while it is just loading up and i'm going to come back and here we go we have got the zamp installed on our computer and as you can see it is asking us do you want to start the control panel now and obviously we want to start the control panel because we want to start creating our first website as soon as possible so let me just click it selected or check check it and then let's click on finish and the zamp tool is going to be appeared here so now let me just cross this out and let's cross these out as well we don't need them anymore and let's just go back here and first of all to start the working process we have to start our apache and mysql module here so let me click on apache and it is just started as you can see running and then let's click on mysql and here we go we have got them running as you can see the green sign here and here the status as well so we are totally fine with the zamp setup now if i just show you let me just minimize this one and then let me show you the folder from my computer here it is on l drive just take a look we have got zamp so now let's click here and then you are going to find this ht docs files and here we have got these files let's keep them as they are and now i want to create a folder here so let me just click here and then i'm going to give the folder a name so i'm going to type out my website okay and if i visit like let me just take you on google chrome and if i visit 
localhost and forward slash my website and hit enter you are going to see that you are seeing this folder working here so we are all done with xamp setup and it's time to download and set up our wordpress so that we'll be able to create the environment to create our websites using wordpress so let's just go for it i'm going to wordpress.org wordpress.org and hit enter and after that we have to click on this get wordpress from here and then we have to click here download and install and then we have to select download wordpress 5.6 so let's click here and you are going to find this download um, opening panel so let me click on save and the tool is going to be downloaded and i have got the tool downloaded instantly so let me just take you on show in folder and after that i'm going to extract all the files containing this uh, zip folder so let me just click here then extract all then click on extract and we are going to see that this folder has been created here and let's just wait while it is being extracted and here we go we have got wordpress extracted now let's just open this folder and then i'm going to copy all the contents from here copy and let's go back to the zamp folder here so again let me just take you from the beginning so here i'm on my this pc and then i'm going to this um drive and after that i have to click here on zamp and then we have to go to ht docs and then we have to go to this folder my website or whatever you have written you can give any name to the folder so now i'm going to click here and then in between this folder or inside this folder i'm going to paste all the information i have copied from wordpress as you can see it is being pasted here so let's just wait and here we go we have got wordpress files here now if i visit let's say here and then if i visit this page let me just reload again localhost slash my website so you should put whatever name you have given there so let me just hit enter and you are going to see this wordpress installation or wordpress setup widget so let me take it here let's just delete all of these things from here all right so here we go now as you can see you are seeing the language selection option you can select whatever language you want so i'm going to select english united states from here then let's click on continue and after that you are going to find this page where they are saying us to provide this information database name database username database password database host triple prefix etc etc so now where we can get this database name so let me just take this information here uh, i'm actually going to copy this information and let me paste them here so that i'll be able to insert the information here right so here let's go back again here on our local host on this web page and then we are actually going to create a new page here and i'm going to type out local host and instead of my website i'm going to type out php my admin okay and then hit enter and it is going to take you to your php my admin control panel page and from here we are going to be able to create a new database create a database user password etc so let me click here on databases and then i'm going to create a new database with a name so let's say i want to give this database a name let's say my website and then click on create and you can actually put whatever database name you want to give so let me just click on create and we have got the database created now let me type out this information here i have given my website as the database database name now let's go back again now it's time to create users so as you can see my website is selected now let's go to this privilege option click here and then you are going to find add user account so let me click on add user account and then you are going to find all these informations as you can see so i want to give my username as let's say um rafi and host name it should be local sorry local and local host will be automatically selected and then choose a password so i'm going to give the username copy the username or let's say type out i mean to type out so it will be required later and then the password so we are going to generate a password from here so let's click here to generate and then i'm going to copy this whole password and let's 
go back again here and I'm going to paste it here let's go back here and then make sure you have clicked on this check all button so that all of these permissions are going to get by this user so now let's click on this go button right um, right bottom okay bottom right so let me click on go button here and here we go we have got this database user account created as well now let's go back again we need we have created database name username password now we have to work on database host we actually selected to local host and about this table prefix if we want to create multiple multiple websites under one database we need to work on this and we are actually going to explain few more things about this in uh, future so let's just go back here and we are going to cross this out we don't need this one so let's click on let's go and here as you can see we have we have to provide this information the database name username password database host and then the table prefix so let's go back here again and we we provided database name to my website so let's copy my website and paste it here and then the web username was rafi so let me just type it out here or actually paste it out here and then here we have got the password so i'm going to type out or paste the password here and then database host is selected to local host which we have selected and then the table prefix by default we have got the table prefix to wp underscore but if you are working for a client for the security reason i suggest you to change this table prefix so let's say i want to put ah or whatever you want a z or whatever you want you can keep so i'm going to take a note for this table prefix as well which i'm going to uh, change here so i'm going to take you here table prefix okay as a underscore and then let's click on submit and here we go now all right sparky we are done with the setup of the database and username password whatever it is and then it's time to click on run the installation so that you'll be on the wordpress dashboard installation so here we go wordpress setup here we are now setting up our wordpress so i'm actually going to take another note so here it was for database and i am going to take another note here it should be for wordpress dashboard or wordpress let's say okay and then uh, as, as you can see here the site title you have to provide the site title of your website so we can give a site title let's say uh, my new website or my new wordpress website and then give the username this is going to be required when you are going to sign into your wordpress dashboard right so now i'm going to give a username here let's say rafi so i'm going to keep the username from here uh username and password so i have selected the username to rafi and i'm going to give the password so i'm actually going to um, use a easy password so i'm going to type out one two three four five six seven eight nine and then I'm going to add this at the rate at the end. So copy. And then as you can see, this password is weak. So they are suggesting us to confirm uh, use of weak password. So let's say confirm. I'm going to update the password here. Okay. And then you have to provide your email address. So I'm going to provide my email address mdrafi9 at gmail.com. But as we are working on our local server, you are not going to receive any email from WordPress for sure. So don't worry about this. And regarding this option, search engine visibility, as you can see, this is an option. There is an option discourage search engines from indexing this site. So basically, this is for SEO purpose. So as we are creating these websites for practice purpose, we can simply click on discourage search engines so that Google, Yahoo, and whatever Bing or whatever uh, search engines are going to index our site, they are going to be restricted. Now let's click on install password to inst sorry, install WordPress. So let me just show you. And here we go, success. WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. It's time to log in to our WordPress backend. So let me just click on login. And then we have to provide the username which we have created, Rafi for WordPress as you can see. And here's the password. So I'm going to type the password here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then at the rate. Now, if I click on login, oops, the password is incorrect. So I made some mistakes. So let me just copy and then paste it here. Now let's click on login. 
and here we go we are on the back end of our wordpress website right this is the wordpress dashboard so we have successfully created our very first wordpress website using our local host so let me just show you what is the web uh, website looking like just take a look we have got this beautiful web page right very basic but beautiful this is the starting so let me just cross it out let me just sign out from here and let's say i want to close everything from here and i want to visit this website from a new tab or actually in a new browser so let me show you in a new browser so that you will see that i'm going to type out local host slash uh, my website now we'll be able to visit our website from anywhere right we'll be able to sign into our wordpress backend from any browser of our computer so let's say i want to sign in again so i'm going to type out um wp uh, hyphen um admin okay let's hit enter and you are going to find this login page right so now let's put the username again rafi and the password was one two three four five six seven eight nine at the rate and now let's click on login and here we go we are being able to access the wordpress backend and now we are going to start customizing this website and we're going to learn more about wordpress backend and the website things in our future videos all right so that's it for this tutorial and thank you so much for watching this long video but let me recap again what we have done throughout this video we have downloaded installed and set up our zamp local server we have downloaded set up and installed wordpress so we have got this wordpress website so far we have got this wordpress backend and we're going to learn more about these functionalities more about plugins templates etc in our future videos thank you so much again and please don't forget to like this video if you have found this video helpful and please share this tutorial share this whole playlist share this whole course with your friends so that some of your friends will be benefited as well so Thank you again. I have to see you in the next video. Bye bye. Hello and welcome back to the third video of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services on Upwork, Fiverr or on any other freelance marketplaces. So in our previous lessons we learned about the basics of WordPress which you should know if you are planning to get into this career and in the second class we learned how to set up a local server on our own computer so that we don't have to purchase a domain and hosting to start creating websites and start practicing and learning the process and then we created our very first website throughout the second lesson and in this video we are going to talk about the wordpress backend and dashboard and we are going to talk about all the other tools available on the backend so without further ado let me uh, okay so if you have missed my previous videos you are going to find these videos in both of those playlists and i'm going to attach this playlist link into the video description for you so you can access these uh, previous videos easily so without further ado let me take you here first of all let me show you one error so here we have created as you can see localhost slash my website if i hit enter it is going to uh, show us an error here we go and the reason is we didn't started our xamp server so let me just open xamp from here xamp control panel so you have to open up your xamp control panel and then you have to uh, start apache and mysql module to start being able to view the website or customizing whatever you want so let me let me just click on start and start for mysql so both of the apache and mysql is now in running mode let's just minimize this one and now if i just reload this page we are going to find out that we are being able to access our newly created website now let me take you to our wordpress dashboard and again in my previous video i have mentioned or showed how you can go to your wordpress backend so let me show you again wp hyphen admin so you already know the process so we are going to provide our username and password and we created every information in the last video so let me just go back here and here is our username and password so you should already created your username and your password and you have settled up everything for wordpress backend so let me just copy and paste this information here and then let me click on login 
and here we go we are on the wordpress backend and or we are on the wordpress dashboard and as you can see now we are going to talk about everything available here and you're going to i'm going to give you some uh, information regarding these panels as well so here as you can see dashboard welcome to wordpress and then here we have wordpress is mentioning us some next steps as you can see you can start creating your first blog post you can start adding your pages uh, and they're suggesting the about page set up your home page and view your site so if you click here we are going to be able to see our site if we click here and actually hover over here and you are going to find this visit site you can visit our site from here right so let me just cross them out from there and then you have got manage widgets manage menus turn comments on or off learn more about getting started so basically i'm going to open up my uh, blog site learners world and i'm going to give you some examples here and let's say achhol rafi which is my portfolio website i'm currently working on it uh, so it will be much improved hopefully so let me just explain here so first of all as you can see they're telling us to get started to customize our site so if i click on customize your site button from here we are going to find all these options from where i will be able to change our logo we are going to be able to change our site identity information so if i just click here as you can see site title i can change this site title to something else i can change this tagline to something else so if i just hover over you are going to see uh, here as you can see my new wordpress website just another website because this is here written uh, so if i just make a change here this is our um okay first website as an example okay and if i just click on publish and let it be saved okay so it's been published now if i reload this page again and or if i take you on a new tab we are going to find let me show you if i hover over here you are going to find this is our first website after the site name right so this is the way uh, the prettiest way or the easiest way how we can uh, customize our website so let me just take you back here so we are going to talk about the customizing thing we are going to make beautiful beautiful uh, portfolio websites e-commerce website business website agency website and many other types of website throughout the course so don't worry we're going to talk about these things later and as you can see here site site health status it is going to show us about if there is any error available or not and uh, some of the information which we are going to learn about in our future videos so we don't have to talk about these things and from here this quick draft if you have got a sudden idea on your mind you can simply type out information about that idea and then just keep a draft for it so that you'll be able to go back here on your post tab and then you will be able to customize this post to make it so i don't want to talk about these things as of now because if i talk too much about these things you might going to get confused if you're a beginner here so here we have got at a glance we have got currently one demo post one demo com comment five demo pages available on our wordpress it came along with the installation and currently we have got wordpress 5.6 running with 2021 theme which is 2021 uh, the current year okay so wordpress um, most likely publish one themes each year all right and then we have got this activity where people as you can see recent comments someone has made a comment here which is uh, really a default comment and you can simply uh, see the options unapprove you can un unapprove the comment you can reply to the comments edit spam trash so we are going to talk all of these things later but first of all let me talk about these sidebars and these are the information which are real important things to know about so as you can see after um, landing on the WordPress dashboard, if I just reload again, you will be landed here on the dashboard. Then you are going to find this home tab, which we are currently on, on the dashboard homepage. So we are being able to see all the information here. And then you are seeing this update step. So if I click on updates, we are going to find all the information regarding where I we have to make the update. So as you can see, current version is 5.6 here and you have the latest version of wordpress so from this page you will be able to update your wordpress version itself so if i want to show you from here let's say wordpress.org if i take you here and if i click on get wordpress and download and install you are going to see that the current version is here 5.6 which we have 
downloaded and installed in our previous video so we have got the latest version so it is showing us you have the latest version of wordpress but but you might going to see that the version might be changed 5.7 5.8 then you have to make some updates from here so you can do this by simply clicking on this update button which will be appeared here and then we have got they're suggesting as you can see plugins the following plugins have new versions available so xmod anti spam so we can simply click here and then click on update plugins so that the plugin will be updated but we are going to skip this for now and then we have got this theme as you can see the following theme have new versions available Available. check the ones you want to update and then click updates so this theme has although we have got the new theme but this theme has an update so they are suggesting us to make the update so we are going to skip all the update things for this video we are just going to learn about the back end throughout this video and we are going to make the other stuff in our coming videos step by step so let's just talk about this post section as you can see this post section and from when, whenever we are hovering over our cursor here, we are seeing all posts. So if I open up this link in a new tab, let me keep it open. We are going to find all the posts that we have made. It could be published, it could be scheduled, it could be, let's say, draft. We are going to see all the post, post list available there. And then we have got this option, add new. So this option, you already know. So this option is to create a new post, publish a new post on our WordPress website. So I'm going to show talk about this and show you some examples soon and after that this category so let's say you have got a website for for passive income and you are going to talk about how to make money on youtube specific how to make money as a freelancer in a passive way second category so you can simply categorize them like you have made a post about how to make money on youtube and then you just specified this uh, blog post with the category of YouTube and then let's say you have created a post with the category of let's say how to make money passively as a freelancer then you can categorize it freelancer so if I just show you an example here actually it would be better if I just notice uh, if you just notice here whenever I am hovering over on learn I'm seeing that freelancing is a category YouTubing is another category blogging is another category so if I just open this link in a new tab and if I just open this link in a new tab these are listed with categories so you are going to find all the information about freelancing here how to start freelancing email marketing as i have mentioned something here about freelancing so i keep this post in under freelancing category and then as you can see how to become a virtual assistant best graphic design courses and all the poster about here all the poster about freelancing and then if you just come here you are going to find that how to start a youtube channel because we are visiting all the post about um, which are listed with YouTube in category and we are going to learn about these stuff step by step so please don't worry so as you can see all the posts are about uh, this YouTube in. so let me take you back here again and then we have got this tags so let's say you have created about freelancing you have created 100 posts or more than 100 posts or let's say 1000 posts who knows you might going to continue writing posts and then if you just want to get some posts easily you can categorize them or actually you can um, define them with some specific tags so that let's say i have started like i have added some tags here uh, for this post how to start freelancing so i can put it start freelancing and then for this post let's say this one start freelancing and for let's say this one start freelancing so if whenever i'll try to use start freelancing tag on somewhere on this website maybe on the search bar i'm going to find all the posts available with this start freelancing hashtag or tag actually not hashtag tag all right so we are going to learn more about these things in our future videos so you might going uh, getting some confusion if you are a complete beginner so pardon me but i'm going to i'm just trying to give you the best information possible all right so these are the things so i have created uh, sorry opened this page as you can see here from all posts again let me take you back so it would be organized all right, so all posts. We have got currently one post which came along with the WordPress installation, right? So we are seeing one post here. Now we'll be able to edit this post. We'll be do quick edit. We'll, we can make it trash so that it won't be available here on our all post section. It will be here on trash. So let me just, uh, okay. So let me just show you by clicking here on this trash button. 
and you are going to find that we have got no post available on our WordPress site but it is available on Trash. Now if I want to restore it I will be able to do this. I can restore this post or I can delete this post permanently. So let me just restore so that I will be able to give you some more hints. So if I click here we are going to get that again all post as you can see on draft and as you can see who is the author the author is Rafi which is me in your case you are going to be the author or whoever uh, the person uh, managing the website they are going to be author and then here we go we have got the category and we are going to learn about this category thing um, in our previous uh, sorry future videos right and then tags and then we have got this comment section you are going to find all the comments uh, about this post and then last modified or when the post was published all the information available here and now let's say you want to create your new post create a new post how you can do this simply if you click on add new button or if you click on this add new button or you can hover over here and then if you click on this post button all three sections all three options are going to work same for you so let me just click here on add new and as you can see I'm going to click on cross as you can see now we have got the interface to start adding our content so here we are going to provide our title we are going to provide all the contents here then we are going to do all rest of the settings of this post here right and we are going to talk about this in our future video or the next video right so let's go back I'm going to cross it out then we'll be able to category categories in the next video as well or and we are going to talk about text in the next video as well so please don't worry now let's go for the media section so in the media section whatever content we are uploading not content actually whatever image videos gif file and the visual things actually whatever we are uploading on our website we are going to find them on this library section so if i click on library uh, okay so we have got nothing here because we didn't upload it one single image yet but when we are going to start creating blog posts we are going to add featured image we are going to add uh, other image or videos maybe and these are going to be appearing here most likely uh, mostly the uh, image stuffs right and then we have got like library add new if we click here we are going to find this um, upload button so that you'll be able to upload image videos and whatever it is and we can upload the maximum file size is here 40 megabyte and it depends on your server uh, if you can increase the size of this limitation then you can upload let's say 500 megabyte as well 200 megabyte as well so it, it depends on your uh, hosting server right and then we have got let's say pages so here are the pages as you can see all pages add new so from all pages again you are going to find all the pages available on your website as of now and currently we have got these default pages as you can see about blog content create your website with blogs privacy policy sample page these are the pages available as of now and if you want to create a new page you can simply click here on add new and then the same process as we have done or actually as we are going to do for the post we are going to do the same here for the pages as well and if I want to explain some more information as you can see here on my website I have got home this is one page about is another page learn is another page contact us is another page so if I just open up this contact page this is a page right so this page is containing many information about me right how to contact me my phone number my email address and other stuffs right and here I have got the Udemy links or whatever it is um, available so these are the examples of pages and we are going to create new pages by clicking on add new right so we are going to learn more about this next for sure and then you have got this comment section from where we'll be able to moderate the comments like if you want to approve a comment you can approve it if you want to disapprove or unapprove we can unapprove them we can trust them we can make a spam if someone just uh, do some spamming we can mark it for spam we can reply on a comment from here as well so we are going to learn these stuffs as well so let's go for appearance this is one of the most mostly used and most important part also so as you can see from appearance you are going to find information about your theme you are going to find information or find the option to customize your currently active theme then you have got the widgets so what are widgets so first of all let me talk about these themes as you can see uh, we already know we are using 
2021 theme so if i just take you to themes from here you are going to find we have got on our wordpress we have got 2020 2019 and 2021 uh, theme installed but we have currently got 2021 is active but if you want to activate this one simply we have to click on active button here but we are not going to do this it is um, we are going to upload themes custom themes we are going to upload premium themes in our future videos for now let's move on we are going with this customize option so let's click on customize and we're going to find the same things we have already seen in the first part of this video so let's go back and again you can customize everything you can customize the color of this blog site uh, let me show you an example if i change it just take a look all right so color has been changed just take a look how it is looking like so we're going to keep it as it is i'm going to cross this out and you're going to talk about this letter now let's go for widgets so what are widgets so these are the things you are going to find as you can see i have got this widget here which are custom code images added for my courses and if you notice uh maybe no no i don't have any widget so this one is a foot footer widget right so this one as you can see email subscription so this one is a widget so i have made this using an email widget and we are going to learn about these things later so widgets are basically being used for let's say for the sidebars for the footers uh although i don't have anything here on my uh, footer widget here and then some people also place widgets here on this right after their header section and then some people place widgets on their left side bar as well so we are going to learn about these things as well and these are really easy to use as you can see simply drag and drop and you are going to customize everything you are going to be able to customize everything as you need by using widgets and many more functionalities many more uh, features you can add actually features uh, maybe functionalities or options you can add on the site verse or whatever you want um, throughout your blog or website and now let's go for this menu section so we are going to create menus obviously and as you can see currently we don't have a menu if i visit on the website we don't have oh, okay so i have got already menu here as you can see home about contact uh, blog and contact so they, by default we have got these menus but we are going to create customly so that you'll be able to learn step by step so we are going to work on these menu things as well and then we have got the background so again it is lending us to this background and you can actually instead of this color you can choose an image for the background to be displayed so let's just keep it as it is as of now so let me take you back and then we have got theme editor here if we need custom codes to be enabled here then you can simply um, put your codes if you know html css php javascript then this is the place for you other than that we don't have to touch this field ever now let's just move on let's move for plugins as you can see from plugins you are going to from the first option you are going to find installed plugins all the plugins currently installed on your website and from this one you can add new plugin and then from this one you are going to be able to edit your plugins if you have if you have got the coding skills so now with plugins we build functionalities we add functionalities in our wordpress website so these are really a big aspect a major part of a wordpress management or wordpress managed website because using plugins we can make a website simple website as in e-commerce website using plugins we can do seo stops on our website using plugins you can add these pop-up forms these um, uh, sign up forms whatever it is so we are going to learn about this for sure so let me just show you as a, at a glance here i'm going to click here on plugin and it is going to show me all the plugins available here on my website as of now from it is we are actually on installed plugins whenever let me just take you back on dashboard again and if i hover around plugins you are going to find this option install plugins if we click here we are going to visit on the same page right so currently we have got hello dolly and <clears throat> Akismat and Tispam, these plugins installed, although they are not active on the site. So we are going to talk about this later. And then we have got add new. So if you want to add a specific functionality on the website, you can simply click on add new button from here. And you are going to find, as you can see, um, thousands of plugins you are going to find. Let's say social, uh, sorry, social here. 
and you are going to find hundreds of thousands of plugins based on the availability and you will be able to make beautiful beautiful functional effects on your website using plugins right so now let's just go for and we are going to show you i'm actually going to show you how to add uh, how to set up plugins for a uh, better functionalities on your website and then we have got plugin editor i don't want to go there because i don't have the skills yet and still i'm being able to provide the services so please don't worry you don't need at the initial stage you don't need coding skills to start providing freelance services with basic wordpress tasks you can do wordpress installation you can set up a complete website from the scratch still without the coding stuff right so now and even if I just show you some examples, if when they are in front of my eyes, why shouldn't I show you this website I have created myself? I didn't had the coding skills and this website I created by myself. I didn't have that coding skills, right? So I don't, you don't have to worry about these stuffs yet. Now, let me just take you back here. And then we have got users from here. You are going to find all the users. Uh, user accounts here available so for example let's say you are going to employ one of your friend or maybe your virtual assistant to manage your website so this is your user you are the owner obviously you are the administrator but if you click on add new you are going to find these options to assign someone else to your website so that they will be able to add contents customize website customize contents and make whatever change you need right so we are not going to talk about this but when you are going to work with any client if they are not tech savvy if they don't know how these user things works you might going to uh, you might have to help them uh, get your user account created throughout their uh, wordpress backend so now let's go for profile from here you can change your uh, image by using gravitor and then you can change more information about yourself so i'm not going to spend time here on this part this is not that important as of now so now let's go for tools from tools you are going to find like available tools okay then you have got import export import then uh, that means whenever you want to import any json file or let's say any xml file you can simply import your blog post from other website then you have got export if you want to export everything available on your wordpress website you can simply click on export this works as a backup although this is this is not going to give you the complete solution we have got some plugins where you have to work so now let's go for the settings now from settings as we do for any other devices any other functions any other platforms settings works for settings right so let's go for the general setting we have got many more options as you can see general writing reading discussion media permalinks and privacy so let me just go with general first and as you can see from general setting we can do the same stuffs which we have done on the uh, on the beginning of this of the video from the customized section we changed this tagline and again we'll be able to change our site title you'll be able to change your tagline anytime we need right from this general setting and then we have got wordpress address url as if now we don't have this https so let's keep it as it is now but when you are going to implement this https if i just show you here this connection is secured it is showing me this connection is secured because we have got https enabled and if i take you to one of my portfolio websites all right so here my website has loaded and this is one of my portfolio sites i am seeing some uh, things broken because i have changed the theme on that site but i didn't check this out but if you just notice i was here as you can see not secure because we don't have the ssl thing and we are, these are really advanced stuffs and we are going to learn in our future videos so can uh, as of now we can simply ignore and let's go back here uh, where we are we are here so i'm going to cross them out all right so here we can we can uh, we have to make the change here on https https after integrating all the required things uh, on the back end and with any plugins if needed and here we go we have got the administrator email address so uh, from which email address you want to access this website or your main email address for this website this is what actually administration email address and then we have got membership anyone can register if you want to get others to make comments by registering if you want to get others to uh, watch contents read contents by getting registered you can simply select this option so these are a little bit of advanced though not that much um, complex but 
we are going to talk about this in future when you need it. So as of now, I can simply uh, keep them as there. And after that, you can change your site language. You can change the time zone. So I could select, let's say, uh, plus six as I'm from Bangladesh. So plus six is our uh, time zone. And then we have got time uh, date format. You can simply select what is the date format you want to put. So I'd love to keep it as it is. This is not a big deal. And then week starts on, uh, let's say we, our week starts from Sunday, and then let's click on save change. So we are going to talk and learn more about these settings in our future videos when we are going to do the real project. So I'm just going to give you some context. So let's go for writing here. From writing, we are going to find, as you can see, default post category. From here, we are going to be able to set the default category to be category for each of the posters uh, or posts. So if I just open one uh, post, I don't know if I'll be able to show you the category information here. If I have kept them open, yeah. As you can see tags, I have I, I, I was been able to show you the tags. So if I click on MailChimp, I am going to find all the MailChimp based posts which are tagged with this MailChimp um, tag here. So my internet connection is little slow, so I'm not going to uh, spend more time here because these are the things we are going to learn while we are going to work on actual uh, projects or work on our future videos. Like we're going to make blog posts, we are going to make pages, and then we are going to learn more about these things. And default post format is going to be standard. You can put it to whatever, like if you want to make your post format to video, you can put it if you are uploading video. But mostly we use standard. And then we have got this mail server. We don't have to think about this as of now. Let's go for reading. And from reading, you can select, as you can see, your homepage display. So let me show you the difference here. As you can see, currently it is selected to a static page. And for this reason, we are seeing this specific page, right? But let me just show you here. If I take you to my learners.world website, you are going to find this is, I'm, I'm, we, are, we are seeing the blog post here. And I have selected my home page to the blog post. But if I take you to my Acharography, which is my um, portfolio website, this one has this page as the home page, right? And we have selected this information, selected, selected these pages from this section, right? As you can see, uh, my home page is this one currently selected. So this page is being appeared post page whenever I'm going to make any post they are going to be appeared on the blog page these are selected here and we're going to learn more about this in future for sure and then we have got this information how many posts you want to show on the first page currently I have got one two three four five six seven okay seven posts here on the first page but for this setting we are getting 10 posts here right and we're going to learn more this more about this soon so let me just discourage i'm going to yeah i'm going to select this one discourage engines from indexing this site we don't want to get our site indexed on uh, search engines so that okay as we are just currently making the demo contents here so let's click on save changes if you have made the change other than that let's keep keep it as it as it is and then let's go for discussion and from discussion you are going to be able to set the rules for your comments like how many comments a push should have uh, and would what are the good words that you want to keep on your on the comments and if you want to decide or if you want to select some words like uh, bad words which you whenever someone will use these words on your comments these are going to be on the spam folder or these are not going to be approved on your website automatically you can do these stuff here and you need to learn more about these things later i don't think this is an important part as of now so let's go for media and again, you have got this option thumbnail size. If you want to get your um, your uploaded contents on media should be customly um, just resized with a medium or let's say here it is selected as you can see thumbnail size is 150, 150. If you want, you can increase the height and white. So if you want all your uh, uploaded contents to be minimized, all your uploaded contents to be resized uh, with this size, you can simply keep this size as it is. You can increase this size as well. You can make it to 200 if you want, but I am going to keep it to 150, right? So let's keep them as there and then organize by uploads into month and year based folders. So organize, obviously we, we want to keep them organized and they should be in chron chronological order. And then we have got permalinks and here, from permalink settings, this is one of the important settings that you should know about SEO stuff. So mostly 
it is it it might going you might going to find this option selected then name um, as your post title or say the permalink actually permalink is these links if I show you one post from here this is the permalink right how to start freelancing as a beginner so it is looking nice and it is SEO friendly here but as it is currently selected with these dates in the post before the post so this is not actually making the post looking that friendly but when we are going to select this post name here we are going to find this exact format your website url then the post title or you can actually customize this link as well and you're going to learn about this too then we have got this category base we don't have to think about this as of now so let's just click on save change we want to keep this so i just made the change and then we have got the privacy settings so here we you have to create a privacy policy page obviously for your website and uh, by default we get a privacy policy page from wordpress installation keep this as of now if we need we can make the change later so this was it about the dashboard and the tools available we are going to be able to customize all the things as we want let's say i don't want to see all of these uh, widgets here so simply go to screens and if you just click on let's say i don't want to see these um widgets here i can simply make them like this right they are blank and they're looking um nice other than just scattered so when you will have lots of works done when you will have lots of plugins and other tools installed on your wordpress website you are going to find a mess here and this is the way how we can clean up things so let's say i want to keep only my uh, wordpress let's say welcome page i just want to keep this and then i want to keep my uh, activity here that's it i don't want anything else or if you want you can actually show all of these by clicking this way right so this was it guys i believe you have found a good base knowledge about the wordpress backend and the dashboard throughout this video and in our next video we are going straight to make posts on our website and after that we are going to go for more customization so if you have found this video helpful then please give this video a like if you have been enjoying this whole course please share this course with your uh, friends by sharing this course uh, lectures on your social media sites on facebook twitter or whatever platform you are using and let them know that i have started this step-by-step -step course for all the beginners who are interested to start their freelance career and provide wordpress and elementor based services and again guys please let me know your opinion by commenting below and when you guys make comments i get the feedback like if i am being able to provide the information that is you are looking for right and if you have got any question please let me know by commenting below and as always i'd love to mention again please don't forget to join in our group which i have created from group let me show you uh, this one okay so i'm still working on the uh, design and other content stuffs here but please don't miss to join this course if you are serious enough to uh, learn about uh, wordpress and elementor stuff so you can see people are making comments and i'm i'm replying on them so if you have got any question if you have got any problem throughout the journey then you can simply ask me by making a post on this group and i'm going to get back to you as soon as possible so thank you so much for being with me have a good day hello and welcome to the fourth lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiber or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so without further ado let me give you a quick recap on what we have learned so far what we have built so far from the previous lesson so from the first lesson we learned about the fundamentals of upwork which you should know as a beginner to start career on this field and throughout our second lesson we have learned about local server we had created our local server using xamp and we have created our very first website which is this one as of now and throughout our third lesson we have learned about the wordpress backend or the dashboard we learned about the tools plugins 
and themes briefly but we are going to learn more about them in our future videos when we'll work on the practical lessons but this lesson is going to be our very first practical lesson on wordpress posts you are going to learn everything about wordpress blog posts so i'm going to cover about blogs paragraph heading list image video link and everything you need to learn and know about a wordpress blog post so here we have got an example blog post here as you can see this is a header or the heading of a blog post then we have got paragraph then we have got some bold text then we have got this heading again again heading we have got in, uh, video embedded if you notice this text upwork has a specific link attached so if i click here it is landing us to a new page right so we are going to work on this throughout this video then we have got uh, these image galleries and some other stuff which i am going to cover throughout this video so without further ado let me take you to my website here which we have created so far let me take it here i'm going to remove some of these contents from here and if you have missed my previous videos you are going to find these both of these playlists in the description of this video so that you'll be able to start from the scratch if you have just uh, realized i have started this course all right so without further ado let's just go back here and actually let's start from there i'm going to yeah so we are going to work on this blog section as you can see so nothing here as of now but whenever we are going to start creating or we will publish our very first blog post we'll have something here appear so let me just sign in into our blog page or the wordpress backend actually so you know how to sign in we have to write out here wp hyphen admin then hit enter you are going to find this sign in panel so first of all let me uh, let you know again actually give you the reminder you have to uh, open up your zamp control panel then you have to open or the start apache and mysql module so that you'll be able to access this page easily all right so now let me just enter my username here rafi and then the password was one two three four five six seven eight nine at the rate and then let me click on login button here and here we go we are on the wordpress backend or in the dashboard and now we are going to work on posts we have got some brief idea about these all posts add new categories and tags but now we are going to see them in actual action in reality so let me click on add new to start adding our very first blog post and before i start writing anything let me give you some brief about these features these um, options available here so as you can see this plus icon this is the option from where we are going to add our blocks we are going to add media we are going to add designs and then widgets on our blog post and we are going to use it soon so let's keep it as it is then we have got this modes option so you can select or edit whatever you want from uh, by selecting uh, any of these contents here then you have got this undo button if you have deleted something or you have made some unnecessary or uh, mistaken changes you can just simply undo that and if you have deleted something and you want to redo that function you can simply use this button which we are going to see soon and then we have got this history or the details step from where you'll be able to see um, what it is going on and what is the structure of our blog post and then we have got this one which is outline all right so we are going to see more information about this features later and then we have got this right panel where we're going to find all the settings information so if i click here on this gear icon you are going to see that the settings has been disappeared but let's click it again and you are going to find everything appeared again so here the first thing here as you can see for the post it is going to show us the indication if the post is public if the post is um, published or let's say public and then we have got few more options private and password protected. let me just keep them for um, the latter part of this video then we have got every information like like as you can see permalinks categories tags featured image excerpt discussion everything is going to be covered throughout this video and let me just take you here on block nothing is selected but if i click here okay just take a look we have got some settings appeared right so we are going to learn more about this so without making this intro a longer one let me take you in the real part as you can see we have got this real blog post which is live on a website one of my um, starter website which i have created a few years back so now as you can see this is a blog title which is going to be placed in this part so instead of this blog title i'm going to give a new blog title here let's say 
uh, start freelancing okay freelancing with WordPress all right so this is my blog title and then we have got some featured image which we are going to work on then we have got some paragraphs then we have got some uh, headings as you can see these are headings then we have image etc now let me put some paragraph here so headings is heading so we don't have to work on this all right so now let's work on the paragraph so i'm going to take this first block from here paragraph block let's go back here now if i click here i'm going to paste this information just take a look we have got these paragraphs added now if i hit enter we are going to a new block and if i want to type out something here let's say hi there all right so i can start a new paragraph here but before i go for the new paragraph i'd love to go back to our first paragraph block which is as you can see selected as paragraph here and you can simply transform this paragraph to heading it is too bo too big so we are not going to work on this then i have got list you can trans transform this or uh, whatever block you are working on you can trans transform the block to a paragraph heading column group quote or a pull quote whatever you want but let's be specific with paragraph as of now now let's say whenever i'm clicking here we are seeing some options as you can see currently it is aligned to left alignment text alignment is given to left so this is the reason why uh, uh, we are seeing this in left side which is the default and the mostly used alignment now let's say i want to keep this alignment to center just take a look it's just changed to the centered alignment now let's say i want to keep it to center uh, sorry right aligned and just take a look you have got this right alignment so i'd love to keep it to the default one which was the left alignment which is the uh, format of a beautiful block site mostly okay and then we have got this bold section so if i select this text let's say freelancing as beginner and hit on this bold and let me show you to start freelancing as a beginner this part has been bold now let's say i want to make this very first stage to italic i can simply do this or let's say i want to make this bold text to italic as well just take a look we have got this italic version so whatever you want now we are going to talk about this link or okay so let 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 me just talk about this link as we are here all right so let me just select this freelancing as beginner and i would love to copy this link from here let's say i want to link this page to this text so now if i click here you are going to find this search or type url so let's post paste or a blog url or the url that you want to link on this specific text and as you can see here open in a new tab so if i select this one whenever someone will click on this link the page will be opened in a new tab instead instead of this exit exit page and we're going to learn about this soon so let me click on this submit button right here and now if i click on publish and let's click on publish again and let's view this post i'm going to click here it is going to be opened up in the same page okay now as you can see we have got the formatting as we have given and whenever i am hovering this cursor mouse cursor here we are seeing that that text is clickable so now if i click here it is going to open up our blog post in a new tab right so now let's say you want to change this one to another blog post so let me just take you to edit post and i'm going to change this link so i'm going to select okay and then click on edit let's say i want this post to go let's say upwork.com as an example uh, upwork https upwork.com and hit enter and if i click on update let's view this post in a new tab i need to delete this one okay and now if i click on this link it is going to take us to upwork because we have changed the link right so this is the way how you can add links into the text available on your website or the blog post so let me just uh, okay let's just delete this one okay now let's talk about these fields as you can see inline code inline image strike throw if you want to give some uh, extra uh, extra just formatting let's say this has so i want to give like a strike throw you are going to see that we are seeing if i make it a little bigger here we are seeing a line of um, line uh, above the text here right so as you can see has so this is called strike throw 
Now, if I click here, you are going to find this subscript, superscript. These are for uh, mostly for, let's say, uh, for the maths or the rules of maths actually or the scientific uh, scientific work so let me just show you an example h2o which is uh, h2o okay this is uh, the sign of water so if i as you can see it's already been strike through okay so now let me just remove this from here i'm going to um, click on superscript and if i type out h2o just take a look we have got this super uh, superscript mode here so let's say i want h2 should be uh, in the lower script so i'm going to uh, click on um, super not superscript just take a look h2 this has just been changed so you have to use each of these things to see how everything works so let me see uh, let me tell uh, let me try this text color to be changed so if i click on text color and uh, let's say i want this text to be uh, a custom color let's say I want this in red color and just take a look we have got this red color so if I click on update now and if I view post click on view post we are going to find that we have got this color changed here right so let's just make it to 100 pixels or 100 percent so that it will be normal right okay so now let's go for the next thing which I was about to talk heading okay so let's say after this paragraph i want to add a heading so how i can add i just have to click on this plus icon or this plus icon available here so let's say whenever we are seeing this plus icon easy to access it, access here so i'm going to click on add block and then as you can see here we are seeing some other information here so let's say i want to click or add a heading here so let me click on heading and let's type out I'm going to take a heading from our actual blog post from here. So let's say how to start freelancing. So this is a heading. So I'm going to type this heading here, how to start freelancing. And this is my heading. And if I click here, we are going to find more information regarding to this heading. So again, we can transform this heading to a paragraph. And again, we can transform this to a heading as we want, right? So very easy then we have got this h2 h3 h4 we have got headings six headings from h1 to h6 h1 is the biggest one and h2 is the next one and if we select h6 it is going to be the smallest one right and now i'm going to select this one and going to go back take it back to h2 and then we have got this again this alignment thing so we already learned about alignment on this paragraph but let me just show you it real quick i have just selected to centered so it is in center so let me take it to left and then again we can simply let's say now uh, we want to make this freelancing a little bolder simply we can do this right so we can uh, use these parameters as we want as we need right so now let's go for the next list which is uh yeah so the last list item so let me just take you back here now let's say i want to add a list item here so let me show you what are the types of list you can add and how you can add them so let me just take this list widget or the list block actually this is a block so i've just opened up and currently it is selected to bullet list i guess yeah unordered list so i'm going to type out something like uh, how to start freelancing so first of all learn about a skill then practice the skill practice and then uh, build portfolio so let's say portfolio then join to marketplace join market place and then um, apply on jobs apply on jobs uh, get hired work on jobs deliver the job this is the real process actually i'm just typing out the real process deliver the job get approval get paid all right so that's the process of freelancing overall or the ultimate uh, process here all right so now let's say i want to add like a one uh, sub menu for this one sub list so let's say learn what you want to learn so after learn let me just double um, hit enter here so let me click on again here and let's say learn wordpress and elementary here so you have to learn wordpress to start freelancing uh, wordpress and yeah so keep wordpress and then after clicking here if you just click on this inline list item or indent list item sorry indent list item it is going to show you the list here right so let's say after wordpress i want to add uh, elementary 
Elementor Builder. All right, so you have to learn WordPress and Elementor, then practice, then portfolio, build portfolio, then join marketplace. These are the process. All right, so now I have just built a um, an unordered list, but let me just make it in one block so that it will be easier for us to explain. All right. So let so now they are in one block now let's want to make it an ordered list so that we'll have the numbers one two three four instead of these uh, little circles here so let me click on this one two three just take a look we have got an unordered list to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten etc and you can make again so you can make whatever change you want to make on each of these items each of these lists so as you can see if you want you can make it to block um, bold you can make it to italic you can um, add a link special link so let's say i want to add a special link of upwork on this joint marketplace so exact process i'm going to take the upwork link from here this is the upwork link i'm going to copy and go back here now let's click on this link icon then paste the url then select this open in new tab let's click on this submit button now let's click on update and if i view this job post or sorry blog post in a new tab and if i just just notice here we have got this link i am um, activated so if i click here on this link we are going to find or visit the page whatever we have linked for these tags right so pretty simple pretty easy now let's go for the next lesson here which is image so let's say i want to place an image rough right after this um this list so we can simply click here on this block and if you just notice we have got all these patterns available sorry the uh, blocks available and then as you can see here media from media we are seeing this image so let's click on image and we are going to find this option as you can see we can upload the image we can select some image from media library if you have uploaded any you can uh, simply insert from an url from the outside so let's say let's upload an image from my computer and yeah so I can simply go to downloads and let's see if I can have any image here. Okay, so let's say I want to, I don't know what it is, but let me just open, nope. All right, so let's say I want to upload this, uh, no, no money. So I want to upload this image. Okay, so which is a big one. All right, so we have got this image. So I'm working on my office or <laughs> the workplace anyway so this is an image so now if i click on update update from here now let's reload this page here we are going to see that we have got this image added as well now let's go back here and if we want to write a caption here let's say uh working on my fish office and let's uh, click on update and view this post or actually reload this post here uh, did i update it yeah as you can see working on my office so everything is added here now if i just uh, okay so now i can show you something else if i take you here from dashboard if i take you to media we are going to have one image in our media library and we're going to learn more about these things soon so let's go back again here we we have just learned how to add an image and if you want you can simply drag and drop resize this image as you want as you can see we have got this option then we can transform it again okay? we can transform it to a gallery we can transform it to a file and media and text as you can see but let's say i want to place this image instead of this place right after this um, list i want to keep it to uh, let's say after this text right just take a look how it is looking like so we can simply update and we can view this post in a new tab to see the chance which have been made right so too easy too easy so let me just take it back again to the place where it was and now let's say uh let me let me just uh see what i can do here okay so here here are the alignments as you can see you can align it to center align it to right so as you have got this image a bigger and in one column it might going you might not going to see any um specific difference other than this big image which you have selected as you can see uh white sorry white white if i select full white is going to take the whole um whole screen of my um laptop here so let me just click on update and if we visit uh, reload this page again 
we are going to see that a big image which is which is not looking good at all so i'm going to take you back here so i'm going to make it to let's say align center and i'm going to keep it as it is with this proper formatting of our um, blog post so it is going to look nicer right so now we have got this link again so let's say you want to place a link beside this image so whenever someone will hover over this image so if i uh, oh, i didn't update it okay so let me reload this one so if i hover over my mouse cursor right here on this image now we are not going to be able to click here so this image is not clickable but whenever we are going to give some link to this image so if i click on this insert image link let's say i want to place my youtube playlist url from here and okay so here i'm going to paste it here then click here open a new tab where i can link relation i can give some link relation link css class but i don't want to work on these things as of now these are too uh, like advanced we don't need them as of now so let's click on apply here and now if i click on update if i reload this page and if someone clicks just take a look whenever i am hovering over the image I'm getting my uh, taking my cursor over the image we are seeing that the image is clickable and if I click here the playlist is opened here in front of you so this is how you have to work on these basic um, post stuffs or post related WordPress blog post related stuffs all right so now let's just go for the next one which is video so let's say I want to place a specific video right after image so I'm going to take actually to give it a good look. I'm going to take some uh, paragraph blocks here. So I'm going to click here. All right. So we have got a big space here. Now I want to add a video right after this paragraph block. So now let's click here. And then if I make a search here, I'm actually going trying to show you by clicking using this uh, section or this option and this option as well so that you'll be able to use all of these functionalities available on this. Uh, dashboard so let me type out here uh, YouTube or yeah let's say YouTube I want to add a video from YouTube so let's click here and then you are going to find as the enter URL to embed here so let's say I am going to open a video from my playlist so let's click here okay and if I click on share copy and if I take you back here and place it here let's click on embed just take a look we have got our uh, video added as well all right guys so now again you will be able to transform it to column or group or let's just keep it as it is and then you can simply give it to wide width and the same way how it worked for the image so let me just keep it to align center it is going to look nicer right so i'm just keeping as of now and then you can write a caption let's say i want to give the caption as it is like uh, let me just keep uh, copy this url from here sorry the title from here and just take a look we have got this caption as well now if i just click on update and if we reload this page from here we are going to find all the information video added and now someone will be able to watch the video by clicking here they are going to be able to watch full screen if they need right so whatever they want to do everything is here now let's go back here and then we are going to uh, yeah so let me just take you back here we are going to work uh, Oh, okay so I already have talked about this link because let's say but let me just keep it organized again so I'd love to take a new text so click here to learn more about Ajharul Rafi okay so I'm going to add my um, let's say or yeah so I'm going to add my portfolio website link here so in click here but uh, click here text so if I click on this link and then if I just make let's say HTTPS then double quotation archharulrafi.com and if I click on open okay so let me just keep this one in um, uncheck this one okay so you will see the difference so if I just click on this submit button and if I update and if we reload this page and now if i if i just click on this link as you can see this one is also a link text so if i click here it is going to take us to a new tab while our web page is opened up here but if i take you to this newly created link text if i click here it is going to be loaded on this exit page so let's click here and it is going to take you to my portfolio website here
right so this is how this is what the difference between this um, open new tab in a new uh, open in a new tab so I mostly like to use this one uh, activated right so now let's go for the next lesson which is button so now let's say yeah let's go back here we are going to okay so one one would be good so now let's say I want to add a button right here so I'm going to click here then I'm going to type out like button and just take a look we have got button styles if you want you can simply uh, choose these button styles if you want but for this tutorial I'm going to keep it simple you will be able to learn about these things whenever you will work on one or two live projects okay so you don't have to work on uh, client projects for sure but whenever you will work for your practice purpose you're going to learn about these many uh, settings many stuffs which I am not being able to cover maybe I'm missing or maybe uh, these are not as important as of the other elements that I'm going to cover throughout this video okay so let's just hit enter and I'm going to take button here let's say I'm going to type out here yeah, as you can see I've just searched for buttons on my previous step so I'm seeing this button available so let's say you are not seeing this button here so I'm going to type out button and you're going to find these buttons and these styles so let me click on button and then if I write something here let's say um, get your tutorial uh, tutorial okay or get your PDF as an example just okay so hit enter just take a look we have got this button done now I don't need this one so let me just click and remove okay all right so just take a look we have got get your PDF file or PDF whatever and whenever we are hovering over we are getting this beautiful uh, effect so now if I click here I should be able to uh, change the color from here as you can see so default style you can select outline now just take a look how it is going to look like feel uh, the same thing okay so it should be a little bit changed okay so the, now this one we have got two options but there was some more earlier on our the previous version so let's just get this as of now so as you can see on feel currently it is feeling as the normal button but whenever we are hovering over here it is changing to the outline option or the blank uh, transparent background with this text but if we select outline from here we are going to find the black transparent button here which is not looking good as a button here but whenever we are hovering over it is looking good here all right so let me just keep it to fill and then you can give some border settings like border radius so what this means so if I just click on update now let me show you how it is looking like on our original blog post here just take a look we have got our button here right so now let's go back again and now I'm going to give this to let's say border radius of 50 and just take a look how it's looking like it is just rounded so these are kind of CSS works but still we are going to be able to do these things from this panel and from color setting you can change the color as you can see you can change the text color so let me keep the cap uh, text color to white and the background color I'm going to change the background color let's say this color uh, I love Upwork and fibers color mostly so these are okay so as you can see just take a look all right so you can do these stuff these types of stuffs or uh, whenever you need and then you have got open link in a new tab link relation and uh, some other advanced stuff like an HTML anchor and then the additional CSS styling it already have got a styling or the class name here which you can use to stylize this button but not we are not going to go with this because these are not mandatory as of now so let me just keep this as of now now let's say I want to put a link of this button so let me just click here and let's say I want to put um, my Udemy courses here so Udemy slash Acharul Rafi so if I just add this here on this button so let me just type it out here let me post um, sorry open in new tab set this up and let's select this one and now let's say, let's say if I update this one and if I reload this page and if I click on this button it should lead me to my Udemy profile here I'm, I'm available on Udemy as a instructor as well with these courses all right guys so let's just go back here I have just showed you how to work with buttons 
Now let's go for featured image. So let's say whenever I am visiting to let's say blog page from here, we are seeing this text only, no featured image available here. So how we can add a featured image? So what is featured image? So if I take you to my homepage here uh, for the blogs, just take a look, we are seeing some images appearing here. So these are called featured image. This one is another featured image. This one is another one. So now let's, let me show you how you can add featured image here. So to add a featured image, we have to click here, sorry, we have to click here on any, any of these uh, section of this post. And then as you can see, this is the option for featured image. So if we click here, we are going to find an option to add an image. So we can either upload an image or we can use a image from uh, our uploaded file. So let me just use this one again as the featured image. So let's click on set featured image and then let's click on update. And now if I reload this page, just take a look, we have got this featured image added as well. Although it is looking too big, it's not looking good at all because this is the settings came along with the theme we have got on our WordPress website so far. But we are going to work on these featured image things and other stuff in our future videos to make them look great websites. So now let's just go back again. So I've just shown how to use featured image. If you want, you can simply replace the image by uploading one more image from your computer if you need. But I'd love to go with this one. I don't want to spend more time here. All right, so let's go back again. We have got category. So let's say this blog post, as you can see, is about how to start freelancing with WordPress. So I'd love to keep this as the category of freelancing. So I'm going to click on category. It is currently selected to uncategorize. So if you just notice here in some place, as you can see, categorized as uncategorized, it is going to be changed soon and we are going to make the change here. So if I click on add new category and then if I type out like, let's say uh, freelancing and if I click on add new category from here and then let's uncheck this uncategorized. So now if I click on update, and let's just reload this page. You are going to see categorized as freelancing. So if someone clicks on freelancing, they are going to find all the posts relevant to freelancing. So let me just create one more post here uh, from this one. I'm going to click on add new. And let's say uh, mm, learn more about categories. All right, just, just an example. And then I'm going to copy and paste some information from here, let's say, these text only. And I don't want to place the featured image here. Uh, or let's say, let's upload a featured image. So I'm going to upload one image, one more image here. So, okay. Um, Okay, let's say this doctor here. So I'm going to upload this doctor's image. This is one of my client. I work for his um, <laughs> website. So he, he's really happy and I'm so proud. I built his website from the scratch. Okay, so now if I reload this page, we are going to see no change here because we are working on another page. So now I just published this post, let's say I didn't edit this featured image here. Instead, what I did, I added a featured image from this panel. So now if I, let me just take you to this blog page from here. Just take a look, learn more about categories. And here's the blog title. Then I have got this blog post. Here is our featured image. And for this one, we have got this featured image here. We have got the title here and everything. Now I forgot to add the category here. So let me click on post. And after that, instead of anchor, okay, so it, it, I did it good. Okay. Although it was a mistake, but let me show you if I click on, let's say freelancing category, it is showing me only one post now, right? So whenever I'm going to make the change, I'm going to select this category to freelancing. Let's click on update and let's reload this page. It should show me two posts here, right? So these are about freelancing. Okay. So this is how categories things works. You can categorize your blog post with uh, or the posts with um, several uh, keywords, several category names. Okay. So you can, you were writing about freelancing. If I was writing about, let's say WordPress specifically, then I would write the category as WordPress. So let me add few more categories here. 
uh, word press okay just let's just go with wordpress and i'm actually going to show you some examples so i'm going to um, take you back here and i'm going to add few more posts from here let's say wordpress one and I'm, I'm just simply going to select this one with wordpress and let's add some content again we are going to copy this text and paste them here let's click on publish and then i'm going to add one more blog post from here let's click on add new and i'm going to type out um example wordpress 2 okay and then let's select the wordpress category from here click on publish click on publish and now if i reload this page we are going to find that on freelancing category we have two posts but if we visit blog page we are going to find all the posts we have made so here is one post categorized as wordpress here is second post categorized as wordpress we have got this post freelancing this post freelancing so let's say i want to see all the posts about wordpress so if i click on wordpress now it is going to show me all the posts i have made or the you have made about or with this wordpress category here all right so here we have got all these wordpress related posts so now let's go back again all right so now we are done with let's say categories about um okay so about this category section let's go back here we have got tags so i'm going to take you to the first blog post the video is getting longer so pardon me but i believe i am being able to show you the uh, important stuffs here okay so let's say i want to use some tags as well so let me click here on tags and then if i click on let's say um freelancing uh, freelancing here okay as an example one tag let's say this post i have written here wordpress so let me put wordpress here a double s wordpress okay and let me click on uh, okay hit enter so that we'll have two tags so we have created these tags now click on update now if i reload this page and if i visit the first blog post we should see some tag information somewhere in this place uh, okay so as you can see tagged as freelancing and wordpress if i click on wordpress we should see this blog post appearing we are not seeing the other wordpress related post if i click on freelancing it is going to show me this post only as i have given this tag for this post only now let's say i want to give this um, tag freelancing tag for this one start uh, okay so this one learn more about categories so i'm going to click on edit and then let's say i want to keep this win uh, on sorry not wordpress actually we are working on tags so let's say i want to give like uh, freelancing here and if i click on update now if i go back to blogs and i have given let's say i open this post and if i click on freelancing we are going to see two posts here the, this one and this one because we have got freelancing tag on this post we have got freelancing tag on this post all right so now if someone let's say i am on home page let's see if we can find the search option yeah so let's say here i have got this search option if i type out like freelancing here on this search widget if i click here we are going to find all the posts containing freelancing so as you can see freelancing freelancing and then freelancing here okay so this one have got freelancing because here we have got freelancing text available on the um on the post itself all right so it is going to search all the content and then find the information find all the posts which are containing these freelancing things on or freelancing word on your blog post so this is how this search option works okay so now let's go back again and we are going to uh, work on imbit so let me take you back again here on the our first um, blog post and let's say i want to add a post from twitter uh, from someone so I'm going to going back here and let's say I'm going to type out Twitter here and I'm going to okay let's go for my posts okay I want to embed this post let's say if I just have to click here and then as you can see embed tweet click here so you'll get the link as you can see embed link is going to be appearing here you can simply copy this code copied 
or we can do simply copy this code as well it should work so let me try what would you like to embed this one if it is not going to work we are going to use this code so let me take you back here and then click on this plus icon and let's or let's just click here and you are going to find all of these um, blocks and widgets available here as you can see here widgets and let's select this one as you can see from embeds i want to use twitter and then i'm going to paste the embed code here let's click on embed and it is going to load all the information here let's click on update and i'm going to open this page in a new tab and it should work yeah here we go we have we are seeing that i have got this post embedded from my twitter directly so this is how the embed things works now let's go for more so um for more we are actually done with the all the basic stuffs which we uh, need to learn basically and the other things we rarely use but still let me see if i can show you anything from here uh let's say about list about quote let me just show about this quote thing here so i'm going to add yeah so let's go here and let's go to quote and then i can type out let's say this is in example quote uh, agara bagara ja whatever you want to put here then keep double quotation here and then write the citation, uh, citation from which resource you have got so in this case i am just going to type out my name okay i show rafi here and then if i click on update and if i reload this uh, page here just take a look we have got this quote added in our blog post with a new style right so now let's go back again and we are going to click on this plus icon again and then we have got as you can see this classic editor then you have got this code section where you can simply add a code so if i click here and let me show you if i copy this code from here okay so quote and click here custom html hmm. uh, okay all right so now if i click on update let's click on actually preview so it will show me as you can see it is going to work as it was working so i just clicked on html code i have pasted this link from here directly by copying these html codes and then i went back here pasted it here and preview just take a look it is just loading the page so if i click on update it is this is doing the same work which i have done with this uh, embed section and this custom code section okay so now let's click on this plus icon and then we have got this pre-formatted however you want to place your text so if i copy uh sorry open this block where it is added okay so write pre-formatted text so if i copy some text from here and paste it and if i click on update now if i show you this is interesting you are going to see just take a look instead of these uh, normal paragraphs here we are seeing that we have to scroll this thing to see the paragraph or whatever so this is uh, most likely most people don't use even i never used for one, any of my blog posts okay so you can simply try each of these options available here to learn more about these things as you can see you can add a table if you want so i want let's say i want uh, three columns and i want two rows so or actually let's say five rows and let's click and create add in each column as you can see these are columns one column two column three, three columns and this one is a row 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 so i'd love to put like name uh, name country and then um, joint yes or no okay so let's say yes no these are responsive that's great and let's say Rafi I'm from Bangladesh and joined yes I am already joined in the course let's say I'm talking about this course so anyway so this is the way how you can add a table so I'm going to update and let's just reload and see how it is looking like I'm actually going to cross some of these um, things from here okay so just take a look we have got this information available here now you can format these things as you can see <clears throat> you can sorry um, excuse me you can simply make these headers bold let's click on update and let's reload this page we are going to find that these headers are bold here all right so now let's go for okay nothing so let's click here 
and let's see what I should talk about image gallery okay so let's talk about gallery so if I click on uh, okay so if I click here on a new block and if I type out gallery here GA double L okay now I want to create a gallery from here I can simply add from media library instead of downloading so I am going to select both of these media and then let's click on create a new gallery and let's click on insert gallery we are going to find all the all the images and all the videos are going to be added here all right guys so you can simply upload more if you want but for now I'd love to go with this one you can simply increase or decrease the size or make some adjustment as you can see upload uh, media library insert from URL and you can place it to light left to right as you can see by simply doing this okay so now let's say you want an image and beside the image you want some text so you can simply do this let's click here and if I type out image media and text as you can see this one so let's put it here upload and oops not upload I'm not gonna upload let's add this image and let's write something we are working at night so this uh, image has a story so this is the reason why I captured anyway so let me click on update if I reload this page okay just take a look how it is looking like now let's go back again and let me see what else I can talk about okay so image gallery audio this is rarely used so I'm not going to uh, talk about this one and then cover image if you want so you can simply try all the other information I have just shown how to add video so you can try all the other information that you would love to use and as you can see columns so if I click on columns I should show you about this column so let's say I want two columns I want three columns you can simply uh, add these columns so let's say I want 30 by 70 column row and I can add an image from here or sorry let's say I want to add image here so I'm going to type out image and you are going to understand much clearly in uh, future videos for sure so let's say I want to add image from library again okay image and then you can do the rest of the settings which you have done earlier so you can do as you can see you can uh, crop this image if you want so I'm going to crop this out as you can see it's been cropped and then let's say I want to place here a list item and then um, learn then practice and uh, hi there <laughs> sorry I'm not uh, interested to write more here all right so this is how you have to work about work with this content so let's say I want to remove this block so simple I can simply remove this block from here I can simply remove this block from here I can remove this whole okay uh, whole block from here um, okay that's confusing okay so let's just remove these blocks and yeah they should be they should be removed seven in here okay so let's click here then click on delete remove block we actually have to do them manually so that was a bad experience though okay so let's keep let me just delete this element as well so I'm going to remove this block from here and we are going to keep rest of these things all right now let's click on update and let's see if what else I should talk about here uh, okay plus separator yeah so we can talk about separator we can talk about the page breaks we can talk about uh, spacings so let's say I want to add a space uh, I want to give a space in between these three um, blocks so if I hit enter and click here on this plus icon let's say space a spacer as you can see this one add spacer and by default as you can see if I just click on update and reload this page okay if I show you here we have got some spaces right so now we can increase and decrease these spaces in pixels as you can see currently it is in 100 pixel but we can increase this pixel to uh, whatever we want but most mostly we use like 550 pixels so let me just click on update just take a look these spacings if I reload it is going to be smaller just take a look all right so now let's see what else okay so let me talk about this separator 
so i'm going to click on this separator here and just take a look we have got this separator icon added so i want to change the color so let's say dots yeah so these are the styles you can select from here as well uh, from dots from thick you can see how it is going to look like all right so i'm going to keep it to thick and after that default style all right so same thing from here uh, here you are going to get and then you can select it to wide white you can select it to full white if you want okay so these are the separated things uh, okay so align center and after that you can change the color if you want as you can see you can change the color let's say i want to give it to uh, red so that it will be visible uh, much more okay and then let's click here again to see what are the some other options we have got for this block okay so no more option all right so let's click on this plus icon and see what else i have got all right so in this post we can add few more widgets as you can see here we are seeing some widgets we can add short code short code is mostly used for let's say you want to implement a contact from here you want to add something created on using an a plugin or available on another page you want to add this here so you need to use shortcode so for now we don't need to add shortcode here because we haven't yet created anything that you could place here so now let's go for the next option which i am seeing which is let me just click here okay and plus icon uh, which is going to be this archive so whatever you have written as you can see january by january you have written some post today is january so if i reload this post here we are going to find from January if I click here it is going to show us all the posts I have written in January right so now let's go back again if I click on this plus icon not from here let's click on this plus icon from widgets we are going to get like um, calendar we are going to get categories we are going to get custom HTML latest comments latest post RSS social icons and many other things if you want you can put search icon or as you can see this is going to work like this just notice here okay you can add social media just take a look how it is looking like rss feed latest post these are going, going to look like this on the post so let's say i want to add the latest posts here right after this post or let's say uh, okay so here so let me click on latest post and just take a look how it is looking like and you can make some adjustment on the styles as you can see and you can take post content as well if you need but it is not going to look good so display author name display post date display featured image if you want you can simply add and it's going to look like this and then we are going to number of items you can simply decrease it to two so that only two of your most recent posts are going to be um, seen here okay so this was it guys so now let's talk about the final thing which is going to be about this post section or actually these things so as you can see currently the visibility is <clears throat> excuse me the visibility is public so now you have got these options to make this post private so that only you and the other moderators or the site admits are going to be able to visit this web page and let's say you want to add uh, okay so let me make it private now i'll be able to see because i am a moderator of this page obviously but if i visit this copy and if i visit this in an incognito mode let's see if it is going to show me anything here we go i have got yeah okay uh yeah okay so i'm actually seeing the post but i'm not being able to see the post which i was looking for which is this one actually where it is which is this one the ma main post i'm not being able to see it. but other than this i'm being able to see all the posts available here right so now let's go back again if i click on password protected we'll be able to use a password so let's say i'm going to give a password one two three four and let's click on update and now if i visit this post in a new tab even in this post in this page i have to provide this password to view this page so let's say i want two three four now if i click on enter i'll be able to watch the post right and read the post so pretty uh, interesting part here so now let's go to take it to public so i want all of the visitors whoever interested to um, read uh, visit my whoever visiting my blog they should be able to read my posts and then we have got this uh, published date as you can see today is january 20 22 and 21 here is the time you can simply click here you can change the date if you want whenever you need 
and then we have got this post format which is currently selected to standard we should keep it other than that we have got few more options here and then we have got this stick to the top of the blog so now let me show you this is kind of interesting and you should know about this let's click on update so now if we visit let's say blog page from here we are seeing that this blog post is the first one it was the first one but it is placed in the last as it is just coming from the day by day or let's say the uh, publishing time so this was the last post which i made and then this is the reason why it is in the top so now i want to keep this post to be stayed in the top so while i can do this i can simply select this one stick the uh, stick to the top of the blog so if i click on update now if i reload this blog page you are going to see we are going to find this blog post is on the top and after that we are seeing all the blog posts coming up right so this is how it works now let's go for this section as you can see uh, 27 divisions by this feature you will be able to see what are the revisions if you uh, you have made so far you can simply use these things like this to go back and then click on restore this revision to um, restore the version here so let's say you have made some mistake you have added some uh, unnecessary things or you have made some let's say um, big errors here or some changes made some big errors you want to get back to the previous version you can simply drag and drop and select the version from here you are going to see the changes here and then click on restore this revision so let's just go back i don't want to okay go to editor restore anything here come on yeah so here we go now we are on let's say permalink so i talked about this permalink as you can see start freelancing with wordpress so now if someone visit this blog post they are going to see let's say if i click here uh, okay they are going to see this permalink start freelancing with wordpress right after the website url they are seeing this permalink here okay so this is the thing if you want you can change uh, let me just type out like um Parma, I'm just making this change just to let you know or give you some clear understanding. So permalink example, if I, I just change this URL, so everything is going to be stayed as it is. But if I reload this page, you are going to see that the permalink has been changed. So this is how permalink works. And this version of permalink is SEO friendly and it looks professional, right? So we talked a little about our previous video about this permalink stuff. So you should watch that video as well. And then we have got this category section. We talked already. We have got text section. We talked already. Then we have got featured image. We talked already. Then we have got this excerpt section. So let's say by default, whenever we are going to blog, we are seeing that we are getting this excerpt text here. But if you want to make some changes, write an excerpt, which is optional. I mostly don't uh, use this part. But let's say I want to get this excerpt as an example okay this uh, thing is an expert uh, excerpt and if I update let's see what the change happened here on blog post just take a look we, instead of our first section of the blog we are seeing this text as our excerpt right so this is how this excerpt thing work then we have come to the last part of the video discussion allow comments so now if we just take a look on this blog post if I click here you will be able to make a comment on this blog or any user will be able to make a comment here now let's say you don't want to get these comments simply click on uh, uncheck this allow comments update reload this post you are going to find that no comment option available anymore on this blog post now no one will be able to make a comment here now let's say i want to available uh, sorry enable this comment section so i'd love to keep this but allow pingbacks and trackbacks so let's say this is actually connected to seo stuff so i'm not so good uh, i don't have so good understanding about this pingbacks and trackbacks so pardon me about this information but this is not a big factor regarding our blog post as of now so we can simply uncheck this one and let's click on update and if i visit this one here so here we go we are done with a complete blog post throughout this tutorial and this is it guys so this was the important information uh, regarding a blog post on wordpress which you should know and so this was it guys i believe i was able to help you learn and understand everything about wordpress blog post so now if you are being hired to manage a blog post for your client 
or blog site for your client to update blog post you will be able to do that pretty easily i believe all right guys so this was it i believe you have found it helpful if you did please give this video a like and please don't forget to share the videos don't forget to share the complete course with your friends on your social media maybe you are using facebook twitter linkedin or whatever platform you are using please share these videos this will give other people the attention of this course or the let's say information about the course and it will help me gain some more viewers more subscribers more fellow friends who are going to be interested to learning about this wordpress related works so thank you so much for watching and let's get ready for the next video bye bye hello and welcome to the fifth lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services on upwork fiber and on any other freelance marketplaces you would love to work on so without further ado let me give you a quick recap on what we have learned and what we did so far throughout the previous lessons so if i take you here on this page just take a look we have got this beautiful website created step by step by following the previous lessons and in the most recent video lesson we learned about blog posts where we have created few posts on our website and then we have learned so many things about blog posts so if i open up here and just take a look here we have worked on the featured image we learned about customizing the designs of text and then we have added some text links we uh, if i just click here you are going to see that this link whenever i'm clicking here it is taking us to a new page which we have selected and then if i click the same thing here if i click on this link it is taking us to a new tab all right with a in a new page we learned about this heading stuff we learned about listing we learned about how to add an image in between a, a blog post and then we learned about the separator spacings how to embed a video how to embed any external post from um, let's say external post from any social media site we worked on this button we talked about these table stuffs widget stuffs etc and so far we are here right so now without further ado let me start this video i'm going to talk about media library and pages and comments throughout this video so here so as you can see here on media whenever i am hovering over it here we are seeing these two options one is library where all the image videos or whatever content we are going to upload on our wordpress website we are going to find them here on library and by using add new button you already know what you can do we can add new image new videos or new contents to our website by using this add new button so now let me take you to media library so we are going to see two images are already available here because one of our blog post this one uh, this image we have uploaded this image and in another blog post we have uploaded this image to demonstrate few things to you so now let's say this media library or the contents are listed in list view but if you want you can get them in grid view as well so that so that they will be looking like this and if you just notice here you are going to find all media items like you can select image audio video documents spreadsheets archive and all of these other options as you, as you can see here so now if i take you back as you can see i just notice here unattached so if i take you back to this listing item you are going to find few more information who was the author who uploaded this image on which blog post this image was attached and the date as you can see all right so now let's say i want to add few images on my website let's say you have to work on a website where you have to use like 10 images and now you want to upload all of the images at, at once so that you don't have to uh, upload images again and again you can do the work uh, at once so that it will save your time so now let me show you how you can do this simply click on this add new button from here and then if you click on select files you are going to find this um, uploading option or uploading panel selection panel appeared so let's say i want to upload this image and let's click on open it is going to be added to your library so if i take you to library from here you are going to see that this image is uploaded and if you notice 
this image is not attached to any blog post because we have added this one manually and we can attach this image later if we need but this is not mandatory this is not mandatory we don't have to work on this all right so now one thing i would love to show you is how you can upload images in a bulk way let's say you want to upload five to six images at at once or let's say more than that at once so let me show you the process if i click on add new button from here and then if i click on select files and then if i select all of the images that i want to upload like day six images if i click on open all of these images are going to be uploaded on my media library and now i'll be able to use these images on my blog post so let me keep them to this view and let's say if i go to a post or sorry post option and if i click on add new to create a post uh, i'm going to type out like how to sorry to use media library okay and then i want to put some paragraph let's say i want to keep these contents from here and then i want to add an image here so if i click on this plus icon so that i'll be able to have this uh, widget selection panel so let's click on image and now you are going to find these options upload media library and insert from url so as we have up, uh, already uploaded image on our media library simply we can click here and then we can select the image that we want to use and let's say i want to use this image let's click on select and here we go we have got this image selected we didn't have have to upload this image again so let's go back to post and if i click let's say i want to upload or select this image as a featured image simply let's click on set featured image and i can select this image um, from directly from our library so if i click on set featured image it is going to be set featured now click on publish and i have noticed i have uploaded one image two times to show you the process so if i take you to media library again this is the image that i want to delete as an example or this one so let's click on it and you are going to find this option as you can see delete permanently you can simply click on delete permanently delete and this image has gone right so this is how media library works and how to add new image videos or other files on your uh, wordpress website by using this platform now let's talk about one of the most important part or most important aspect of a wordpress website which is pages so here as you can see whenever i am hovering over my mouse cursor on pages i am seeing all pages add new button so from all pages we are going to find all the pages which you have created or which have which you have got from the theme installation by default into one page so and from add new button we'll be able to create a new page that's the normal process you already know so let me click on all pages to see what are the pages we have got here about blog contact create your website with blogs but let me take you what are some other pages you might have to create on a website so if i take you to my learners world blog site if you notice we have got home about then this page with drop down menus contact us page which is another page okay and if i take you to the bottom of the page you are going to find affiliate disclosure which is one page disclaimer one page terms and conditions another page privacy policy and many other pages that you might have to create for a real website right so now let me show you how we can create this page pretty simple simply click on add new button from here let's say i want to create a page for services simple you are seeing the whole interface here as you have seen on the blog post so pretty similar everything is similar here so now let's say i want to type out services as i want to list all the services that we provide just as an example so let's say i have opened services page now i want to add paragraph here simple paragraph it is selected so now let's copy this page sorry copy this paragraph form from here paste it here and then let's say i want to give some image here i love to give the image which is the easier as of now so that i'll be able to explain faster so let's say i am giving okay let's instead of this one let's let me just okay let let it be here i'm going to take another block here and i'd love to give a heading here for the service name and i'm going to select heading and let's type out website design and this is my service 
and then I can add another service right after this okay I can add a spacer here let's say um, digital marketing and I should have this in a heading and then I can simply copy and paste some information from here let's say I am going to copy this information and paste them here and then I want to add another image here so image media library and let's say this guy is doing digital marketing or this guy is doing di digital marketing just an example okay so I'm going to select all right so we have created one page now I want to add a spacer here instead of these blocks so let's click here and not spacer actually divider would look good here um, okay if I click on this icon I'm actually going to find this divider from here actually separator so let's click on separator and here we go we have got a separator added now i'll be able to give it to wide white so that it will look much nicer uh, as of now or just as an example so let's click on uh, okay so before i publish let me talk about this page options as you can see you are going to see this visibility to public obviously we want to create our pages for all the readers who are coming along and then we have got this publish if you want i have forgot to mention about this um like scheduling so if you want let's say if we click on publish now as it is selected to immediately this page is going to be published immediately but let's say you want to schedule to be this page posted at a certain time uh, letter so you can simply select as of now currently today is 21 but let's say i want it to be 23rd january so i can simply select this and let's click on uh, like okay so let's click here and if you just click on schedule this post is going to be scheduled but i want to do this now so i'm going to click on 21 or let's say immediate from here reset so it will be immediately all right and then we have got this url slug which we have talked about in our previous lesson when we worked on um, blog post okay so same functionalities here everything is similar so as you can see we have got this slug we have got this permalink then you can select a featured image which you don't need for an image but if you want you can add and most importantly this part as you can see allow comments are not selected this is because on most web pages we don't allow comments we don't want to receive comments on our main pages which we have created instead we want comments on blog posts so i'd love to keep it unselected as it is and wordpress likes this and then we have got this page attribute section where we we can simply select pages um, attribution for other pages for example as you can see we have got this drop down menu here we can select them to the order like this one is parent and this one and this one is the child child pages for learn okay so in this case we don't have to worry about these features because we are going to be able to set all of these drop down things from our menu section and obviously we are going to work on this so let me just click on publish let's click on publish and now if i reload this page we might not going to see anything happening here okay nothing happened here but we want as we have added this as our service page we want this page to be added here right so we are going to add this page from the menu section soon in our next lesson because in the next lesson i might going to work on template sorry theme and some other stuffs which are more realistic and more interesting you are going to enjoy for sure and you're going to learn a lot from my next tutorials all right so now let's say if i visit this page from here from services okay so view page you are going to find how our uh, new page is looking like as of now now let's move on we are going back to the dashboard and then if i click here okay so i already talked about these pages all pages add new things so now let's talk about comments so if i click on comments you are going to see this default comment here so let's say i have got a visitor on this blog post and copy this blog post and i'm going to take you to another window let's say from my incognito window and if i hit enter we are going to visit this page now the visitor will be able to make a comment right here by using this field so let's say i want to put something thank you for sharing this video okay this blog post as just an example blog post it was really helpful so let's say i have 
made this command now our visitors have to provide their name so let's say I want to give the name Ajharul and I would love to add the email address I don't use the email rafi620 at the gmail and then we can simply skip this website thing and we can skip this part as well if you are not a um, regular viewer or if you don't want to save your details here so let's just click on post comment and here we go i have made this comment right your comment content is awaiting moderation this is a preview your comment will be visible after it has been approved right so this guy me this guy has made a comment already on our wordpress blog post now if i take you back here in our whole uh, interest session here and if i reload this comment section you are going to find ajharul who um, the person's email address is here who made this comment and on this blog post he made this comment and this is the date this is the time and here from this comment section we'll be able to get some options as you can see we'll be able to approve this comment so far if i just reload this page this comment is not yet going to be appeared here okay so this comment is not appeared but whenever we will click on approve it is going to be appeared and whenever we will click on reply we will be able to make a reply like thank you so much for replying on this comment so let me first uh, approve this comment and now if i reload this page again just take a look one comment from acharul in this date we have got this comment from acharul thank you so much acharul for, for commenting and i love to get comments like this on my youtube videos as well so if you are watching this for please let me know your opinions just say like if this video was helpful to you by commenting below okay so and don't forget to like the videos if you are enjoying now let's go back here as you can see from reply you will be able to make a reply from here or we can simply reply from here as well but let's get back here on the admin backend so let me click on reply uh, glad to know you enjoyed the blog post please share it with your friends okay just this and then let's click on reply okay so now if i reload this post you are going to see that rafi who is me again uh, has just made a response to this comment so this is how this comment things works and now let's say you want to make some changes on this comment let's say you have got some bad comments on your blog post we have written a real great post but still you are receiving some bad comments for their misunderstanding or let's say uh, for any other reason maybe some people so bad would love to make some bad comments as well so pardon me uh, okay so let's say you have got a bad comment or you think if we just make some slight changes on the comment then it would be good simply you can click on this quick edit or edit button so let me click on quick edit and thank you for sharing this blog post it was really helpful i am sharing this post now just this edition okay so these are just for the example purpose so let me just reload this page so as an admin i was able to make the comment moderation from the back end on my wordpress website which is a great functionality of wordpress again all right so this is how comment work as well now you can simply click on this spam um, button from here if you are getting too many spam comments too many bad comments from someone you can simply click on this spam button and then they won't be able to make any future comments on your blog post on whatever blog post you are writing right so you can simply mark someone as spammer and then you can delete the comment by clicking on trash so let me show you by deleting this comment if i click on trash this comment is going to be on trash as you can see here now if you want to delete this comment permanently from your blog site simply you can delete this permanently from here so this was it guys we i have covered the media pages and comments things throughout this video and from the next video this is going to be real interesting part because we are going to learn how to add a new theme on or actually how to change a theme on wordpress how to customize some parts of the thing uh, theme etc and maybe we will cover the widgets many things as well and remember we have created a page which is services services and we want to take this page 
appearing here on our menu section it should be here right so we are going to do this in our next video hopefully so this is it guys thank you so much for watching all the lessons this far and if you have been following the step-by-step -step lessons you should have a beautiful website just like this one and i would love to see your works and you can join in this group which i am going to attach the link into the description field below so that you'll be able to share any problems if you are facing you can ask me any question and you can see other members work as well so i hope to see you in this group if you haven't yet joined and i would love to see your works and please don't miss to share this complete course with your friends so that they will be able to learn from as well so i hope to see you in the next video thank you so much have a good day hello and welcome to the sixth lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so without further ado let me give you some information regarding this specific lesson what you are going to learn from this complete video so i'm going to talk and show you everything regarding to the website appearance a block site appearance throughout this video i'm going to talk about themes we are going to change few themes to see how themes effects on a website look in a matter of few seconds and then i'm going to show you by customizing the theme a little bit to give you the initiative experience and then i'm going to talk about widgets we might going to add few widgets to show you the functionalities and then i'm going to show you how menu works and how to add a menu so if you remember in our previous lesson we have created a new page which is this services page so if i open up our website in a new tab just take a look this services page should be placed right after about page here but this is not available here so i'm going to show you how to add this page into our menu section and then we have got background things so this is very basic we are going to learn about this as well now if i take you back here on my wordpress dashboard and if i hover over on appearances you are going to find this information themes customize widgets menus background and at the end we have got theme editor so this is for the developers wordpress developers who knows html css php javascript and all the other high-end language so we are not in that level yet so we can simply ignore and that's totally fine so without making this intro a long one let me click on themes to start showing you the functionalities of theme so as you can see by default when we installed our wordpress um wordpress software on our local server we have got these themes installed automatically so one thing you can install as many themes as you want on your wordpress website but you can activate only one single theme at once for example we have got three themes installed in our wordpress website as of now but currently activated the 2021 the one we have got in this year but if you notice we have got 2020 2019 here and if you just notice here we have got this activate button to each of these themes but this one is currently activated as for this reason we are seeing activate uh, option here right so now if i just reload this page if i reload this page you are going to find that we have got this look on our wordpress website and in a matter of few seconds let me just show you if i make a change let's say if i activate this 2020 theme to see how it effect on the look of our wordpress website if i just activate this theme we have got 2020 theme activated as of now this one is in the uh, installation mode only right so now we have got 2020 theme activated if i reload this page just take a look we have got a complete difference look on our um, wordpress website just in a matter of seconds right so this is how themes affects the website look website functionalities as well in some cases so now let's say if i activate 2019 as a, as an example activate you are going to see a complete difference here so if i reload this page just take a look we have got a complete difference here right so now let's say you let me just show you how we can add more install more themes for the wordpress library to your wordpress website so they are going to make your website 
more beautiful and they're going to add up some more functionalities so let me just click on add new theme button here or you can click on this add new button so i'm going with this one and you are going to find that we have got featured 15 themes on this page but if you need more simply you can go to popular you will find all the themes which are popular on wordpress as of now listed here you might going to find thousands of themes available here so let me just take you back here and let's go to latest from this option you are going to find all the latest themes which have newly added on the wordpress library you are going to find these uh, listings here okay so let's say from featured if i make a change to the theme let's say i want to change uh, this theme okay just as an example i'm going to make the change later within few minutes but let me show you to make this theme activated on my wordpress website i first have to install this theme so if i click on install button from here just take a look it is just installing this theme into our wordpress uh, back in so let me just wait while it is installing and then i'm going to show you how it affects just take a look we have got this installed sign available here if i take you back to themes now you are going to find currently we have got four themes installed on our computer but as you have kept activated our 2019 theme we have got this look as of now right but let me just activate this newly installed theme if i click on activate and if i go back here reload this page just take a look we have got a complete different look on our wordpress website with a beautiful slider activated so an advanced functionality added only right after we changed the theme from our previous one to this one and if you just notice we have got these functionalities which is showing today's date then we have we are being able to see the time we have got these beautiful social media icons where we can put our business facebook page twitter page google page um, instagram page for whatever or we can place our personal facebook twitter instagram pages for sure then just take a look we have got this beautiful uh, menu bar here footer bar here with these footers in, footers information and now if i click on any one of these posts we are going to see some different look on the post page as well so as you can see we have got this cut of things so we have to make the adjustment as well but i'm not going to show you the adjustment for this theme as of now because we are on the starting level so let's go from the default one so i'm going to make the changes but before that i'd love to show you what are the changes it made already um, and what are the changes we have got already by simply changing the theme from the default one to a new one all right so just take a look we have got a different look on the title then i have got this date added category added or the tag added here and then we have got this image all the text as you can see here the text size and then the text font everything has changed here on the post itself then we have got this this beautiful like let's say um, layout here although these are not looking beautiful as of now because um, we have to make some adjustment and as you can see we have got this related post available here and if you take a look this one is called right sidebar if this one is available here we would say like left sidebar of our blog and as you can see we have got search bar here then i have got recent post widget here uh, recent comments archives categories and many other information here so we are going to be able to customize this theme to make it a real beautiful one but as of now let's just go back to our default one i'm going to uh, going back to 2021 so let's click on activate and if i just simply reload this page you are going to see that we have got back to our previous layout as well right so that's the simple way and that's how a theme can make a huge difference on the look of your website a theme can add up some more functionalities than the one which you already have right so this is how themes works now let's go and we are going to learn more about this theme customization we are going to upload premium themes along with free theme customization we are going to learn about premium theme customization as well to become job ready all right so please don't worry now we, i am just going to show you in a quick recap like how it works and 
some other functionalities right so here as of now we have got this look again the our earlier look now if i go back here we have got this customize option so let's click on customize and then you are going to find like site identity here from this part you are seeing that we have got this 2020 theme activated from if you click on change it is going to take us again to the themes page which just we have learned about now let's go for site identity so what is site identity logo then we have got the fab icon which is here as you can see for google docs we are seeing this fab icon for localhost or the zamp server we have got this fab icon if i visit let's say facebook it is going to show us this fab icon here right so this is called fab icon now let's just go for customizing this site we are going to make some changes here on the look so let me upload a logo first so let me click on this select logo and then if you have already uploaded your logo here you can simply select the logo from here but i'm going to upload the logo from here so i'm going to click on select files and then here is the logo which i have created so let me just open it up and you can give the alternate or the alternative text title caption description for seo purpose but for now we are going to see the sample work only so let's just click on select and here we go we have got the logo i'm going to skip cropping and then just take a look we have got the logo appeared already here and we have got a little bit of um change here as well we have got this one uh, down went down okay so now let's say i have got the logo if i click on publish if i reload this page just take a look we have got the beautiful logo added already on our website okay so now let's go for changing this fab icon so let's go back again as you can see here is the option for site icon which we also call fab icons so let me click on select site icon and here go to upload files select files and here is the fab icon that i'd love to add on my website so let's click on it and then let's click on open and if i click on select and now if i click on skip cropping okay and then let's click on publish let's reload you are going to see that this logo is going to be disappeared and we are going to find this logo appearing here so let me just reload this page and just take a look we have got this different or actually our own custom fab icon our own custom logo added here so now one thing i don't uh love to keep our site title and site tagline here available these are available here if i just show you this is my site title which is appearing here my new wordpress website and this is my tagline which is here hidden but whenever i am hovering over it is showing me the site tagline as well just take a look this is our first website so let's just go back here now if i make changes here i'll be able to see the difference so let's say i want to change the site title from my new wordpress website to uh, ajharul rafi's okay sorry okay for some reason this one is not working ajharul rafi website okay we can go like this no problem and then just take a look we have got already the changes are happening here and learn with me and let's grow together grow together okay so let's just skip this as it is and then just take a look we have got the change here so if i click on publish and if i go back here reload this page just follow here ajhol rafi website learn with me and let's grow together right so it's been changed as well so this is how this site tagline uh, sorry site title and tagline works so now i don't want to keep this thing here away appearing so i'm going to click on this uncheck this display site title and tagline so it will be removed from here and just take a look we have got this beautiful layout here now let's click on publish and if i reload this page we are going to see that we don't have the site tagline and title here but we are going to see the site title and tagline here on our um fab icon bar here actually the website bar or the tab all right so now let's go for the next option which is i'm going to click here and we have got this next option which is colors and dark mode so if i click here as you can see we have got a background color which is looking great for 
um, me I'm just feeling like it is really good so if you want to change the color you can simply select the color whatever you want to make so let's say I want to keep this color as of now I don't know how it is looking like to you but it's okay to keep we are just learning so now if I click on publish and if I reload this page we are going to see the difference we have got the got a different color although we have got here this color we have to change it later right so let's go back again here as you can see this option dark mode support if I um, activate this one by clicking on this right check and if I click on publish and as of now if you just notice here we are not, we are not seeing any option for going uh, to the dark mode but as you as I have just activated this one and published if I take you back here in a new incognito mode and if I type out localhost my website and just take a look we have got this notice here dark mode is currently off so let's say someone is uh, reading this blog post at night and they want to see the dark mode if they open it up here or activate it up here they are going to see the dark mode of the website which is a great feature a website should have right so pretty simple so easily we were able to activate this dark mode on our website so if i visit blog page you are going to see that whole lot of difference here right so everything changed to dark mode and it is looking real beautiful for the night environment right and we have got everything changed whatever we have made there we have got the logo as well so let's just cross this out let's go back to the next option which is background image so if i click here it people used to use background image earlier but now uh, most of us actually don't care about this background image but still let me just show you if i click on select image and let's say i want to use um this image as my background image and or this one okay so let's just keep this one it, it is going to look nice and let's click on choose image just take a look we have got this background image appearing into the whole page so though it is not looking good but let me just show you some of the functionality so you will actually be able to uh, knowledgeable about this stuff so let's go for as you can see uh, we have got this preset it is selected to default we can simply uh, choose from these options as you can see fill screen if you keep it fill screen it is going to fill the whole screen with this background we have got no spacing in the left side top side um, downside or in the right side but if we select this one fit to screen it is going to show you that we have got some cutoff from the right side then if we click on repeat it is going to repeat the image as you can see here for one time here is another time here is the third time here is fourth time fifth time sixth time so, so many times it, this image is going to be repeated which is not a good practice to keep on your website so let's say i want to go with custom and i can simply select the alignment as you can see image position as you can see i can simply select this one so let's go with fill screen which is the best one as of uh, now and this is the option or actually this is the way how we can add a background image so as it is not looking good i would love to remove this image from here so that you will get back to our original view okay so now let's click on publish and let's go back to the next option which is menu so uh, this is one of the exciting uh, moment although i uh, we have to learn few more things about menus and which we are going to learn in our coming videos but as of now what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, add our let me just show you this page which i have created uh, this service page into this field right after about page here or about um, menu here so let's go back here and then as you can see menus we have got primary menu selected let's click on primary menu and just take a look we have got these options are only available here so now if i click on add items we are going to see all the pages and if we want we can see all the posts available on our website so far we can select the categories as well tags as well formats as well so let's just go with pages at the very beginning and if i click on this plus icon of services so let's click on plus just take a look we have got services installed here so if i click on publish here and reload this page 
we are seeing we have got home about block contact and services added here but we need it to be placed right after about page so let's do this i'm going to take you back here and simply just click here and hover it over or actually drag it over right after about let's keep it to services right pretty easy now let's click on publish and if i reload this page just take a look we have got home about services if i click on services we are going to see the beautiful posts we have made about our services we provide we are providing web design we are providing digital marketing and we can add more when we are going to work on the actual websites right so this is how menu things works and this is not the completion of menu tutorial for sure because menu is one of the most important aspect or one of the major part of a wordpress website or whatever platform a website is being um, built with but menu is one of the most important parts so we are going to learn more advanced stuff more in detail in a future video so please don't get worried about that we are going to create new menus we are going to create everything step by step so now let's just go back here <clears throat> i'm going to take you back here after menus uh, okay so let me just click here again click here and then we have got widgets so as of now if i click on widgets here we are going to see only the footer widgets is activated here right and if you just notice here we have got these featured uh, footer widgets search recent post recent commerce meta categories and then archive so let's say i don't want this meta information to be appeared here so let's click on remove i don't want uh, like ar archive page as well so let me just remove this one just take a look oops i have just removed the other one so let me remove archive from here and you have got these widgets only now let's say i want to add a new widget here so let's see what i can add here let's click on add a new widget and let's say i want to add a calendar add a calendar so that people will be able to see the post here so let's click on calendar and just take a look we have got this calendar added 2021 and okay so january 2021 if i just click on uh, publish and if i reload this page we are going to see that we have got this January, uh, sorry, the calendar is added here on our website. Okay, so now let's go back to home page. You are going to find this calendar on the home page as well. Let's go to the contact page. We are going to find this calendar here as well added and all the widgets we have got on the website. So each widget works for every separate um, like usage. So if I want to add my navigation menus here, okay so i can do that as well if i just click on navigation menu and if i select the menu from here which we have got only the primary menu so let's click on primary menu and just take a look we have got home about services if you want to give a title here for the menu our menus as an example just take a look we have got our menus added and then we have got this home about services blog and contact page added right so let's keep it let's click on publish and let's reload this page we have got this menu also added so this is how widget things works widget added some more features on a wordpress website just like this okay and some more options it just being or actually um it just help us to organize our website with easy navigation overall okay and let's just go back here and i'm going to take you back here and then we have got this home page settings so as you can see currently i have got my home page setting to this page this specific page but if i select this one from your latest post you are going to see a total difference on the home page so if i click on publish and if i take you back to the home page you are going to see on the home page we have got all the blog posts we have made so far on this blog available on the home page so this works for blog sites mostly but mostly people nowadays are using custom home page by designing it pretty beautifully which you are going to learn from our future advanced videos okay so but this is the way how you can select your home page and how you can make your home page as a blog library so if i show you an example uh, learner's world 
uh, in this page I have got all the posts coming up here right so I have selected my blog page as the home page so this is the reason why I am seeing all the posts appearing here now if I take you back here now let's go back to a static page and I want to select my static page as the home page is the about page or yeah let's skip the about page I don't know what is the content available there and the post page is blog page which should be selected then let's click on publish now if I reload this page just take a look in our about page we have got only these contents for this reason we are seeing on our home page whenever someone is clicking on home they are going to see this page appearing but I think the other page which was this one create your website with blogs this one was looking great so here we go we have got this change so let's click on publish so by this way you can make any of the web page you have got on your WordPress website you can make that page as your home page right okay so now let's go for the next option which is going to be excerpt settings so now as you can see it is selected as summary so if I take you to blog page from here just take a look we have got some excerpt um, information or summary information a short summary of the total blog post and we have got short summary for each of the blog post but whenever I am going to select this full text it is going to load whole uh, article in this page which is a bad experience for any user right if they want to go from one post to another let's say uh, from this post to other post they might going to scroll a long amount of time or long uh, time actually so it is a boring stuff so uh, this is going to be a bad experience for our readers so in this case we can select it to summary and this is the difference of summary and full text excerpt here okay so I believe you understood now let's click on publish let's go back again we have got additional CSS again this one is for all the advanced people who so knows custom CSS work so we are not going to work on the, this as of now we can simply ignore and that's totally fine and in the next video let me just see what else I have to cover here if I take you back okay so we have talked about all of these things which um, beginning we should know what we have learned so far throughout this lesson so this was it guys in the next lesson we might going to learn about more of menus okay or the other part or let's say let's talk about menus later we are going to talk about plugins in the next lesson so I believe you have found this video helpful and you understand the lesson properly as I tried my best to keep it as simple as possible and if you did please let me know by commenting below and if you have got any issue understanding any part of the lesson you can simply ask me by commenting below hello and welcome to the seventh lesson of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with WordPress and Elementor on Upwork fiber or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so without further ado let me give you a quick information regarding this specific lesson what you are going to learn from this complete video I'm going to cover everything you need to learn you need to know about menus on a WordPress website throughout this lesson I'm going to show you how to create menus manually how to create header menu how to create footer menu manually so let's say a client hired you on um, to work on his or her website and there is no menus available or let's say there are some menus available but you have to customize them you have to add them from the back add some few items from the back end so how you can do these things so if you want to learn please watch this video till the end you will become completely clear so here if I just take you here on our current web page and if I reload this page you are going to see that by default with this theme installation we have got our very first menu available here we have just added this services page in this menu item but we didn't learn how to create menus in manually so and if we just notice we don't have a footer menu as well in this website so let's just go for it and we are going to create the header menu and then the footer menu manually so let's take let me take you to the dashboard and after that from appearance if I take you to menus and I'm going to delete this primary menu which comes along by default from the WordPress installation so let's just click on delete this menu click on OK 
and yeah now if I visit the web page in a new tab you are going to find that we don't have a menu on the website so let's just go for creating the menu and we're going to learn about these drop down menus as well by adding sub items on the menu okay so let's just go back again here and as you can see it is telling us give your menu a name then click create menu so that you will be able to create our first menu so let me just create the primary menu first i'm going to give the name whatever name you'd love you can simply keep i'm going to type out header menu here as of now and then make sure as you can see primary menu is selected here if i select it as secondary menu as well it is going to work on on header menu and footer menu at the same time but i don't want to add header menu items in the footer section i want a custom one so i'd love to uncheck this one and after that let's click on this create menu button or this create menu button both of these buttons are going to work exactly same for us so let me just click on create menu button and after that we have to select the items which we want to add as our menu so if i reload this page again you will see nothing happening here nothing has appeared just other than this uh, logo is just placed in the left side but no menu is appearing here so let me just take you back here and after that we are going to add the item so as you can see we can select items from pages posts custom links and then we can add items from menu items from categories as well and i'm going to show you each one of these options work how these things works okay so first of all let's go with the pages so i'm going to select view all or click view all so that i'll be able to see all the pages available on my website so as of now this is working as our uh, home page so let me select this one then blog home about sorry the services and after selecting all of these items i have to click on this add to menu button from here so that they, they will be appearing here now if you just notice that we have got this front page with this custom menu label okay navigation label so I, we, we are going to make changes here on this level so first of all let me just save this menu and show you what are the changes just happened by simply adding them from here to this field so if i reload this page here you are going to see we have got the menus already added here this is going to be our home page uh, and we're going to make it custom soon then i have got this blog about contact services now we want to make the correction here or actually the modification here on this menu item then we are going to place them properly after home page i want about page then i want service page then i want blog page and then i want the contact page so let me show you how you can align everything properly on the header menu so let me take you back on this menu page here and after that as you can see this is create your website with blogs which is selected as the front page which is our home page so i'm going to click here and then i'm going to from navigation level let's change it to home and now if i click on save menu and reload this page just take a look we have got home page here if i click here it is going to take us to the home page which is selected as our front page now it's time to align these items so let's go back again here and aligning items are really easy you already know from the previous lesson so let me just drag this up right here okay and then we have got services and blog and contact now if i click on save menu if i reload this page just take a look how nicely they are organized all right so now let's go for creating sub items or sub menu or drop down menu on a wordpress website so as you can see whenever i am hovering on blog nothing happening so if i visit this learn you can see that we are seeing all these um categories are appearing here so if i click on let's say blogging here sorry youtubing here so i'm going to see all the posts are appearing regarding to youtube and youtubing right so now let's make this same functionality happening on our website so let's go back here actually here and after that i want to add all the categories so if i show you currently we have got freelancing and wordpress categories added on our website which we have created from blog post maybe um okay so on this lecture we have created these um categories and 
tag stops okay so now we are going to use them on the menu okay so let me take you back here and after that from categories i want wordpress and freelancing to be added as the sub menu of blog so let's just select them let's click on add to menu and they are going to be added here if i save them it is not going to place properly okay so if i reload they are going to be appearing here if i click on freelancing i'm going to see all the posts regarding to freelancing or relevant related to freelancing if i click on wordpress it is going to show me all the posts relevant or rela related to wordpress only okay but i want them to be appeared right under blog menu here so let me take you back here and after that i have to simply drag it here and keep it like this okay same thing for wordpress simply drag and drop this here if i click on save menu if i reload this page just take a look we are seeing some difference here as you can see from after blog we have got this plus icon whenever we are hovering over we are seeing both of these categories appeared here so if i click on freelancing from here i'm going to see all the posts uh, related to freelancing as you can see categorized as freelancing and this one also categorized as freelancing all right so this is how easy how simple it is if you know the process this is real real easy okay so now let's just go for these post things let me show you how post things work so let's say i have added this drop down menu of categories freelancing and wordpress i'm going to my visitors are going to find all the posts relevant to to, to, to these categories let's say i want to specify like after freelancing under freelancing whenever someone will just open this up they are going to see all the post relevant to freelancing appearing here okay so let me show you how we can add this stuff right here so if i take you back here again then you have got posts as you can see from posts if i click on view all and i have got two posts which are the first one start freelancing with wordpress and this one categorized with freelancing so if i click on add to menu and if i drag them right after freelancing if i just take them here take them here okay on the top all right so just take a look i have just placed them properly right after freelancing i'll have both of these posts appearing okay and we are going to ignore wordpress as of now or we can simply add wordpress related posts as well so we had two posts wordpress one and example wordpress two so let's add them so they are adding here they have added here so if i drag wordpress one here and wordpress two here they are going to be the sub menu of freelancing in wordpress as well so if i click on save menu and let's reload this page and if i hover over on blog just take a look under freelancing we have got these posts under wordpress we have got these posts as well so this is how easy it is to create category based menus or the drop down menus we using categories and posts here okay so now let me take you back here what else i can show you okay so let me show you the work of these custom links i have covered the pages i have covered posts i have covered categories it's time to show you the work of custom links okay so if you just notice here i have got this data entry course instagram influencer research course if i click here it is going to take me uh, take you to my what uh, sorry data entry course available on udemy and if you click here it is going to take you to my freelancing with instagram influencer research job easy job here okay in this course okay so how i have added these links here pretty simple just let me show you by adding them here so as you can see custom urls you have to place the url here for example if i let's say up add this code here so i'm going to type out my url here and if i type out data entry course just an example okay so if i click on add to menu it is going to be added right here now you can simply uh, place it wherever you want so i want it to be placed right after about okay and if i click on um, add save menu from here and reload this page we are going to find that data entry course also added and we have added this link added this menu item by using this custom link right 
So if I now click on data entry course, it is going to take me to the data entry course page easily, right? So now let's say whenever I am clicking on this data entry course, it is taking me to a new page instead of new window instead of stay uh, opening up in this page, right? So let me show you how you can activate this open in new window. We can simply do this by if I take you here from screen option, we have to select as you can show advanced menu properties. You have to select this link target. And after that from data entry course, if you just hover actually click here, you are going to find this option open link in a new tab. Just simply select this one. Let's click on save menu. And now if someone visits your website and if they click on data entry course, they are going to find this course page opening up in a new window. Okay. So this is how it works. Now let me just take you back to menu again and we have created and talked about the header menu. It's time to work on the footer menu and then we are going to work uh, talk about this automatically add new top level pages to this menu. Okay. So let me first of all show you how to add a footer menu. So as you can see we have got if I just go to the appearance again let's go to menus again you are going to find we have got this header menu selected here right so now let's say you want to create a new footer menu simply you have to click on this create a new menu button from here and after that you have to give the name so i'm going to type out here footer menu and then i have to select the menu from here as you can see display location it should be secondary menu so that it will be placed in the footer section so let me click on create menu button from here and our menu has been created but now if we visit we'll see nothing happened here okay this should be um, added either here or yeah here in this field but nothing happened here so if i take you back here again in this page now let's go to view all from pages and i want to add let's say page sorry about services and this contact page if i click on add to menu simply then i have to click on save menu and let's just reload this page you are going to find this about contact and service pages have been added right so now you might going to um, tell me like why shouldn't we add this menu here in this footer maybe for footer section you have to create let me just take you to learners world maybe you have to create for footer section a custom uh, menu pages okay for example if you just notice i have got these types of pages here but when i am taking you on the footer section i have got affiliate disclosure disclaimer terms and condition privacy policy and other things here right so you have to create pages, you have to create menu items and then you have to add them on your footer menu manually like this. Now let me take you back again and let's talk about, okay, so it was real easy about the footer menu, okay. So let's talk about this, um, okay, from menu. Let's talk about this automatically add new top level pages to this menu. So as of now, I have got this footer menu selected. So you can simply select header menu from here. If I click on select, the, the header menu will be selected as you can see here. Now, let me talk about this one. As of now, it is not selected. Automatically add new top level pages to this menu. So let's click on save menu. We haven't selected this part. And now if I show you an example from here, if I create a new page, a top level page, which I'm going to create is going to be, let's say privacy page privacy page I have just created I'm not going to add any content here instead I'm going to click on publish publish so this is a top level page here now let's let me take you into the back back um, dashboard and then if I open this page or website in a new tab you are going to see nothing appeared here we are not seeing the privacy page added here now what I'm going to do I'm going to delete this privacy page from here trash and I'm going to permanently delete this one from here. Okay, now if I take you back to the page, just take a look, we have got these pages. Now, let's say if I take you from appearance to menus, and if I enable this function, automatically add new top level page to this menu, if I click on save menu. And now if I take you to pages, and if I add a new page with privacy title, 
and let me just publish this page publish okay so we have created this page if I reload this page you are going to see that this privacy page also been added into our header menu here okay automatically because this is a top level page so this is how this option which you have learned let me take you back again here this auto add pages function or the option was so this was it guys i'm going to unselect this one let me click on save menu and we might going to lose some pages from here let me see no okay so everything looks good and i don't need this privacy to be here okay so let me click on save menu and now if i reload we have got this these beautiful functional uh, drop down menus added we have customized the menus with custom links and then we have added this footer menu as well although it's not looking good or appealing as of now because of the themes um, design but you're going to customize beautiful designs and make beautiful websites soon hello and welcome to the eighth lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiber or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so without further ado let me give you some information regarding this specific lesson what you are going to learn from this video i'm going to talk about widgets available on wordpress backend and especially i'm going to talk about custom html widget where i'm going to show you how to add a google map using custom html widget on your wordpress website so without making this into a longer one i would love to take you back on our wordpress dashboard and from here if you just hover over on appearance you are going to find this widgets option so let's click on it and we are going to find all of these widgets lists available here so before i start adding the widgets let me take you back here and here is the website which we have created step by step throughout this course and we have created these menus as well in our previous lesson so let me just take you a little down here and if you just notice these are the widgets as you can see we have got this search widget available then we have got this recent post widget available which is just uh, showing our visitors all the recent posts we have got on the WordPress site and then we have got this recent comments which is showing us the comments made by me or by the other people on the website here as a list all right so these are the widgets and this is how widget works and if I just take you back in the real examples if you just notice we have got this archive at the very starting so if I drag this archive widget here it is going to show all the posts based on the months on which month we have made posts it is going to show you the list so if i show you by clicking on done and if i reload this page here and let me take you back to this bottom part here and just take a look we have got this archive widget added and it is showing us on june 2019 we had some post if i click here it is going to show us all the posts made on june 2019 which came along by default with this wordpress installation as you can see hello world and on june 2019 so if i take you back or actually i don't have to take you back if i take you a little bottom of this page you are going to say uh, see these archives and if you click on january 2021st when we have created this website and we are creating this uh, course so if i click here it is going to show us all the posts by this month available which you have made uh, on our wordpress website okay so this is how this widget works which is archives now let's talk about audio if you have got a specific audio file you can simply give the title to this here and then you can upload the audio file here and the audio will be appeared as well if, as you can see displays an audio player so that your visitors will be able to click and listen the music or listen the message whatever you have got so as i don't have a audio file as of now so i can simply ignore this one let's go for the next widget which is calendar so by adding calendar you are going to show your visitors on which date you have made blog post on your website so if i show you in real quick example by dragging calendar here i can simply uh, type out post dates okay just as an example if i click on save and click on done if i reload this page and let me take you the bottom of this page just take a look we have got this post dates 
as the header then we have got this january 2021 uh, when we have created this blog and we have made few posts on january 20 and on january 21st so if i click on january 20 it is going to show us all the posts we have made or updated on january 20 and if i take you here if i click on january 21st it is going to show us all the posts we have made by this specific date okay now let me take you back to the home page let me take you to the widgets page and then we have got this categories section so as of now we have got few categories only only three categories one is freelancing another one is wordpress and another one is uncategorized which we have to delay but let me keep as of now no problem so if i take you back here and if i add category it is going to show as you can see a list of drop down of categories so if i drag and drop it here it is going to show as you can see if i click on done and reload this page it is going to show all the post categories available on our wordpress website okay so now people will be able to click here and they will be able to see all the post related relevant to freelancing okay as you can see categorized as freelancing categorized as freelancing all right so now let's say they want to read posts about wordpress if they click here on wordpress they're going to read all the posts and find all the posts came along with this wordpress category all right so this is how widget things works and then we have got like custom html gallery image matter navigation menu pages so let me show you before i show you custom html let's talk about this gallery thing so if i drag this gallery here and it is going to show us the title so let's say i want to give a title like our uh, office as just as an example our office um gallery all right and then it's showing me that i have to upload few images so as i already have got images uploaded on our wordpress library which we have talked earlier so i'm going to click on add image and then i'm going to select the image which we, which i want to add as my gallery item so let's say i want these four images as my gallery items now if i click on create a new gallery and then after that insert gallery and if i click on save click on done if i reload this page you are going to find that we have got this gallery added now i'll be able to customize this gallery as i want so if i click here let's say let's click on edit gallery and from here as you can see if i click on columns from let's say two so two images will be in one column it is going to look nicer so as you can see thumbnail size sorry image size is going to be thumbnail which is going to look nice or we can keep it to medium large or full size whatever we want so let's keep it to medium and let's see how it works let's click on save and let's reload this page just take a look how our image gallery is looking like okay so this is how the widget things works now let's go for the important one which is custom html we mostly use custom html to add like uh, let me just show you an example learners world okay as you can see these images appearing here i have added custom uh, added these images by using custom html now if someone clicks here uh, they're going to visit my course link directly okay from here now let me just take you back again here and let me click on done here and let's talk about let's drag this custom html right here okay so whenever you have got like affiliate things affiliate marketing or whatever you want to implement let's say you want to add a custom image from other resources you can use this custom html part as well so let's say i want to add a location to this custom uh, through this custom html widget so if i take you to maps.google.com and then we are going to find out the location which you want to visit so let's say i want to visit islami bank limited islami bank bangladesh limited this one and as you can see we have got this um address here so if i click here it is going to show me the address information right here right so now let's say i want to add this bank's location let's say this one okay I want to add this bank location into my website here so how can i do this simply click on this share button from here and then if you go to embed a map you are going to find this um, custom html codings here okay so you can select the map from let's say large if you want to add the map as the large uh, map so simply you can simply dr uh, drag it like this or actually zoom in zoom out or whatever you want and then let's click on copy html 
and after that let's go back to the widgets page and let's click on or actually paste the code right here and then you can put the information let's say islami bank uh, bangladesh as an example if i click on save let's click on done if i take you back here and if i reload this page you are going to find we have got this map added on our website okay so this is how you can use this custom html feature to add any map any image any video or whatever you want or actually it is going to work uh, for embedding uh, usage so let's say you want to upload any video sorry you, you want to add this add a video on your wordpress website's footer simple you can simply drag this widget from here as you can see this part and then you can simply give the title of the video upload the video and then click on done it is going to be appeared right here so this is how widgets work on a wordpress website so i believe you have got some good information throughout this lesson if you did please give this video a like and share this video and the whole course with your friends via social media like facebook twitter instagram or whatever platform you are using and let them learn as well and thank you so much for watching and i have to see you in the next video have a good day hello and welcome to the ninth lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiber or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so without further ado let me give you some information regarding this lesson what you are going to learn from this video I'm going to talk about plugins usage on a WordPress website. Why do we use plugins? How to install and how to use a plugin to make it work for us. So without making this intro a longer one, let me take you back to our WordPress dashboard here. And after that, if I hover over on plugins, you are going to find these two options installed plugins and add new along with this plugin editor this one is for people who knows coding but as we don't know coding yet so we can ignore this one no worries so let me talk about this installed plugins first so if we click on this installed plugins button we are going to find all the plugins these are currently installed on our wordpress website and with this add new button we'll be able to add a new plugin or multiple plugins to our wordpress website to build some functionalities on the site so let me go with this installed plugins option and after that i'm going to share these informations throughout the actions actually in live examples so as you can see in the plugins page we are seeing by default we have got two plugins already installed on our wordpress website though these are not activated so let me delete this one hello dolly this is nothing of use but let's take, talk about akismat anti-spam so why do we use plugins we use plugins to build functionalities to make our working progress website performance website maintenance process easier for example if you just notice this one akismat anti-spam if you read this description used by millions akismat is quite possible the best way in the world to protect your blog from spams so let's say you have got a blog site and you have got a good number of blog posts now you are getting a good number of comments every day so along with some good quality comments you will get some bad or let's say some spam comments as well coming along right so in this case if you want to keep your blog post if you want to keep your blog site clean and user friendly then you have to remove these spam comments okay so if you remove these spam comments if you remove these bad comments manually if you go with the manual way it is going to take a lot of time like huge amount of time so in this case if you set up this anti akismat anti spam plugin in your wordpress properly wordpress website properly it is going to do the things of filtering these bad comments filtering these spam comments automatically for you so you don't have to spend a lot of time ability to remove these spam comments it is going to place this spam or bad comments automatically into the spam folder of your wordpress comment section right so it is going to take uh, save a ton amount of time uh, for you if you just simply activate this plugin all right so now let me take you to add new button from here 
so that you'll be able to see some other plugins available and i'm going to explain few more things for example if you visit my website learners.world which is one of my blog sites so if i click on contact us page here you are going to notice that i have got this contact form added here on our website but when we are visiting this website which you have created from the scratch throughout this course if i take you to contact page you are going to see that we don't have a contact form added yet so people are not going to be able to fill up their information to reach out to us right so now we are going to install a plugin here so that we'll be able to add a beautiful contact form just like this one without writing a single line of code and if you notice this part here i have used a specific plugin to write this information to organize this information and then i have just added these things here and if you notice these social sharing icons here i have used a specific plugin to list them here so that my visitors have the easiest way to share my blog post to their social media sites easily so it i will have more readers more visitors coming up on my wordpress site right so now let me take you back to the plugins as you can see here on featured plugins we have got few plugins listed like classic editor akismat which we just talked about jetpack for wordpress security backup and other stuff then we have got this bb press gutenberg body spray body spray sorry body press and then from popular each one of these plugins have different or like a specific activity specific function specific responsibility to add on our wordpress website for example as i have just shown here this contact form i either i use this contact form 7 or i have i have used wp forms or maybe any other similar contact form builder to create this contact form on my website without writing a single line of code and then as you can see here yoast seo this tool is most familiar and most popular tool to do your blog post seo stuffs done it will help you give the proper structure it will help you mentioning the ways how you can improve the quality of your seo optimization of a blog post right and you're going to learn more about this tool in future for sure and if you notice this one elementor website builder this is the tool which you are going to use to create beautiful websites for our clients and this is going to be a part of our course and i'm going to add this plugin and i'm going to show you how to work how to build beautiful websites using this plugin completely free so one thing i'd love to tell you here okay so before i tell before i go with the pricing things let me share some other plugins here as you can see this plugin wordfence security this is used for building and bringing them bringing some security on your wordpress website right it is going to work as your firewall it is going to remove the malwares from your website it's going to like restrict coming the malwares on your wordpress website and then we have got this updrop plus wordpress backup plugin which you use to backup our wordpress website let's say for some reason you have got your hosting deleted or let's say you have made some mistakes made some errors on the wordpress website or mistakenly you have deleted some contents if you can have the uh, backups of your wordpress website already you can simply restore your complete website or the previous version of the website by using this plugin pretty easily so as you can see here we have got over thousands of plugin if i show you here uh, actually here as you can see wp fasted cache real important plugin this one also w3 total cache both of these plugins works the same and here we go light speed cache uh, to develop wordpress speed performance and overall the performance and i'm going to show you the usage of these plugins in some future videos for sure okay and if you just notice here we have got around 50 52623 plugins currently available here on this um wordpress library just imagine and each one of these plugins have their specific specialty specialty that you can implement that you can add on your wordpress website so let's say uh, and one thing i'd love to mention almost all of these plugins came along with two uh, two functions or two uh, let's say pricing things you can use their free version and then if you want to get their premium features you have to purchase their uh, premium pack for example we can use yoast seo completely free we can do a lot of stuff using the free tool 
but if you want to go and get some advanced features added and advanced features to be um, accessible for us we have to purchase their premium pack okay and then we have got same thing almost all of these tools have this free plugin and then the premium plugin and as you can see here WooCommerce this if we just install this WooCommerce plugin to our this simple website which is a pretty simple website we will have some functionalities as an e-commerce website have by using this simple WooCommerce plugin okay so each one of these plugins is going to act is uh, going to like uh, add some values add some functionalities to our WordPress in a specific unique way okay so this was all about plugins now let me show you how to install and how to use a plugin so that they are going to work for us for example let's say i want to install contact form 7 if i click on con uh, install now button right here it is going to start installing this plugin in our wordpress website and after that if i now try to use this plugin it is not going to work we have to activate this plugin so that it will be accessible it will be um, activated on our wordpress website so that you will be able to use its functionalities and just take a look in the left sidebar if you just notice here we'll have an option added right here or here somewhere in this field okay so whenever we'll activate this plugin so that you'll be able to access this pretty easily from here so let me click on this activate button and just take a look we have got this contact option added here whenever we are hovering over we are seeing few options contact forms add new and integration right and if you just notice on our plugins page we have got now two plugins one is activated contact form 7 but i have kept the anti-spam plugin uh, deactivated no worries so let's move on contact form 7 let me show you how to work or how to use this plugin so that it will work for us so let me take you here from here if i click on contact forms you are going to find by default automatically we have got a form already been created now if we click on add new button from here we'll be able to add a new form so let's say i want to add a new form i'm going to give it a title like uh, contact sorry contact us okay just contact us like this and i want only this information and you are going to see how it is going to work soon so let's go to mail you are going to be able to set up this information as per your need and we're going to learn in more details in a future video for sure when we'll completely make a complete website from the scratch uh, in our future video okay so this video is just as the demonstration of how things works all right so let's say we have made all the setup and i have got this form so if i click on save you are going to see if i take you to this contact page you are going to see we have got two forms one was came along by default but this one we just have created and as you can see here we have got this short code just copy this short code right just copy this short code or you can copy this short code to use this form so i'm going to copy this short code from here and after that if I take you to our WordPress website, if I take you to dashboard and if I take you to pages, all pages, I want to add my contact form into our contact page of this website. Okay. So if I visit this one here in this contact page, we should have a contact form added, right? So let me take you back here and I want to open, click on edit of this contact page. And after that, I would love to enter and then i'd love to click on this plus icon and after that i'd love to make a search short and as you can see we have got short code option appearing short code block appearing so let me click on this short code widget and after that let's paste the code which we have just copied okay so that's it we have to do nothing it's time to click on update and then if we click on view page you are going to see we have got our contact us or contact form added so nicely we haven't written a single line of code but by using a plugin we have got this beautiful contact form added to our wordpress website now our visitors will be able to provide their name provide their email address subject line and they can contact us with a specific message with their problem so that we'll be able to get in touch and we'll be able to solve their problems so this is how a plugins work 
and in our WordPress website. So I believe I was able to give you some good information regarding or about plugins on WordPress and we are going to learn more things about plugins in our coming videos while we will make beautiful websites um, from the scratch the complete website okay so i believe you have found this video helpful if you did please give this video a like share this video and share this complete course with your friends through your social media it could be your facebook twitter instagram or whatever platform you are using and so let me know your opinion by commenting below okay guys so thank you so much for watching this long video and i'd love to see you in the next lesson have a good day Hello and welcome to the 10th lesson of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with WordPress and Elementor on Upwork, Fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on. So, so far we have covered almost everything you need to know as a complete beginner on WordPress about the backend, about the dashboard and all the functionalities, themes, plugins etc etc throughout our previous lessons and we need few more videos to get into that step like we are going to create complete website we are going to start creating complete website so without further ado let me give you some information regarding this specific video of what you are going to learn from this video we are going to cover information about the user roles like on wordpress there are few user roles like administrator editor contributor subscriber and few more maybe so let me just show you the user roles and let me explain like which person will be able to do what types of modification what type of what types of changes on a wordpress website so let me take you back on our wordpress dashboard and after that if you notice these plugins if i sorry not plugins if you notice this users you are going to find all users from where you'll be able to find all the users currently added to this specific wordpress website and then with add new button we'll be able to add a new user to our wordpress website for any purpose and then you have got this profile section from where we'll be able to make changes on our own profile as the wordpress backend user so let me take you to all users from here and after that as you can see we have got my name rafi and i'm the only person here on this website my email address my role which is currently administrator and so far i have made six posts on this website so as an administrator i'll be able to make whatever change i'd love to make on the wordpress site i'll be able to customize everything of the website i'll be able to add themes change themes i'll be able to customize the theme i'll be able to add widgets i'll be able to create menus remove menus whatever i want with these settings and as an administrator i'll be able to add other users to this wordpress website so let me show you and explain few more things about the user rules so if i click on add new button from here i'll be able to use or sorry add new users on our wordpress site so as you can see username is required so i'm going to type out something let's say new uh, user just as an example you can provide whatever username it uh, would you love to add okay and then the email address is required so i'm actually going to type out a fake email address here so let's say new user email at dot com just a fake email address doesn't matter because this is just for the demonstration purpose and then you can put this this user's name here if you know the name obviously you'll know so i let's let's say i want to add a name here uh, Rajan and then let's say um, Hamim just an example and if the user have a website you can add the website other than that it's totally fine to skip you can even skip these options as well and then from password they are recommending us to add a strong password and I would recommend you to add a strong password when you will work on a real website when you are going to add a person on a real website but as this is just for the demonstration I'm going to create a an, an weak password here so ASDFG this is my password and just as you can see we are getting this notification very weak and after that confirm password we are going to click on confirm use of weak password okay and after that we have got this option send user notification so if we keep this one checked whenever we are going to click on this add new user our 
new user will receive an email to this email address like they have been assigned with the with a specific rule on this website okay so we can simply uncheck this one as this is just for the demonstration or we can check this as well because we have got this um fake email address so doesn't matter and from here as you can see currently it is selected to as the rule as subscriber but you can select from other options as well as well other than administrator we have got editor rule author rule contributor rule and subscriber rule let me explain all of these rules so if i click on editor here and let's click on add new user you are going to find like we have got as of now two users on our wordpress website so one is administrator another one is editor which i have just assigned now let me take you in a new incognito mode here and if i visit our web page from here wp admin if i provide the information let me just make it smaller okay so i have you added this username here so let me type out new user and then the password i have entered what was asdfg and if i click on login just take a look as an administrator i have got so many options available there comparing to this these options available so as an administrator as an administrator i'll be able to do whatever i want to do but as an editor i'll have some limitations and same way other user based or other users with other rules are going to get these limitations as well i'm going to show you okay so if i take you into this dashboard page just take a look we have got some difference already on dashboard we have got home page and then the update section so as an administrator i'll be able to make the updates available here on our wordpress website but as an editor i won't be able to make the changes then we have got posts media pages comments contact these options are available here posts as an editor i'll be add a po new post on our wordpress website i'll be able to modify any existing posts so if i click here just take a look we are seeing this edit quick edit trash view and then i'll be able to add media if i take you to the library let's click here i'll be able to delete this media permanently as well as an editor but with other rules we won't be able to do this so if i take you here on pages i'll be able to add new pages i'll be edit our previous pages just take a look we have got this add new button right here and we'll be able to create new pages as we have created earlier so let me take you back to the dashboard and after that just take a look in our editor or sorry administrator rule we have got appearance from where we'll be able to make the changes on the theme we'll be able to customize the theme we'll be add widgets plugins and other stuffs but with an editor rule we we don't have the access we don't have the permission or the ability right so just take a look we have got appearance plugins here and users also here but in this editor rule we don't have these options so basically an editor will be able to create pages modify previous pages and editor will be able to create new post modify previous posts other than that they have got nothing to do they will be able to add um, media as well and if they go to, if i take you to the comments page they are yeah they are going to be able to make changes on comments as well they will be able to reply on comments they will be able to approve and unapprove or mark a comment as spam as well if they find it um, to do find it as the best option to do okay so let me take your dashboard again and if i show you the profile from profile section this user will be able to make changes on his own profile from tools whenever we are hovering over here on the tools we are going to see some options but if i hover over here this uh, editor is not going to be able to find these options and if i click here just take a look we have got a blank page right so these are the limitations of an ad editor on a wordpress website now if i show you the difference with other rules from here if i click on this edit so You'll be able to add as many users as you want on a wordpress website but to save the time i'd love to edit the page uh, rule from here for this user and then i'll be demonstrating so let me click on edit from here and after that let's change the rule to author and let me take you back and update the user if i reload this page here just take a look we are going to have some more limitations as you can see and currently i'm seeing only the posts available but no pages available which we had with our 
um, editor rule okay so with author rule we don't have the page option now as an as an author I'll be able to add new posts simple as we were been able to do with the administrator and editor but as you can see on this existed post we won't be able to make any changes we just will be able to view the existed post but we don't have the ability to delete this post to customize this post if needed okay and then we have got this comment section if you just notice we don't have this reply button we don't have the approve disapprove buttons as well so here we are again limited access now from profiles i'll be able to make the change to my own profile as let's say as the author then i have got this tool which is blank but i'll be able to use this contact to create a new contact form if i need oh, okay so i won't be able to create a new contact with uh, this rule which is author but with the editor rule i will be able to create a new form here but with author rule i'll be able to make some adjustment by clicking on edit right so now let me just take you back here again and i'm going to change the rule to from author let's go to contributor you are going to get some more limitations so let me click here on update user if i reload this page if i take you to posts yes we'll be able to make add new post but again we won't be able to make any change on comments we won't be able to reply and from uh, from our contact form plugin we'll be able to make a little adjustment okay so just take a look actually we won't be able to make the adjustment you are not allowed to edit this contact form we are not going to be able to make the changes but we'll be able to see what are the forms available here as an um, contributor here but with it with the contributor rule we'll only be able to make posts make new posts on our uh, wordpress website and one thing let me show you a although we'll be able to make posts but it is not going to be directly published on our wordpress website so as an example if i click on add new and if i type out like um, hello world just an example and if i click on publish instead of publish button you are going to find this option submit for review so let's click on submit for review and as an administrator i i am an administrator of this website if i take you to the post section you are going to find that rajan hamim is currently editing this post which is in pending for my approval to get added to our wordpress website so these are the limitations you are going to see the difference between um, the users like administrator and other users if i take you back to the users and let's talk about the list uh, list functionalities or list access based user rule which is subscriber as a subscriber a person will be able to make minor changes like the profile changes if i reload this page here and just take a look i am just being able to see the dashboard no other accessibilities then i'll be able to make the changes on my profile uh, if i need i can simply add hi my name is dot 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 and i do dot 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 so these are the information what i'll be able to add i'll be able to make the changes here as well on my username etc and then i'll be able to make the changes on this layout okay or the backend um, view admin color shape and then i'll be able to change my name first name last name nickname okay but the username will be the same okay and then i'll be able to change the contact info i'll be able to change the email address i'll be at the website and i'll be able to add my profile picture as well and to add a profile picture on a wordpress website we use grabater so by using this email you have to create an account so if i show you the example here is grabater simply visit this page from this link and then click on this create your own grabater you are going to find the options to provide your email address um, okay your email address choose a username create a password and then sign into your account then upload your image and it is going to take your profile picture directly from gravatar into your wordpress website so if i show you here from all users if i if you just notice here i have got this image automatically came from my gravatar profile which i have used or created with this email address all right guys so this was it about the wordpress user rules explanation i believe i was able to explain everything to you so easily and i believe you have found this video helpful if you did please give this video a like share this 
video and the complete course with your friends through your social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or whatever um, platform you are using and subscribe to my channel help your friends learn from me suggest my channel to them as well and let's grow together i have to see you in the next video and i'm so excited because we are almost there to start creating our beautiful fully functional websites using wordpress and elementor so thank you so much for watching this one and i have to see you in the next lesson have a good day Hello and welcome to the 11th lesson of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with WordPress and Elementor on Upwork, Fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on. So without further ado, let me give you some information regarding this specific lesson, what you are going to learn. I am going to cover everything you need to learn about tools option available on your WordPress backend. I am going to cover how categories and tag converter works on a WordPress website and I am going to talk about import and export stuffs and actually I am going to show you in real example how to export and import data like how to migrate data from one WordPress website to another WordPress website. This is one of the most important skills you should know about WordPress. Then I'm going to talk about site help, export and erase personal data things as well. So let me take you to my WordPress backend here and after that whenever I'm hovering over on tools, you are going to find these options available tools, import, export, site health, export and erase personal data things. So let's go with this available tools option. Just take a look, we have got this categories in tags converter. This is a plugin. After installing this plugin, we'll be able to convert all the existed categories to tags on our WordPress website. We'll be able to convert all the existed tags to categories from our WordPress website. So let me show you in real example. If I click on this button here, it is going to take us to this plugins page and as you can see here we have got this install now option so let me click on install now button and it's going to be installed and after installing we'll be able to convert existing categories to tags or tags to categories selectively so as you can see we have got importer installed successfully if i click on this run importer or this run importer this tool is going to start working for us actually we'll be able to make it work for us so let me click on this run importer and after that it is going to load all the categories available on our WordPress website. As you can see, as of now we have got these three categories. Now we can select all of them at once by clicking on this button or we can select manually. So let me just unselect this uncategorized. I don't want uncategorized to be transferred into our tags option. I want freelancing and WordPress to be converted to tags. So if I click on convert categories to tags button, and now if i show you from posts from categories you are going to find only one category available here which is uncategorized and on uh, let's say from tags if i open this tags in a new tab you are going to find that we have got this freelancing category and this wordpress category added to our page uh, sorry tags option all right so now let's say you want to convert some tags into categories so how we can do this pretty simple simply go back here and after coming here on your importer if you click on this button text to categories so let me click here and then i want this freelancing and this wordpress to be converted again to categories as they were so let me click on convert text to categories and now they are going to be available under categories if i open categories here just take a look we have added freelancing and wordpress again into this categories library all right so this is how this converter works now let's talk about import and export so first of all before i show you and talk about import things let me talk about export things so if i click on export you will be able to export all the contents available on a wordpress site which includes posts pages comments custom fields terms navigation menus and custom posts everything is going to be exported in an xml file and then we'll, we'll be able to import this exported file into a new wordpress installed site so that we'll have all the data from this website which is content rich currently as if i show you we have got this um let me show you these blog posts we are going to find all these blog posts in our newly installed wordpress website i'm going to show you in real example so let me just 
and as you can see we have got these options you'll be able to select any one of these things like you can only export posts if you want you can export pages only if you want or we can export everything like page post custom contact forms media etc so let me take everything let's click on download export file and then let me save this into my download folder and just take a look we have got this xml file which is containing everything all the posts all the pages all the navigation menus contact forms everything of this website and now we'll be able to import them into a new website so let me just show you in real example so to show you the process i have to create a new website so if you have watched my second lesson you should know how to create a website on your local server so i'm actually going to take you here and after that i'm going to download from here and then we are going to take wordpress files so as you can see wordpress which we extracted in the second lesson so i'm going to copy everything from here to save my time and then i'm going to take you to my l drive where we have got our zamp installed so let me open zamp and after that this htdocs then i'm going to open a new folder here with the name of let's say new uh, new site okay new site only and our previous one was my website we are currently working on new sites so let me just open it up and paste the contents which we just copied from wordpress folder okay so when it is going to be copied and paste when it is going to be pasted here and if we just go back here and we type localhost and instead of my website if i type out new site and hit enter it is going to take us to this wordpress installation page and if i click on continue so let's just proceed so that i'll be able to explain everything to you i've just went to this page where we have to create our database username password so let me take you to localhost slash then my uh, sorry php my admin hit enter and after that we are going to click on databases then let's create a new database so i'm going to type out new site and let's click on create i'm going to i'm going to save these things here okay database new site okay and after that i have to create a new user to create a new user as you can see we have got new site selected here now we have to go to this privilege then we have to create a new user actually by clicking on add user account so let me type out here let's say edged rafi and then i'm going to select the host name to localhost okay so edged rafi is already existed so i'm going to type out edged rafi one so i'm going to type out this one right here user edged rafi one all right and then i'm going to select the password so i'm going to generate a strong password from here let's copy this password take this password right here okay and then we are going to click on this actually going to give the global privileges so let's click on check all and after that let's click on go button here so we have got a new user account created user database okay database user account so which is azure Rafi one so let me take you back on our wordpress installation page or actually the database installation page and let's click on let's go and after that i'm going to type out the database name which was new site then we have entered the username Azure Rafi uh, one and then the password which we have got here I'm going to copy this password and paste it right here database is already selected to localhost now I'm going to change the table prefix to Azure Rafi one underscore and then let's click on submit and here we go we are we are done with the database connection with this installation let's click on run the installation so that we'll have this wordpress installation page let me type out the site title our second web page or website then i'm going to type out my username which i used for the first username because this is totally fine to use same username and password for your wordpress uh, installations so let me type out one two three four five six seven eight nine and at the rate which was very weak so no worries then i'm going to type out my email address and discourage search engines then you should know everything here i am showing you uh, if you have watched my second lesson where i explained everything right so if you have missed the video i'm going to attach the link of this video into the description field below for you all right so let's click on install wordpress and it is going to install a complete new wordpress website so let's just wait while it is being installed 
and here we have got success wordpress has been installed now it's time to log in so let me click on login and after that i'm going to type out my username which is rafi and i provided the password one two three four five six seven eight nine at the rate and if you just notice we are now on localhost slash new site wp login so let me click on login oh, okay so something wrong so rafi uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine at the rate hit enter and here we go here on wordpress dashboard of our new web website so let me just cross this out from here and if i visit this website in a new tab you are going to find we have got our second website created now if i show you the post number we are going to see only one post appearing here so let me just trust this out okay and from pages if i take you to the pages we have got these pages i'm going to trust them out and i'm going to show you move to trash and let's click on apply and here we go we have got nothing here on this page we have got nothing here on this post as well now in this page sorry in this website i want to extract all the blog posts which you have exported here on this on this website okay so let me show you simply go to tools then go to import and it is going to take us again to this plugins page in the new website and after that we have to install wordpress again to this uh, website our newly created website so that you will be able to import post pages comments custom fields categories etc from our previous xml document so let me click on install now here it is being installed and okay so just take a look we have got it installed importer installed successfully now let's click on run importer and it is going to take us to this page where we have to select the xml file so let's click on choose file and we have got this file which is containing the data so let me select this one let's click on open if i click on upload file and import and then i'm going to click on submit again it is going to take around few seconds and then it is going to show us that the import has been successful so let's just wait and see how it goes yeah here we go all done have fun so we have got everything installed so now if i just take you here on this post page you are going to see all the pages we had on our previous website if i take you to the posts all the all the posts today available here these are also available on our wordpress website so this is how we migrate data from one website to another website for our clients pretty simple but there are some other ways to get all the designs as well because if i now reload this page you are going to see that we have got the basic settings here like basic template but we have got some other options some other ways how we can actually input everything this style these themes everything is going to be installed in our new wordpress website and which we are going to learn in our future uploads for sure all right guys so this was the process how import and export stuffs work on wordpress um, websites so now let's go for the next option which is site health so i'm going to take you to site health from tools site health let's click on it and you are going to find results are still loading so we are going to find about your uh, wordpress sites condition as you can see one critical issue one or more required modules are missing so as we are working on our local server we are going to we are actually seeing this option here this issue here but it is going to be already uh, rid of we are going to get rid of this thing when we will work on live server all right so the, no worries about this but you are going to find few other options like few other recommendation who, how we can improve our website you should remove inactive plugins so if i and in just a click you should remove inactive themes your site does not have as https so let me explain this https first and then i'm going to show you how to remove inactive plugins how to remove inactive themes as well so first of all let me visit let's say learners world and if you just notice we have we are seeing this padlock that means this website is secured okay so just take a look connection is secured and we have enabled https here for this reason we are seeing this uh, connection is secured but in this website we don't have this uh, https enabled because we haven't yet got to that place yet right so we are going to enable https things in our live work so let's just ignore this one 
but I'm going to show you how you can remove plugins and themes from your WordPress website. Simple, if we just visit to your plugins page from here, you are going to find all the list of inactive plugins. As you can see, I'm seeing Akismat anti-spam is currently inactive. We can simply click here on delete and delete it is going to be deleted. And if we need, we can again import it or actually add a new plugin for sure by following the previous lesson which we have learned. And then let me show you how you can in, uh, uninstall or delete a theme from your WordPress website. Simply go to appearance, go to themes, and then you are going to find all the themes available. As you can see, currently we have got this 2021 is active, but these three themes are not active on our WordPress website. If I just click here, we are going to find this delete button right here. So let's simply let's delete and let me delete two other um, themes from here and let's see if the status goes a little improved. So here we go, you have got only one theme installed. Now if I take you back to tools and then site health, we have got only one issue here, okay? So, and another thing I'm seeing like, you have themes waiting to be updated. So now we have to learn something new. So let me just take you back to appearance themes and then this theme actually have an update. So as you can see update, there is a new version of 2021 available. So you can simply click on update now it, and it is going to automatically work for you. It is going to take a few seconds to get this theme updated and then we'll get rid of this notification. Our current theme is currently updated. So now if I take you back to tools and then this site health button again or option again, you are going to see that we have got these other critical informations removed and from info section you are going to find the statistics of your website so we can simply ignore these things like where we are using what things etc as you can see the version of wordpress the active plugins we have got two active plugins contact from seven categories okay active themes which is currently active so everything every statistics of your wordpress website all right so now let's go for the next option which is our export personal data. So let's say some users have made some blog posts on your website or they have made some blog comments. So by the rule of GDPR, you if a user ask their personal information, what are the actions they have taken on your blog site? If they ask you to provide them this information, you have to provide and then the process is simply click on export personal data and you have to provide the email address here then click on send request then you will get an email to your inbox and then you just have to confirm and then you'll be able to download the data of the user on your computer okay then you can submit or you can send the data to the user who requested the files now let's go for the it is personal data let's say some user have placed so many comments so many blog posts for you but for some reason now they want to get everything deleted from your site same thing you have to provide the email address here send request and then you will find the option to remove their data from your wordpress database all right so these are not that important stuff as of now so we can simply ignore all right guys so this was it for this video i believe i was able to explain everything to you nicely in a clear way you have you have been able to understand what i was about to teach you throughout this lesson if you have found this video helpful please give this video a like share this video and the whole course with your friends through your social media like facebook twitter instagram or whatever platform you are using and let me know your opinions by commenting below subscribe to my channel again if you haven't yet i have to see you in the next lesson thank you so much guys hello and welcome to the 12th lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so, so far we have covered all the important settings, all the important things available on our WordPress backend. And in this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about settings option available on your WordPress backend. So if I take you back here on my WordPress dashboard and whenever we are hovering over a settings page or option, we are seeing this general writing, reading, discussion, media, permalinks and privacy settings option available here. So let me just show you each one of these settings 
uh, work what we can do and how these things are going to affect us so let me go with this general settings first and after visiting this page you are going to find these options site title tagline website address administration email address and few other settings available here so let me talk about site title and tagline first so as you can see Achar Rafi's website as my site title then I have got this tagline Le let's learn to and grow together if I visit my website as of now you are going to find this is the site title Achar Rafi's website so whenever we are hovering our cursor over this site title here we are being able to see the tagline as well let's learn and grow together so let's say I want to make some change here so instead of Achar Rafi's website I want to add this colon and then I want to make some change here let me uh, okay let me help you grow and if I save this page and reload this page you are going to find that we have got some change very little change here as whole rough is we have got this colon added and then let me help you grow this one as the site title so this is the pretty simple thing that you can do from your um, general settings option and this is one of the important settings as well after that we have got this wordpress address url and site address url these are currently at http colon then we have got forward slash forward slash then our website domain address so in this these fields we are going to work on the actual project work for example if i show you learners world here you are going to see this padlock appearing here which means that this website is secured and now if i double click here we're going to see the url here http then we have got this s and after after that we have got this colon and double uh, forward sign so we have to work on this if i click on here we are going to see that connection is secure whenever any visitor is going to visit my website their uh, visit of my website is totally secure but if i just click here you are going to see that your connection to this site is not secure although we are working on the local server it doesn't matter if it is secure or not but in actual real life website real websites we have to be careful about these things okay so let me take you back we are going to work on this http conversion to https in our real projects in our future videos so let me skip this as of now then we have got this administration email address so currently i have got this email address mdrafi9 at gmail.com but if you want to change your administration email address simply you have to provide the email address right here and after that wordpress is going to send you a confirmation email and then you have to confirm that you are willing to use your email address as this site's administration email address so as you can see the new address will be will not become active until confirmed so after you confirm from the email address you received by clicking on the link then you will be able to access this website you will be able to modify the website as you want as the administrator then you have got this membership section where as you can see currently it is selected to anyone can register so now if i take you here in an incognito window and if i type out local server my website and then slash if i type out wp admin you are going to see that we have got this register option available so let me click here and just take a look if someone provides their username and email address they are going to find an email containing their login or the further action to become a member of our wordpress website and they will be able to access our site with the rule that is selected right here okay as you can see subscriber so if i uncheck this one and let me save and let me show you the difference unchecked and then if i click here go to incognito window and let me go again here just take a look we are not seeing that register button available here so now no one will be able to register an account on our wordpress website so this is how this thing works so after selecting this one you have to decide or select what which rule a member will be able to register on your website currently it is selected to subscriber and most of the time we select this option but if you want you can give them to the contributor access author access editor or administrator but these are not going to work because if someone gets any person whenever they will visit our web page if they try to create an account they will get this if you select this editor they will get the editor rule based uh, functionalities they'll be able to make a huge um, 
huge uh, things to on your website they'll be able to delay they'll be able to add contents on your website but as a subscriber they are not going to be able to do this so i'm going to keep subscribers here and after that we have got site language and i talked about these user rules in our previous video so you should watch that as well and after that we have got this site language from where we'll be able to change the language of this dashboard and the setting stuff's language actually so here recently i worked with a dutch client who was from netherlands i believe okay so he provided me access to his website and the language was selected to dutch and let me click on save let me just show you how things going to affect so after having the dutch version of the website i was not being able to understand anything because just take a look i know pretty well english i know bangla as a bangli person i know a little bit of hindi as well arabic as well so here as you can see i have got these languages are coming up here just take a look now if i want to see and if i want to um, understand anything the only way is by just simply uh, looking at these icons it was a real tough thing if i wasn't aware of how to change the language of a website so after getting the job accepted i simply changed the uh, language to english and then i clicked on this settings option then everything went to the english version and then i was able to make the changes for my client okay so after completing the work i made sure that i changed the website to dutch again as it was as the client provided me all right then we have got time zone and other than this language you'll be able to change whatever language you would love to use as you can see i'm seeing bangla here hindi here then you'll be able to use arabic language or whatever language you prefer from here okay then we have got this time zone so as i am from bangladesh my time zone is plus six but you can select whatever time zone you are from from here then we have got this date format it doesn't uh, matter actually it's not a big deal so i'd love to keep this as it is as of now but you can simply check whatever you want from here okay so i want to go with this one then the time format same thing you can select on your preference and after that we have got this week starts on so in bangladesh our week starts on sunday but in many countries week starts from monday so it depends on your location you can simply change the location from here sorry the day from here all right so then let's click on save change this was all you have to know about general settings now let's go to writing settings so in this page we have got nothing to do as well like no major things to do as well but as you can see we have we are seeing this default post category to uncategorized selected so whenever we are going to write any content write an article on this website the content will automatically get the uncategorized category selected automatically okay so now let's say your website is maintaining posts about freelancing you can simply select freelancing or whatever category you have listed on your wordpress website you can select that and then you can keep that as your default post category so whenever you will make a new blog post on your website the category will be automatically selected for you so this is how you will you will be able to save some time and then you have got this default post format so i have never ever changed this format i always go with standard but here we have got few other options aside chat gallery video audio etc so you can change it on your preference by but i mostly use this standard package or standard uh, format and for post mail uh, post via email i have never used this and you might never have to use this as well so don't worry about this setting so let me click on save change and after that let's go to the next option which is one of the important settings uh, from where we'll be able to set a few things as you can see from here your home page displays so if you notice if i click you to the take you to the home page of my website you are going to see that all of these blog posts are appearing instead of a static home page but if you notice this website here we have got a static page selected as our home page all right so it is loading for some reason so let me just cross this out and here as you can see i have got this static page so now if i cross this out and if i visit this web page again you are going to see that we are landing in a same page every time we are visiting this web page from the scratch right so now let me just take you back here let me show you some difference if i click on your latest post from here and then click on save chains it is going to be set on my home page now if i reload this page you are going to see that all the blog posts are appearing on my home page instead of the static one right 
So now let me take you back here. After that, let's talk about these things and then I'll come back here. So let's say blog post show at most 10 posts. So if I just show you here, I have got one, two, three, four, five, and six blog posts in total. These are small blog posts. So now I want to reduce the number of blog posts. So let's go back here. I want to uh, show you by giving two blog posts as an example. If I click on save change, you are going to find with our featured content, we have to ignore the featured one. Other than featured one, we'll see only two contents are going to be available here. So if I reload this page, um, okay, so this one is my featured post, as you can see, uh, featured post here. And after ignoring this one, number one post, and here is the one number two post. So only two posts is being appeared here, right? So this is how you can limit the post number. So I would love to give it to 10 uh, posts here. Then we have got syndication feeds show the most recent. So this is for RSS. So you can simply ignore this one as of now. And after that, we have got this section for each post in a feed include full text or summary. So if you keep full text, it is going to show us complete blog post here. So as I have got only the small text, so I might not going to be able to see anything, show you anything. So let me click on save change but let's reload and see if anything happens here. No, as this blog post has very little content, so we are not seeing the long posts appearing here. But what it does, it is going to show you the whole content instead of the summaries here. So always go with, we mostly use this summary option. So we see only a little part of the blog post, little part of the actual blog post appearing on our blogs page, right? So that people will be able to navigate our all of the blog posts easily so this is how it works now let's go for the next option which is search engine visibility discourage search engines from indexing this site so whenever we are going to modify a website we should keep this checked so no search engine will be able to index the size uh, site with the modified or let's say with the broken um, information so after completing working or the modification of a website we should uncheck this one let's click on save change so that now search engines like google yahoo yelp or sorry not yelp uh, aol whatever search engines are available there they will be able to index our site and our site will start uh, getting discovered by google search results in yahoo search results or index search results whatever it is okay so let me click on check as i am just working and modifying the website now let's go to the first page as of now if i visit the home page it is showing us all the blog posts here okay so it just changed so now we have to uh, we have i actually haven't it saved so let me click on save and reload this page yeah as you can see create your website with blocks and some other things are appearing but in this case it should be like a static page then the block home page should be this one and if i click here and let me reload this again we are going to see that everything is working so nicely and we have selected this page as our home page so it is nicely appearing now let's go back here again as you can see post page we have to select the post page to blog so that all the blog pages are going to be appearing right on our blog section or blog menu right here okay so let me click on save change and this was it about this readings option now let's go for discussion from where we'll be able to talk and we'll be able to set things about the comments so whenever we'll receive lots of traffics we on our website we'll receive comments so we can select some parameters here like as you can see allow people to submit comments on new posts so obviously whenever we'll upload a blog post we want people to share their opinion on our writings if we have written it properly with some good information or if you need to make some adjustment we should know learn about our visitors opinion so you can simply select this one allow people to submit comments on new post but when you are do going with like let me go with post we are creating a new post we'll have the option to allow or disallow for a specific blog post right allow comments or disallow comments from here so this is how comment comment things works and let me talk about few other information as you can see other comment setting comment author must fill out name and email so whenever someone is going to make a comment on our website they should provide their name and email address at least because we want to track our visitors okay this is really important so now if i take you to my comments from here 
you are going to see that we have got some comments from this person made a comment this person made a comment this person made a comment and this is their email address and other information right we should see this information on our web page now let's go back here and after that we have got few more options user must be registered and logged in logged into comments so if we select this one we are going to build a barrier so in this case i would recommend not to check this one because when some users need to register on your website by providing their email address providing their name and other information on your website before they make a comment they most likely not going to make a comment okay so in this case we want to get comments and when we want to give our visitors the easiest experiences possible on our website so i should uncheck and then this one should be unchecked as well we don't want our comments to be disappeared because comments works on seo signals as well then we have got these options which should be selected now let me just go on this important part email me whenever anyone posts a comment so whenever someone will make a comment on my blog post i should receive an email then we have got comment author must have a pre previously approved comment so if a comment comment should be placed or as the approved comment like on the blog post then the comment author who is going to write this comment they should have a history like i have manually reviewed the reviewed the comment and approved it right so that their comment will be approved other than that the comment will be in moderation mode whenever i will moderate this one whenever i will review the comment and if i see everything goes well then i can simply approve this one and the comment will be appeared on my website other than that it will be holded now let's go for this one comment moderation hold the comment if the key if if the if it contains one or more links so you might going to notice some comments like people are going to use add some links on their comments maybe from some outer uh, resources or for some spam links as well so in this case if you re receive any comment if the blog post receive any comment which is containing any uh, link on our on the comment then the comment should be in moderate review so that when we will review the comment then the comment will be approved or disapproved right so people might going to add some comments add some links which are not relevant they are going to make some spams so in this case we have to make the website clean so for this reason we should keep this to one or two whatever you prefer you can simply keep one or two or more than that as well if you prefer so i'd love to keep it one so whenever someone will add any link i should see that what is the link they are referring to and for that we have got when a comment contains any of these words in content author name url email uh, ip address so let's say you have got some um, repetitive comments from some users you can select them here so if someone is providing good comments that's great but if someone is trying to make some bad comments trying to uh, make some spam things on your website you can list them here list their name list their email address list their um, url address website url or ip address here and then you will be whenever some they will be commented on any of your blog post if it is uh, good or bad whatever it is no problem you will receive a notification like someone has made a comment you have then you'll be able to uh, review the comment before you approve it on your website so this is how it works and then we have got disallowed comment keys so sometimes when you will write blog post or when our clients write blog post they get so many bad people or people who comes and make some offensive comments make some uh, inappropriate comments spam comments in this case we can simply provide their username provide their ip address provide their name and then email address whatever other information and some texts as well we can add this press and it's going to work like wordpress and other things like the words they most likely going to use as the bad comment we can simply put these words here and whenever they will make a comment right on our uh, wordpress website using these words or from the targeted email address ip address the comment is going to be automatically in trash mode so the comment will never gonna be uh, public again until we make it public so this is how these things works and then we have got this avatar section as you can see currently it is selected to this image so if i show you one of our previous comments if i take you to blogs and here if you just notice we have got this image which is currently selected to this so now let's say i want to change to this image let's click on save this is the avatar image if i reload this page oops not this one this page 
you are going to see the avatar has changed so this is the person who made the comment and this is me who replied to the comment okay so this is how these avatar things works and all of these comment things works now let's go for the media option from where you will be able to select the media site so whenever you upload an image on a wordpress blog post or wordpress website or however you will be uh, wordpress will automatically resize the image and make few versions as you can see for thumbnail size they are going to make a version of 150 150 pixels for medium size they are going to use this size for large size they are going to use this size so let's say you have uploaded a an image with 5000 pixels which is a big one so if you have got this big image loading on your website it is going to take longer than a image size with 1024 uh, pixels right so in this case uh, wordpress is going to minify the image size and your website page load speed will be minified as well like it will be faster so they are going to do the work for us and whenever let's say you have uploaded an image with 5000 pixels someone is visiting your website from a mobile device you shouldn't show them this 5000 pixels based uh, image right in the initial stage so in this case wordpress is doing the stuff for you and they are going to just reduce the image size to give your users better performance of your wordpress website so this is how and uh, keeping your website loading speed faster is going to affect on your SEO stuff as well. All right, so this is how they are going to help us. We can simply select the image size. As you can see, thumbnail size is currently selected to 150. We can simply make it to 200 and 200 here, and it's going to work like this, right? And then we have got this organize my uploads into month and year based folders. Obviously, we need our uh, folders or uploads to be organized with date and month based um, structure so let's keep them as they are i'm going to click on save change and after that we have got one of the important settings on permalinks because as you can see here we have got few options plain post format okay actually the hyperlink format so if i just show you this one as an example if i it is i just uh, maybe i've made some okay so one of our previous videos i talked about this permalink but let me just give you the explanation in case if you have missed it if you just notice this web page or this blog post have this permalink learn more about categories which is totally seo friendly okay so now if i and it is easy to read whenever someone is going to read this um hyperlink they're going to get some idea about our blog post as well and it works great for seo factor as well so let me take you back here we have got few options as you can see you can put your website domain name then the date and then the post title okay so this is the length long title is going to uh, long permalink it is going to generate so and it is not reader friendly as well but let me just show you an example if i cl click on this plain text and if i click on save and let me reload this page we are not seeing an anything here so let me reload this page from here from blog if i click on this post again just take a look we have got this p equal to 48 one id appearing so this is completely not an seo friendly url and no one is going to be able to say something about this blog post until they are looking at your original blog post all right so in this case we have to make the change you have got few more options so you can see numeric then month and uh, name then i have got post name so we mostly use this one to make our blog post SEO friendly. So let's click here and if I click on save change and now if I reload this page, a page you are going to find that we have got this types of um, thumbnail uh, permalink here, okay? So just take a look, we have got this title appearing on our uh, original website or blog post URL. So this is how you have to make your blog URL uh, SEO friendly by doing this permalink setting. And we don't have to think about other settings available here let's go to back to privacy settings here and from privacy in many countries there is a rule if you own a website you should have on the website should have a privacy policy page for your readers for your viewers so this is a rule for many of the webs uh, many of the countries so in this case you have to create a privacy policy page with the privacy policy settings i have got my privacy policy uh, settings informations as well so after coming here if you don't have a privacy policy page created simply click on create new page and it is going to take you to this page where you'll find 
pre-built privacy poli policies uh, information here you can make some adjustment right here by providing your own information as you can see it's already taken our website url it is going to take it is taken our website url some and some other information here as well as you can see you can adjust them you can modify them adjust them to make them work for you and then let's click on publish let's click on publish and if i take you back here on our um settings and then from privacy now simply i have to select the page which is privacy policy and then use this page as the privacy policy now we have got this settings perfectly done all right so this is how all of these settings work in a wordpress backend or wordpress dashboard and you can make these important settings for uh, for for your client's website for your own website when you need okay so this was it guys i believe i was able to give you clear explanation of the settings throughout this lesson and i believe you have been enjoying the whole course so far if you have been enjoying please let me know your opinion by commenting below and please share this course with your friends we are done with all the backends so far we have covered everything available here we have covered the appearance themes themes whatever appearing here everything is covered so now we are completely ready to go for the real work we are going to start building actual websites as i do for my clients and i'm going to show you in my uh, future lessons step by step so let's go for the next lessons and thank you so much for staying with me this long have a good day hello and welcome to the 13th lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so so far i have covered everything you need to know about wordpress backend management and now from this specific lesson we are going to learn about everything practical so i'm going to show you from fiverr first of all so here if i take you on fiverr let me just give you some examples or information what you are going to learn throughout this lesson so here i'm on fiverr and if i type out here demo you are going to find services wordpress installation and demo upload so if you have watched my previous lessons already you should know how to install wordpress and we are going to work on demo soon so as you can see demo import two services available so let me just go with wordpress installation and demo upload and if you just notice the services people's are as, as you can see i will install wordpress theme installation and demo upload within uh two hours okay that's great then i will do wordpress installation and demo upload so these guys are installing wordpress these guys are installing a theme and then importing the demo contents i'm going to show you how they are making money so let me just take you back here again and if i type out demo demo and then if you just click on demo import so if you just notice here 4781 services available as of now with this long keyword this one okay but when i'm going with only demo and if i click on demo import you are going to find less competition 385 services available and if you just notice i will do input theme demo and customize wordpress website and we are going to customize websites as well in our future lessons but this video is going to be completely focused on theme installation three ways how we can install theme on a wordpress website and then we are going to learn how to import demo contents from the theme itself to provide this service to our clients so if you just notice here people are giving same thing i will import demo content for wordpress or joomla so we are learning wordpress so now let's just move on i'm going to cross this out from here and let me take you here on our local host my website and we created another website in a lesson so let me just visit the other website local host and then i'm going to type out new site which is this one okay we imported content from this website to this website which we have got here the blog post now what i'm going to do at the very beginning before we start working on a client project we have to take their permission like when we need to import demo contents on a website we have to reset the website completely so let me show you how we can reset and you should take permission of your client you should ask them if it is okay if you reset the wordpress website so you need actually a clean installation so let me just cross this out i don't want to uh, destroy this website as of now so i'm going to cross this out and then i'm going to make all the changes here on this second website and then i'm going to show you everything so let me just 
click here and then here i'm going to show you other way to visit your login page as you can see we used to use like wp hyphen admin now we are using login and both of the things are going to work same for you so here i'm going to type out my password one two three four five six seven eight nine and then at the rate hit enter and here we go we are on the wordpress backend and if i show you some things here as you can see we have imported demo contents from our previous website and i've shown you how to use these features input features now what i'm going to do i'm going to reset this website we don't need anything to be available here we want everything to be banished and then we'll go for the wordpress installation step by step so let me go to plugins and to reset a wordpress website we are going to use a plugin so let me click on add new button from here and after that i'm going to type out here wp reset and it is going to load the uh, load the plugin which we are looking for this one as you can see so let me click on install now and it is going to be installed and then we have to activate the plugin to this website so let's just wait while it is being installed here we go and then let's click on activate and we have got this tool installed and activated as you can see wp reset now if we go to tools and if we click on wp reset button right here it is going to take us to this page from where we have to uh, or actually we will be able to reset the complete website so as you can see here the reset button so let me just un uncheck this one so we don't want this plugin to be reactivated on our wordpress website after getting everything cleaned up so let me type out reset as you can see here type in reset so i'm going to type out reset and let's click on reset site let's click on reset wordpress it is going to take few seconds to get everything cleaned up it depends on the wordpress website size actually the database size so as you have got very basic things so it is going to take around yeah it's already been done so now if i show you the website if i visit the page here this is the complete clean web page then if i take you to posts you are going to find that we have got this hello world the default post so i'm going to delete this default post so I'm going to take it to trash and then I'm going to delete it permanently from this database. So we should keep our database completely clean. So now let's go for pages and we want to delete these pages as well. I'd love to click here, move to trash, then click on apply. And after that from trash, I'm going to delete them permanently. So let's select, oops. So let's select them here, then bulk selection to delete permanently, then click on apply and now we have got a pretty clean web page here nothing available on the website now let me show you how you can install themes on your wordpress website i'm going to show you three different ways so first of all from appearance you already know the basics so if in from appearance if i click on themes we are going to find the option to choose themes to delete themes from our database and from our wordpress website itself so let me add a new theme here so let me click on add new theme and after that i am going to go with let me click on popular and you are going to find a vast majority of themes available here right so thousands of themes you are going to find here which you can use completely free although they have premium version as well with free themes you will get some limitations but it's totally fine for practice purpose as of now and obviously i'm going to show you how to work with paid themes as well so please don't worry now let me say that yeah astro one of the most popular and mostly used website available okay uh, and then we have got this nap theme which i use mostly for my blog sites and here this theme i'd love to go with this theme to show you the work example so here you can see cadence is the theme name so if i click here you are going to see the reviews available right here so as you can see this theme has 94 ratings quite a great theme i would say and if i take you to astro theme you are going to find 4863 ratings so this is one of the best themes available out there but we are going to work on this theme later let's go for cadence theme as of now we have got 94 ratings so when you are selecting a theme make sure you are checking out the reviews because this is going to indicate this is going to give you a clear idea about the theme's quality so let's say i want to install this theme so simply i can click on this install button from here and it is going to be installed within like few seconds so let's just wait 
all right so here we have got the theme installed now if we click on activate the theme will be activated so let me just keep this unactivated because you already know the basics of activation so let me just cross this out and if you just if i just take you to themes page from here you are going to find we have got cadence themes installed as well now if i visit the web page we are we are going to see that nothing happened here it the our website is as it was before so now let me just delete this theme and i'm actually going to show you how to activate the theme soon and how to work on this so let me show you the other way of installing a theme so let me click on delete so it is going to be deleted from our database now let's go to um, wordpress.org from where we downloaded and installed our wordpress um, software so from here okay and now what i'm going to do after visiting wordpress.org i'm going to click on themes and then i'm going to make a search here let's say ked or uh, cadence uh, let me just see the name here from here um okay add new sorry i should uh, <laughs> uh, take a look at the theme name properly um yeah cadence k-a-d-e-n-c-e -E. so i'm going to upload uh search this here k-a-d-e-n-c-e -E, cadence theme and from here you are going to find this theme as well so let me just click here and then you can see how many ratings as you can see 93 ratings actually 95 ratings in total but 93 five star ratings and two people's or uh, whoever they found this theme not working good for them so here we can simply come here visit other themes as well on this themes planet wordpress org and then from themes we'll be able to find same themes what we have found here okay exactly the same themes and here so from here we just have to find it find it out like k a d e s c e cadence and then we have to click here we'll be able to see and read more details about the theme if we visit the theme home page we'll find more information about the theme as you can see and as you can see these are the templates which you can easily import and i'm going to show you how easily we can import import the theme and as you can see integration with the plugins you love so it is going to work with elementor which you are going to learn as well and we need to learn to become completely job ready so let's just move on what i'm going to do here i'm going to download the theme from here so let's click on download and let's select the download folder and then i'm going to up, uh, download it and it is going to take around 10 seconds to get downloaded so let's just wait all right guys so here i have got the theme downloaded on my computer now what i have to do i have to go back here on themes and from themes uh this is just to show you the process okay we we can simply go with the other way which we have already done we can simply go with that process but i'm just showing you the other options because you might maybe some clients are going to ask you to do by this way and by downloading and downloading and installing a theme manually it is going to work for you when you are going to upload a paid theme because a paid theme is not going to be appear available here on these theme libraries for free right so in this case we have to download the themes and then we have to upload the themes the way how i am going to upload now so it is totally beneficial for you to watch so let me click on add new button from here and after that as you can see we can select the themes from here but we have got another option right at the top as you can see upload theme and now if i click on upload theme we are going to find the option to upload the files here so let me just choose the file from here and then i'm going to downloads and then let's see here this is the theme which i have just downloaded so let me just click here then let's click on open and let's click on install now and it is going to take few seconds to get things installed as you can see here unpacking the package install uh, installing the theme theme installed successfully so we have got the theme successfully installed so now if i take you back here from themes you are going to find that cadence themes has been added right here okay so now again if you want to activate the theme simply if you click on this activate button it is going to be activate activated but now i'm not going to do this activation I have got one more way that I should show you how to upload a theme manually on your database. So let me just delete this theme from here. So we will have only three themes available right now. So let's just go back in the download folder here. And here we go on download. As you can see, I have got this theme downloaded, which I have just downloaded. Now I'm going to extract this file from here. Let's extract.
All right, so here we have got the theme extracted. Now let's copy this extracted folder copy. And what you have to do, you have to simply come here on your this PC or the whole uh, drive and then go to the drive where your ZAMP folder is available. So let me go to L drive. And after that, I'm going to ZAMP. Then we have to go to HT Docs. And after that, go to the website which you are currently working on. So I am currently working on new site. So let me go here. And after that, go to WP content, and then you are going to find this themes option. So let's open it up and then paste the theme which you have just copied from your um, extracted file. Now, if I take you back here on our WordPress site, and if I reload this page here, and just take a look, we have got this theme installed on our WordPress website. So this was the three ways you should know about installing a WordPress theme. Now let me just activate the theme. Let me click on activate. And if I simply reload this page, you are going to see some changes. Just take a look. We have got some changes. We have nothing here on our WordPress website, but we have to do something if I delete them from here. Now let's go back here. And as you can see here, thanks for choosing the cadence template. Want to get started with a uh, beautiful starter template. Obviously, we have to install the demo contents. And for this, we need this starter template, right? Because our clients, as I have shown in the starting of this video, clients are interested, clients are looking for the demo contents to be imported. So now we have to learn the process. So as you can see, install the Cadence Starter Templates plugin to launch and optimize design in minutes. So if we install this install Cadence Starter Template, we'll be able to uh, import demo contents on this website easily by simply clicking a few times. So let me just click on install Cadence Starter Template and it is going to be installed and let's just wait while it is being installed all right so it's it's just been installed now you have to select the builder which you have to use so as i have mentioned we are working on becoming expert becoming a uh, freelancer job ready with elementor and wordpress so we are going to select this elementor builder so let me click on elementor and after that you are going to find these templates which you can easily simply by, by clicking few times you will be able to import them on your wordpress website so as you can see you can create a print shop which is e-commerce shop you can create a freelance um let's say a portfolio site you can create a course site you can create a agency site okay and then you can select another agency site you can select a real estate website you can create this website as well so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the simple example from here. Let's say this one. Okay. So let's say this one. So if I click on here, you are going to find, let me just cross this out. You are going to see this demo appearing here, as you can see. So after clicking few more times, we'll be able to install this complete website in our WordPress. So let's let's just take a look. You can select the colors from here. What are the colors of themes? What are the colors of the text, etc., etc. Let me keep them as they are as of now. We are going to make the changes later. So let's just go for it. As you can see, required plugins. You need Fluent Forms not installed. We have to install this uh, Fluent Form, and then we need to install Elementor, which is not installed as well. So we are going to install them later. So first of all, or actually maybe yeah, it is it might going to cause some issues if you don't have these uh, plugins plugins installed so what i'm going to do i'm simply going to copy these um, plugins name let me go back here and i'm going to go with dashboard and after that let's go to plugins and we need to install plugin named uh, fluent forms so let's make a search here okay here as you can see wp fluent form i'm going to go with this one as of now Okay, so it's just in installed. Now it's time to click on activate. And then we need one more plugin, which is Elementor. Obviously, we have to um, install this one for our future jobs. So let me just click on add new again. And after that, I'm going to make a search for Elementor here. And here we go, Elementor website builder. So let's click on install now. And just take a look, last two days ago, it's just got updated. So they are totally totally safe to use and they are updating their platform they're updating their tool to make it easier for us so let's just go for it let's uh, wait while it's being installed all right so here we have got our elementor website builder installed as well now it's time to click on activate 
now we can simply cross this out and we can go back here on this page okay so you are about to install our starter template so now if i just reload this page and if i click here again you are going to see that we have got this for uh, plugins already been active so fluent forms elementor showing us active so now if i click on yeah, okay so one more thing i'd love to let you know as you can see the single page so if i select single page i will only have this page installed and activated on my or sorry imported on my wordpress website but i want the complete website the client needs the complete website for this we have to click on this full site button so let me click on full site and after that you are going to find this notification simply click on start importing and it is going to start in the background and it might depending on the wordpress website size it is going to take around 15 30 45 seconds or let's say one minute to get everything done for you so let's just wait and see how it goes all right guys so here i have got this message import complete finished view your site so now let's click here and you are going to view your new website where you have just imported contents demo contents on the wordpress website just just take a look how easy it is and people are providing this specific service on fiverr to make some money so if i just click on about you are going to find that everything has been just came along with this setup and now it's time to start customizing the website start making it working for us or working for our clients and we're going to learn more about the customization more about building websites step by step in our future lessons so now let's just take a look at this site a little more if you click here on courses you are going to find these things if you click on contact you are going to find this beautiful form already been created for us simply we have to customize to make it working for our client okay so this is how it is so this was it guys i believe you have found this video helpful this video informative if you did please 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 share this video share this complete course with your friends on your social media on your facebook twitter instagram or whatever platform you are using so i want to make you complete job ready so please don't miss the lessons let's go for the next lessons and let's make it happening guys we want to become successful wordpress and elementor based service providers so thank you so much great days are ahead have a good day hello and welcome to the 14th lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiber or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on so so far we learned everything we need to know about wordpress backend management we learned how to install a wordpress theme in three different ways and then we learned how to import demo contents on a wordpress website from the themes templates and now we have got this beautiful website already so just take a look this is a beautiful professional looking website we have got by simply installation of a wordpress theme and by simply importing the templates available for the theme right in my previous video i have shown the demand of this simple service on fiber and now it's time to start customizing this website but before i go for the customization process i would love to show you the demand of wordpress theme customization on fiber only so let me take you to fiber and if i type out here theme theme customization just take a look i have written theme here and if you just notice here from services which is listed on fiber itself wordpress theme customization db theme theme shopify shopify theme customization wordpress site and theme customization wordpress theme development theme forest wordpress theme installation so client is going to purchase a theme from theme forest and then you have to install it on their website pretty pretty basic stuff but clients are providing clients are um, paying you for doing this simple task so let me be more specific in this video let's go for wordpress theme customization if i click on this link we are going to see that wow already 57286 gigs available on fiber only people are providing wordpress theme customization services to their clients and they are making money as freelancers so if i just open this up if you open this up open this up open this up you are going to find few more information this guy has 124 five star reviews he is providing this exact same theme he is providing one page customization 
20 us dollars and he have got few more options just take a look 10, 10 pages of customization of a wordpress website and he's charging 150 so just take a look this one i'll fix wordpress website issues or theme customization she is providing theme customizations and also if there is an issue with a wordpress website he's going to solve she's going to solve this as well and just take a look we have got these pricing so right and currently she is working with two different clients then this guy is also currently working with two different clients by providing this exact same services which you are going to learn throughout this lesson just to go i'll do any wordpress theme customization uh, currently working with one client and here is the information and just imagine we have got 57,286 gigs available for this specific service only on fiber just imagine the demand of this service on marketplace all right guys so now let's not talk too much about these perks let's go for real action let's go for practical work so now i'm going to show you how to customize a wordpress website by using elementor and then without elementor so first of all actually i'm going to show you without elementor so let's say I'm going to change this logo then this icon I'm going to change some items on these menus or navigation menus then I'm going to make some changes on this button I'm going to change the text color I'm going to show you how to change I'm going to change the background color I'm going to change the linkings and other information and we are going to learn more about these things customizations as well so without spending too much time on the intro let me take you to action so if i click on this customize button right here we are going to find all the options for these themes customizations as you can see from general header footer page layout we are seeing import export buttons as well with this information with these options so from general we'll be able to find the layout settings option sidebar settings option colors button typography and other options as you can see but to keep this tutorial organized i would love to go from the top from this header part so as, as you can see we are seeing on header we have got this logo we are going to change the logo we are going to make these stuffs first okay so let me take you back here and from header if i click on header you are going to see that we are now seeing these options logo page navigation button which are this is logo this is page navigation this is button right so let's start making the change if i click on logo we are going to find the option where it will be able to change the logo will be able to remove the logo will be able to change the logo white and other information so let's get started i'm going to click on change logo but if you don't want to get any logos to be displayed you can simply click on remove and the logo is going to be banished right now let me click on select logo and then i'm going to click on select files and then i'm going to select the logo which i have created if you're interested to learn from me the process how i design logos without knowing graphic design skills then please let me know i'd love to make a video okay so that you'll be able to learn and i have created this fab icon as well so let me click on select then click on open and this logo is being uploaded now let's click on select and then skip cropping and here we go we have got this logo added now you can simply reduce the logo size by simply dragging and dropping this option okay you can reduce or increase the size so let me just reduce a little bit to make it looking good with this um, button so i think 100 pixel is looking great so i'm going to type out 100 and just take a look the alignment is looking great here now from these options logo layout you will be able to add along with logo you'll be able to add the site title so as you can see we have got this site title as of now achar rafi so you are seeing this one so now i want this site title to be added just an example though it's not looking going to look good but i'm just going to show you some clients might going to ask you to do these works for them so just for this reason so let me click on logo and title just take a look you are seeing my name here appearing so let's say you want to uh, change the designs as you can see we can select the designs as well click here and you are going to see some difference click here you are going to see some difference click here and you are going to see some difference right now you want along with logo um, site title you want the tagline as well simple select this one and these informations are going to be appearing here so this is not looking good obviously but i just wanted to show you how things works now you can change the designs as you want just take a look change the designs but now what i'm going to do i'm going to click on logo and only going with logo is going to be a best option for this website design now 
let's go for site title and tagline so we already talked about site title and other tagline and other setting stuffs in our previous video or one of our previous videos but now let me just change this one from Achal Rafi if I say um, okay um, let's skip it to Achal Rafi's um, portfolio just an example portfolio okay just take a look take a look here already these parts are being changed okay so we can also change this tagline but I don't want to spend time on these things I after making any change on your website after making any change if you want to keep the change to be active then you have to click on this publish button right here all right so now it's been published if I visit this web page from here not uh, localhost then this is the web page localhost slash new site just take a look we have got our logo changed already with this proper sized now let's go back here in this editing panel and from here now it's time to change the site icon so we are we are seeing the Zamps site icon but we need a custom site icon so for our clients website they are going to provide their logos mostly they are going to provide their site icons as well so let me take you back here as you can see we have created this website at the very beginning stage and just take a look we have got a custom site icon already in this web page and we learned everything throughout all lessons but now let's go back here we are seeing that thing is not available it's time to use this knowledge how we have added this knowledge to our clients website now just as an example okay so it's simple click on site icon from here and then select the site icon and again here they are suggesting us 50 5112 5112 pixel size right so let me click on select site icon and upload the image from here upload the image and if you are interested to learn how to create site icon how to create logos again you can let me know by commenting below simply click on select then click on skip cropping and just take a look we have got this site icon added let's click on publish and if I reload this page we should see the change happening here it's already been happened right so pretty simple and now it's looking real great color stream is looking great right now let's go back it's time to work on these navigation menus so simple if I take you back from here and from header if I click on primary navigation I'm going to see this option appearing so let's say you are not going to make the or you are not seeing this option you can simply find these options from menus because these are menus so if you click on menus and then here is the option menus cards uh, course menu sorry course main is the menu name and we learned more about the menu things in one of our previous lessons if you have missed please watch that for proper clarification so let me click on course menu sorry course main so that you will be able to see the items available and then we'll be able to add some items so let's say after whom about I want a new item to be added here which is going to be let's say offers just an example so let me click on course main we are going to see all the things appearing here we have got this sub menu just take a look how it is formatted after all courses we have got this course um, here right so now I'm going to type out click on add item so add items and then I'm going to add a new page and here we have got few more options as you can see we can add a menu item here by using a custom link by using a page by using a post landing page categories text etc but I'd love to go with pages so let me click on page and then I'd love to type out let's say offers and then let's click on add and it is going to create a new home, uh, new page for our website so if I take you here take your dashboard and from pages you should see a offers page is been created let me see uh, okay not yet but let me take you back here uh, is this okay here we go offers it should be added so let me just show you I'm going to show you offers is selected and here it is let's click on publish and let me just reload this page offers offers should be here okay it's not being yeah here we go this is offers right so it's being available now let's take go back here now I want this offer to be offers to be available right after about page so let's just drag it right here and if I keep it like this just take a look after whom about we have got offer 
Now let's say you want offers to be a submenu of about simple. If you just drag it like this, just take a look, we have got a drop down menu with offers with beautiful effects. So this is how these things work. So let me take it here and let's click on publish. And now if I show you this page in a new tab, here we go, we have got these beautiful things happened. Now, if you want to delete something from this menus, you can simply do this as well. Simply, let's say I don't want offers to be available anymore. Simple click here, then you are going to find this remove button. Click on remove and it is going to be removed from here. Let's click on publish and here we go. We have got things done. Now, just take a look. We have got these options, menu locations, primary is selected mobile is selected and this is the reason whenever we are loading this page we are seeing this menu appearing here all right so now let's go back and here actually i'm going to cross this out and here we don't have any more options to talk about so let's go back from here from here it's time to work on this button so from header we have got this buttons option so let's click on button and after that, as you can see, the level is now take free course, but I'd love to give a level like um, WordPress um, course. Okay. You can simply keep it like this. And then I'd love to give the URL to my WordPress website, uh, WordPress course. Okay. So that whenever someone will click here, they are going to find my tutorials easily. So let me take you here. Um, YouTube then Ajhor Rafi and I'd love to go with the playlist playlist and I want to add this one WordPress basic to advanced course where we have got all these lessons already been added so let me take you here on customize if I type out this course or URL here then open in new tab so whenever someone will click the course information are going to be opened in a new window so let me cross this out and now let's click on publish and if I reload this page and now if I just take a look, we have got this text changed. Now if I click on WordPress course, it is going to take us into a new window with my course information here. All right. So let me cross this out. So this is how you can change, uh, make the changes on a WordPress button, website button. Now let's go back here. Let's say you want to make some change on the button style. Simple, go to design. And after that, you are going to find these options like padding. If you have, you need to know about the CSS stuff if you want to work on these things. But don't worry, I'm going to make you so familiar about all of these settings. These are randomly I use. All right, so please don't worry. So these colors, as you can see, these colors are referring to this text color. As you can see, the color is currently selected to white. And now, if you want to change the color to, let's say, um, I'm just going to select a random color. This color. Just take a look we have got this color changed now it is normally been changed but on hover we have got this white color still so let me just make the change on hover i want this color just an example so now if i hover this over here just take a look the color is being changed right so let's say i want the background color from this color to something else i want this to be black just take a look how it is looking like and then on hover i want the color instead of this color just take a look still if we are hovering over we are seeing this color uh, coming up here but i want this color to be changed to let's say white and now if i hover over just take a look how it is looking like right so these are not looking good these are not a good color combination i like the previous one so in this case i can simply click here on this reset values reset values and now everything is correctly as it was okay now we are done with the header part the basic customization process now let's go for the footer section and then we are going to come back here on these parts so let me take you back here and from these settings you are going to find this footer section so if i take you to the footer part of this website you are going to find that we have got this phone number email information this menu section these icons so let me just show you how you can make changes on these things so if i click on footer you are going to see what are the informations available on the footer item so first of all we have got footer navigation you can simply select the menu whatever you want to put so currently it is selected to course main so we are going to create secondary menus if we need right so let me just keep this as of now no problem so let's keep uh, click on back or actually let me show you by adding a new menu 
items new menu items let's say i want privacy policy terms of service and uh, yeah only privacy policy and terms of service and some other things let me just take you here or here and then if i take you to menus let me create click on create a new menu from here and let's say footer menu just as an example and then it should be footer and yeah okay footer then click on create menu and now we want to add the items so now let's create these items so first of all i would love to create some pages so let me go back on page and then i'm going to add some pages let's say terms of services one page and then privacy policy i'm going to add a new page oops go here click on add new then i want privacy privacy then publish publish and one more page which i can add is fairly asked question let's say faq just an example click on publish publish and i want instead of these menus i want these to be added here like privacy policy let me just take you back here and we were actually here and then let's go to menus and after that footer menu is selected footer menu is selected here as you can see from footer menu now i want pages to be added so let's say faq privacy terms of services these pages to be added in the footer menu so if i click on say ups click on add to menu then if i click on save menu now if i take you back here and then if i reload this page it should be added here already so let me take you to the footer yeah okay so now we have to make the change here if i take you to footer and then from footer navigation from um, select menus we are going to select this footer as you can see it is currently selected to course main but we are going to make the change to footer menu and just take a look we have got a new footer menu added here so this is the way how you can customize the website's menu sections now let's go for these things if i click here on this pen icon it is going to take me to the exact place where i have to make the changes so i've just clicked here and then if i want to provide my phone number let's say this is my phone number one to one um 400 zero zero or whatever i am going to type out it is going to be changed and added just take a look right now if i want to make the change on the email address if i type out let's say email or md rafi9 at gmail.com just take a look we have got this change happened now let's say i want to change the icon links of this facebook twitter instagram and uh, YouTube so if I click on publish and if I visit this page on localhost new website if I click on these links you are going to see that these are not working right so these are not working as of now if I click on Twitter this is not working so let me just add let me show you how we can link them properly so let me take you back here and then if I click on this social I'm not actually here if I take you back or if I click on this edit icon from here or if I click here on this social button then you'll be able to find this option so you'll be able to add more items here you can remove the items so let's say I don't want Twitter to be appeared so let me click here let's click on remove item Twitter will be removed let's say I want another item like my LinkedIn profile to be added so here is LinkedIn click here and here we go we have got this added here now let's say you want to change the links simple go a little bit down and then you are going to find this set social links if we click here you will find the options to provide the link so let's say i want to provide my facebook url here so facebook.com slash um is my url let me type it out let's say i want my instagram to be added here instagram and this is how you have to make changes on each of the links each of the social media icons you want to add so let me click on publish and let me so show you the effect if i reload this page and if i click on facebook if i click on instagram you are going to find that i have got this facebook page linked on my website so if i cross this out and just take a look this is my um, instagram profile as well so 
this is how you have to add links on your website let's talk about this part and then you're going to start customizing the upper header so let's talk about this part let's say as you can see we have got c copyright then 2021 azure office portfolio then i have got this part so i don't need this part so as we are using this theme for free we should give credit to the theme owner obviously this is a good stuff but some clients prefers not to have these um credit text added to their website so in this case let me show you how you can remove this part simple simply go back here on the customizer go back here and go back here from footer we are going to click on copyright and then you are going to find this option copyright year then site title then remove this part theme um whatever theme credit so let's click on publish and you are going to see that we are seeing this change if i reload this page here it is going to work nicely just take a look copyright 2021 azure office portfolio so this is how the footer customization works now let me take you to the top of this page and let's start customizing this section using elementor so let's go back here and i'm going to cross this out or yeah cross this out in here here on the home page let's cross this page as well now as you can remember while we installed this theme while importing all of these contents to this web page we installed elementor plugin on our web page or website and this is the reason we are seeing this option edit with elementor button so if i click on edit with elementor right here and yeah and just take a look we are seeing that this customizing things appearing so whenever we are hovering over whatever the element we are seeing these options to make changes right so you'll be able to make changes on image we'll be able to make changes on every element of this web page so let's say you want to change the image of this web page so let's say i want to add my image if i click here if i click on choose image just just take a look i have clicked here and then this option appeared so if i click here on choose image and then let's say if i go to upload files and then if I upload my own image, let's say this one. Oh, okay, so this is not ready. So I'm going to open this in a um, in Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, and then I'm going to cross some part of this image. Let's say this part. And yeah, this part, let's say. Save this image to, okay. And now if I simply go back and upload this image here, let's click on insert medium just take a look i have got my image added here right so this is that simple how we can change image how we can add contents on this web page using elementor so let's say i want to make change on these things these title things these other information so let's say instead of founder and businesses i'd love to type out founder and ceo all right just take a look the change is happening here now let's say i want to change this one so Ajharul Rafi okay I'm the founder of Ajharul Rafi what a joke here okay so whatever I've just written here okay just to show you that this is pretty easy to customize a website content using Elementor now let's go for this thing I'm going to type out something like um, online tutor online tutor and then I would love to type out um, for beginners for beginners okay just take a look this is pretty simple now instead of this name i'd love to type out my name ajharul rafi simple simple days been happening right so now let me help you learn word press okay just just take a look WordPress and freelancing. Let me type this out. WordPress free and freelancing. Okay, simple. I have just typed out and this information is being changed. And if I want, I can add, I can remove contents from this is an example. Just take a look. As I want, I'm being able to make the change on this web page using um, Elementor so now let's say i want to make change on this button if i click on update or one thing i forgot to mention so whenever you are making some change on your website using elementor you should keep on update so that your change will be saved otherwise the change will be lost so i have just clicked on updated if i click on this previous change option 
or button you are going to see that i'm being able to see this page i am being able to see the change what i have done so now if i click on this button it is not working so let me show you how we can change the button styles and other things by using elementor itself so if i take you back here if i click on this button simply you are going to find all the options to make changes on the button so if as you can see the type is default then the text view all courses i love to type view all videos uh, watch actually watch all videos and then if i want to add this link here so let me copy and if i want to this link simply paste the link here or whatever link you would love to put then by clicking on this gear icon you are going to find open in new window and some other options right so as of now we can simply go with these options no worries and we will learn more stuff later now if i click on update and it is being saved okay now it is being loaded automatically if i click on this watch all videos it is going to take me to this page right so this is pretty simple stuff how we can customize a wordpress website okay by using elementor now let's go for this and if you want to change the background colors and other stuff simple click here go to style then change the background color change the hover color and all the things will be changed and we are going to cover everything about these stuffs in our future video when i'll go for elementor specifically right so and as of my as my uh, motto as my goal is to make you job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor obviously i'm going to teach you everything so please don't worry now let's go for the next option so let's say yeah one thing i'd love to show you let's say elementor why i love elementor so much is because let's say i want to copy this thing simply if i paste it here just take a look i have got another button created without spending or without um, investing some time here Right? so this is how easy it is and if you click here you are going to find more options like if i want i can simply um, give it to this alignment i can simply fill whole colors like this or so christ cross so these are the things why i love elementor so let me just make it change and i would love to go with um, this image simple i can go with this let's click here i can simply select whatever image i want let's click this one click on insert media just take a look how it is looking like now let's go for this one instead of this image let's say you want to make uh, upload new image simply click here and you are going to find this option click here and choose image then let's say you want to select this image just an example click on insert media just take a look by clicking few times you are being able to customize everything let's say you want to make change here this is my um, post heading as an example just take a look pretty simple everything you will be able to change like this now let's say you want to change the background color so let's say if i click here go to style go here then i can simply select a color like this okay so whatever color i want whatever color you prefer though this is looking worst <laughs> but just to show you how it works right so now i can simply undo this setting by clicking on clear and just take a look we have got this beautiful website now let's say i want to delete some part of this website let's say i don't want this part simply click here and it will be deleted this is how it works pretty easy now let's say by mistake you have deleted something or by mistake you have made some unusual changes simple you can simply go back here click on this history and then click on section and click on section you are going to find all the edits you have made you can go back to the other version right so this is how it works on wordpress theme customization and this is how we customize a wordpress theme for our client and if you want to learn more about this wordpress theme customization the more stuffs then please watch my future lessons this video was just to show you a trial of how easily we can customize a wordpress website for our client but so far so good if you just follow these things which i have already shown throughout this video you will be able to customize websites pretty easily right but i'm going to show you more in detail for sure so please don't worry this uh, i'd love to keep this video this far so you'll be able to digest everything so easily all right guys so i believe you have found this video helpful and i'm going to create websites custom websites step by step from the scratch using only elementor we are not going to touch uh, any theme we are going to create a website directly 
from the scratch using only Elementor. And I'm going to show you how to build websites with Elementor, how Elementor made my way easier on my professional web design uh, business. So thank you so much for watching. If you have found this video helpful and informative, please let me know by commenting below. Please give this video a like to uh, give me some motivation and please let me know if you have got any question by commenting below and please don't forget to share this complete course with your friends on your social media sites like facebook twitter instagram linkedin whatever you are using so that some other peoples will be able to learn from me for free without spending a penny so thank you so much for being with me and i'm so far i'm loving the journey of teaching you all guys and i'm so happy to see your works and again please share your works on our facebook group and you already know what is the group i am talking about so i'd love to see more of your works thank you so much again have a good day and i am looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson bye bye hello and welcome to the 15th lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiber or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on and so far we learned so many things about wordpress backend management we learned how to install wordpress on a local server we learned how to install themes on a wordpress website we learned how to install demo contents on a wordpress website to make it look real professional and beautiful and so far we have got this website throughout our previous lessons just take a look how beautiful it is and i also covered how to start customizing a wordpress website website wordpress theme by using the customize option available on the wordpress backend and also i used elementor page builder to make some adjustment on these parts to show you the step-by-step -step process and now in this video i'm going to show you how easily you can create a beautiful beautiful professional looking website web page for your clients and even if you are a complete beginner this video is for you because if you have never ever used elementor page builder before still after watching this lesson you will be able to create web page for yourself or for your client for sure by using elementor page builder so without making this into a long one let me take you to wordpress dashboard from here and after that i have to create a new page to show you the process so from pages if i click on add new i'll be able to create a new page so let me give in um, title here like elementor uh, website or web page design just an example and after that if I click on publish let's click on publish and if I show you the page you are going to see the body part of the page is completely blank just take a look we have got nothing in this body part of this page but we have got by default some elements the header section and the footer section automatically added to our web page from the theme itself so as we are getting this beautiful header section so i'm going to keep them i'm going to keep this footer section as well this is a minimal beautiful looking footer section and now i'm going to show you how to create a similar website like this one which we have got from the theme itself to show you how elementor uh, builder works and how easy it is to use on creating new web pages for your client so let me just cross this out and after that from here if i click on edit with elementor button right here it is going to take me to the edit elementor editing panel from where we'll be able to add contents on the body part and if you just notice here this is the look of our current web page and then if you notice these elements we have got this plus icon from where we'll be able to add columns we'll be able to add sections of the web page as you can see one column two column three columns four columns and we have got few more structures available and then from this folder icon we'll be able to use some pre-built templates to create beautiful websites for our clients but as i have mentioned this course is going to be the best course available on youtube or wherever you have watched a course or you have taken a course uh, with pay paid by paying some money but you are getting this course for free but i'm going to make this the best one and for this reason i'm not going to use any template as of now because you need the base knowledge of Elementor first and then you can use these templates easily. You can make them real, real great ones. So let me just cross this out as of now and 
let me talk about the basic stuff so first of all in the left side you are getting these elementor panels as you can see and as you can see these are elements as you can see inner section heading image text editor video button these are elements i sometimes call them widgets as well so by using these elements or the widgets will have different types of stylized different types of um, options added to our wordpress web page and as you can see we have got so many elements available here and we are going to work on most of them throughout our previous uh, sorry future lessons so now i'm going to talk about this element or this website okay so that i'll be able to demonstrate the things properly instead of the theoretical way i love to show the works practically all right so now as you can see here on this section the header section we have got two columns one column is containing these text with this button and another column is containing this image with this floating text so let's start creating this part first and after that we are going to go with this section so let me take you back here on our editing panel i want to create at the very beginning i'd love to take one column or we can simply cross this out and we can go with two columns so let me click on this plus icon we can go with two columns directly so that we'll have these things and these things appearing automatically here or actually directly here and then i if i just give you some explanation this is a header this is another header this is a paragraph this is a button so we need two header in this left column and one paragraph and one button in the left column so let me show you how we can get the widgets or the elements here so as you can see here i am seeing these nine dots if you click here it is going to take you to the widgets page from where we'll be able to simply drag as an example here we have to add a heading so simply click here and drag this right here and just take a look we have got the heading widget added here we need the heading widget again so simply go back to this widgets and then drag the heading again we have got the heading now we want to add the paragraph so let's go back to this widgets and then let's click here on this text editor drag it right here we have got this paragraph now we need the button and you already know how we are going to add the button simply go back to the widgets and after that take the button right here right so this is how easy it is to drag and drop and get your contents get your structures done without writing a single line of code now i have to take this image widget for the right column so if you just notice we have got this right column i want to click here and after that i want to take this image widget right here and just take a look we have got this widget appearing here then we need for these things we need one icons okay icon box actually so let me take you back here and if i take you to widgets then if i type out here icon box or let's say icon you are going to get few options as you can see and we need icon box so let's just click here and drag it right after the image widget and just take a look how it is looking like please don't worry this is not so close to our original design here but it is going to be closer soon so first of all let me give some give some information regarding the editing way how it works so let's say i want to make some change on this image as you can see whenever i am hovering over on the elements you are seeing this pen icon is appearing this pen icon is being appeared this pen icon is being appeared here this pen icon so that means these elements are editable with elementor now let's say i want to make some changes on the image widget so if i click on this image widget it is going to show you this panel like edit image just take a look we'll have content style and advanced option from where we are going to be able to make whatever change we want to make on this image on this specific widget now let's say you want to make some change on this button so if i simply click here just take a look edit button option are appeared is appeared and it came with content style advanced and whatever change i want to make here i'll be able to make so now let's go with the header first so let me click here and after that we have got achar rafi here so let me copy so as 
I have clicked here, I am seeing this header edit heading panel appeared. Now from content, I'll be able to change the title. So if I paste Azhar Rafi here, just take a look, I have got Azhar Rafi added. Now if you just noticed, you we have got some formatting appearing, appearing here. So now how I am going to work on this formatting, I'm going to use two tools to make my way of work easier. So the first tool is what font this is a chrome extension you are going to find this extension on uh, mozilla firefox as well so how to uh, get this uh, tool simple if you make a google search what font extension and hit enter you are going to find this link chrome google uh, google.com i'm actually going to attach the link of this extension in the description field of this video so that you'll be add this extension on your chrome browser you are going to find this extension on uh, uh, mozilla firefox as well and this extension is going to help me get the font family the font style font weight font size line height color information of any specific fonts any specific section or any specific like um element now let me talk about another tool that I'm going to use to get color codes. The tool name is Pixie, P-I-X-I-E. And if I hit enter, this is the website. I'm going to attach the link of this website into the description field below. So simply download this tool as a portable application on your computer. And then if you click here, it is going to show you color codes. So wherever I take my cursor, it is going to show the color code of these options right here right so now i'm going to show you how to use these tools step by step while you'll work with them so first thing as you can see i am on Azhar rafi heading right now let's see what are the what are the formatting it has and how we can make our this heading similar to this one so simply click on what font tool and after that, if you hover over your cursor on any of these text, you are going to see the font family information automatically. But I want to get more information. Simply click here and it is going to show me the font family is quest trial. The weight of the font is 400 and then the size of this font is 15 pixels and the color of this font is this color. And then we have got this line height and some other information. So let me implement this information here on our uh, website so here after clicking here from content we just change the text now it's time to change the style and the typography so simply click on style from here it is already selected to edit heading then i'm on style then if you want to change the color of the text simply change the color from here however you want but i want to keep it as it is as of now no problem and we are going to learn about these things for sure then from typography i'll be able to make change on the font font family font size font weight and we have got many other options which we should know and we are going to learn for sure so first thing that i would love to do is i want to change the font family which is, which is quest trial so let me just hit here and then i'm going to type out quest and here we go quest trial here and the font size was 15 pixels so let me go back again and pixel is selected px and then i'm going to type out 15 and just take a look how it is looking like and then we have got font weight which is going to be 400 pixels so if i take you back here and from weight i can select the 400 from here and just take a look how it is looking like almost closer to this original website and with this transformation or transform style decoration line height letter spacing we are going to learn about these things for sure but now we are all fine to move with the things that we have done here so let me just click here click on update okay one thing so whatever change you make on your elementary based web page after making the change you should click on this update button right so that the change will be saved now let me go back again here and after that let me cross this out and let me click on exit what font let's talk about this heading so if i copy this heading text let me okay so let me just cross this out as of now copy this heading text and after that if i take you back here and then if i click here we are going to find again edit heading but for this specific heading now i can simply change the text and paste the text that i have just copied now 
if I take you back here, if I click on what font, if I take the cursor here and if I click here, it is going to show me that again the font family is quest trial, font weight is 700, font size is 60 pixels. So let me make the adjustment first. So let me take you back here, go to style as we did and then go to the typography, click here on this pen icon. From family, we are going to type quest trial, okay, quest trial and after that the font size is 60 pixels now. And the font weight was 700 and here we go we have got the alignment almost there and now it is going to get better for sure soon so now let's talk about let me cross this out click on exit what font and after that let me just copy this text from here which is the paragraph and then go back here let's click on this um, text editor widget so let me click here and you are going to find edit text editor now let's select these things paste the copied content and here we go let's see how it is looking looking like now let's go for the font oh, sorry for for this button so let me type out watch all videos right here on this font so simple click on this button and after that you are going to find these options content style and advanced so here on text i have to type out watch all videos and then if I click here on watch all videos, it is taking me to this page where I have got the complete course already. Now if I copy this link and if I paste it here, this link is going to work the way it working right here, right? So simply click on update. Now we are almost closer with this part. It's time to make some adjustment on this single column itself. So if I click on these icons, it is going to take me to this edit column option if i click on this um six dots it is going to take us to this edit section so i want to make change on this column singly or particularly so let me click on this column um, icon and after that this column has been selected now you are going to see these options appearing here from vertical alignment i want to give it to middle alignment if you want or if you need you can give it to the bottom alignment you can give the space between depending on your need so i need middle alignment as of now now we are almost close to the look of this um, web website right so now one thing that i would love to do i would love to make the change on the background so let me take you back here and after that if i click here on this edit section it is going to select the whole section as you can see the line appearing here okay the whole section now i want to change the background color so now if i take you back here i'm i'm going to use pixie so let me type out p i x i e and hit or actually click here so here is the tool now if i hover over here it is going to show me the color code of this part so let me hit Control alter copy on my keyboard so the color code has been copied so now let me take you back here let me take you to style and after that from background you are seeing some few options like classic like the gradient video and you have got slide shows so i want to go with gradient so if i click here and then from color if i click on this color and paste the color here just take a look how it is looking like so it should be hash and here we go we have got this color code fff hash fff and we have got this white color here and then for the second color we need to make the change we have to copy this color code from here so i'm going to type out Control alter c and as this pixie is opened here it is just helping me out to get the color code so if i take you back here and from second color if i paste the color code right here just take a look how it is looking like now we can simply change the angle of these things as as you can see here and i think this is too um, light so what i want to do i simply want to change this color a little more so you will be able to see or the chains are going to be visible so nicely to you what i'm going to make all right so here we go here is the way and here is the design we have got so far now i want to add my image so let me take you back if i click here on image 
we are going to see this image choosing option. So if I click here on choose image, you'll be able to upload images on your website from here. But as I have shown how the media library works and I already have uploaded these images on my website, I'm going to use these images now. So let's click here. But if you need, you can simply upload them from here, right? So let me take you back here. And after that, I'd love to click on insert media. And just take a look, I have got my image added in this part or the on the right column. Now let's work on this widget. This is the icon box. Now if I want to show you, we want to make this thing here, right? Founder and CEO, photography, and then the icon. So let me take you back here. Let's click on this widget. And after that, you are going to find this option. So first of all, let me change the icon. So I'm going to, yeah, well, how I did, simply I clicked here and then I clicked on icon library from here. And after that, we have got this icon, maybe check. So let me just type out check here. Yeah, so here we go. This is the icon which the website uh, template has. So let me click on insert and just take a look. We have got the change on the icon um, widget. Now, if I want to give the position of this icon, simple icon position should be in right. And just take a look, we have got the closer look here. Now I want to make the change on the texts. So let's go back. I have to click here and then from title and description, I have to change the title to founder and CEO. And after that, I want to add this text as Acharul or Acharul Rafi. Okay, just take a look how it is looking like as of now. Though it is not so close, but I'm going to make it closer. So let's go to style. And after that, you are going to find few options. As you can see for icons, you are seeing these options. So the primary color, I would love to give the color to, let's say this color, and just take a look, the color is changed. Now, if I click here, I'll be able to add the spacings based on my need. I'll be able to increase or decrease the size. So now I want to keep the size just like this. And after that, you can rotate these things as well, but we don't need to rotate as of now. And from content here from alignment, as you can see, the alignment is left. It should be left. And or let me see how, what is the alignment here? Yeah, left alignment. So let me take you back here. And after that, we have got the spacings. We can increase or decrease the spacing. So let's just keep it as it is. And then from typography for title, we can change the typography based on our need, but I want to make the change on the description itself. So as you can see, I've got it looking so small, but I want to make it similar to this one. So let me click here. And then from description, I want the typography to a little bit of increased text here. And after that, I want the font weight to 900. Yeah. And then I can simply change the color of this text to black and just take a look how it is looking like. Now let's go to advanced. And after that, we can simply go to positioning. And from positioning, we can select the width of this content. So let me click on uh, from white if I select it to custom and then I can simply increase or decrease the size of this element here, right? So let me keep it to 300. It is going to look nice. Okay. And after that, we have to give some background here. So as you can see here, we have on advanced, we have got background. If I click here and from here, we'll be able to change the color. So simply click on classic and simply click the ch chose the color. So click here. And then here is the color that I'd love to go with. And after that, if you just notice, we have got some padding stuff ap appearing here. So let me just take you back here again from advanced. Again, I have to click on this advanced option. And from this padding, I would love to give, let's say 15 pixels of padding. Now let's see how it is or just take a look how it is looking like. Now, if I take you back, we have got some border radius working here. So if I take you back here and after that, if I add, just take a look on border. If I click here, we are going to find this border radius. If I give like 10 pixels of border radius or 15 will look good. Yeah, 15 pixels of border radius. If I click here, okay, you might not being able to see the 
rounded corners but you are going to see it soon so don't worry so here we go we have got this border radius done now we want to take this text into this part as you can see now let me just take this one here so to do this we have to go back to positioning and after that from position it is selected to default we have to click here click on absolute and we will be able to move this text as we want this is this has just become as the floating text so if i click uh, if i take it here or keep it here just take a look how it is looking like now we need two version or two copies of this thing so simply if we right if you click on the right button of your mouse if you click on duplicate it is going to be duplicated and now i can simply drag this right here and just take a look how it is looking like now one thing that i'm seeing this one is in the left aligned so simply click here and then change the alignment of icon position to left and it is going to be looking like this okay and now if you just notice we can make the changes as we want but i'd love to keep this as it is to save the time and if you change the image just let me show you how it is actually going to look like if i change this image just take a look we are so close we are so close with the original website design right so now what i am going to do i am going to simply let me see i'm going to make this uh, column a little smaller so it will look nice i guess yeah here we go and here we go okay now just take a look how it has just got the alignment so now i want to remove some padding stuffs from here if i click here and let's go to advanced from margin and padding and we have got things done so nicely right so now what i want to show you is i want to give some padding on this whole column so if i click here on this section actually not column in this section if i take you to advanced then if i click here to unlink and then from top if i add let's say 100 padding and on bottom i want 100 padding and just take a look how our website is currently looking like now if you just notice actually on top i hmm, so on top i don't need 100 i can simply uh, keep this as it is and on bottom i need 100 okay so it is just showing the spacings in between these things right in these spacings now let me take you back if you just notice we have got a shape divider added here so let me show you how we can add this shape divider pretty simple if i take you back here and if i select this whole section and then from style we are going to find this option shape divider if i click here then you can select on top if you want to give some divider on top you can simply select top or we can go with bottom as i want to go with bottom as i want to add this divider in bottom i have selected bottom and after that from type it is selected to none so i have to click here and after that if i try out few of these things you are going to see how beautifully they are making some changes on this um on the bottom part if you just notice here right so by this process you will be able to add beautiful beautiful effects on your wordpress website or wordpress web page so we need this option tile but one issue just take a look we have got from right uh, left to right it is getting down but we want from right sorry from left to right it should be on top so like this one okay so now how how we can solve this issue pretty simple simply click on this flip yes and just take a look it is just looking great and then bring to front simply click click on yes and the problem of this cutoff is going to be solved itself now let me take you back and i want to give them right like this and just take a look we have got the proper alignment already and it is looking so closer to this website though we are seeing some mismatch here but it's totally okay to keep them as there and we are going to learn about these stuff in our future lessons how to make pixel perfect websites so as of now it is totally fine to move with what we are learning okay so now let's say you want to make this curve a little smaller so if you take if i take you here and then if i take you to uh, this let me click here again okay and from uh, style here we have got um, shape divider 
and from bottom we can simply select the height as you can see as you want so let me keep like this and i think it is looking good um yeah so i think it is looking good and we can actually simply increase a little more okay just take a look how it is looking like so we are done with this first section now let's go for the second section where we have got two columns one column is containing this image with this button floating button and then we have got this text so let me show you how we can create this part simple i am going to take another two column structure and after that i need if i click here i'm going to get these image widgets let's drag it here and after that we have got one button so let me click here on this widgets panel and then let's take button right here and after that i can simply give it to center alignment and after that we have got this part where we have to take one heading and then one paragraph so let's take them i'm going to take you here one heading and then one paragraph which is text editor here actually two paragraphs here so let me click here and text editor here i'm seeing two paragraphs okay so now it's time to hmm, okay it's time to make the adjustment i want to give the from advanced i want to give in this section from advanced i want to give 100 pixels in top and 100 pixels in bottom uh, bottom uh, like paddings so that will have some spaces appearing here now let's choose this image so if i sorry if i click on this image it is going to take me to this image editing panel if i click on choose image and let's select this image let's click on insert media and we have got this thing done now yeah so now one thing that i have to do i have to work on this button so if you just notice we have got live meeting in california then we have got this icon added so if i click here we are going to get this button editing panel now i i would love to type out like live meeting in california and then i'm not going to add a link for now here instead i'd love to show you how to add this icon so as you can see at this bottom part we are seeing this icon which is currently selected to none but i have to click here on this icon library to get an icon and i believe the name of this icon is play so let me take you here and then if i type out play yeah so here we go we have got this play icon right here so if i click here let's click on insert we have got this icon added now this is touching to the text so we can simply as you can see from icon spacing we can simply increase the space between the text and the icon so i think uh, 15 is going to look nice here right so just take a look how beautifully we have got this icon as well now we are seeing that by default the color of this icon is a kind of uh, light color so let me just take you back here and if i click here from style i'll be able to make the change from normal if i select the background color like this just take a look we have got this background color right and from hover we can simply select the background color to this color which was before right now what i'm going to do i'm going to make it to uh, i'm going to first of all let's click on update and after that after clicking here i want to take you to advanced from positioning i'd love to give this to absolute position and just take a look it is now floating if i drag it right here we have got this button placed in the right place right so this is looking great though the color is different but let me keep the color as it is i'm just i'm so happy that i'm being able to show you how it works right so now if i make the change here copy and simply click here and make the change however you want so i don't want to make the change on this text because you already know how i am going to copy and paste things and to make it look um, similar so what i want to do again i want to make the alignment of these things into center or the middle so if i click here on these columns then from okay so from columns 
from vertical alignment i want to give it to middle so just take a look how it is looking like now if you just notice the space between this image and this text are a little broader so we can simply do this simply go back here and after that select this widget or select this whole section and after that from layout you'll find this option column gap if you click here and then give it to uh, like extended nope then wider it is going to work for you just take a look we have got this um some spaces happening here and you have got more options more ways to add these space things up on our website and we're going to learn about this in our future lessons for sure so now what i want to do is yeah it's looking closer but we are seeing that these things have got so many spaces or actually big spaces i want to decrease the space simply click on this editing panel go back to advanced and we added here 100 instead of 100 let's say 50 and it should look nice now right now what i want to do i simply want to add work on this part let me show you the work of this part and after that i'm going to conclude this video make the conclusion okay so let me take you back again and after that i want to take again here we have got two columns in one column we have got header we have got this accordion and for that we have got this button so and after that here we have got an image gallery so let me take you back here again and after that i want to add two columns and then i need one heading and there's accordion there's column so sorry this button so let me take you to widgets one heading and then let me take you to widgets a double c one accordion which i want to add here and then we have got one button so let me take you to the widgets then drag this button right here okay it's not working yeah here we go we have got the button now so now what i want to do i can simply copy these things and i can click here simply place paste them here and after that I can simply make the change simply copy these accordion headings copy and click here and you are going to find these options to make the changes as you can see accordion click here from title i want to change the title and after that we have got if i click we are seeing this um, paragraph so let me click here and then we can simply change the paragraph right so simply i'm going to cross this out i'm going to make three versions three copies of this same accordion okay and just take a look we have got them and i want to change simply the headings copy and click here on the second and then paste and i want to copy this one this title and click here and paste it here and just take a look we have got these accordion things working fine now ask a question should be the button tag so if i click here and i'm going to type out here ask a question and i want to give my facebook page url here facebook uh, group url which we are we have got for this uh, support group okay so from facebook it is taking some time i'm going to select the group for where you can join and make post and you can ask me any question regarding wordpress and elementor which i am showing so if i click on link if i click on submit or update let's just preview this page in a new tab just take a look how our website is currently looking like right and now if i click on ask a question button it is going to take me to a to our facebook page or group where we are supporting all of the students now what i want to do i want to get this color code so to get this color code again i have got this big z opened so let me keep this here and after that i'm going to hover over here let me uh, type Control alter copy c to get the code let me take you back after that i'm going to click on this edit section so that it will be select the whole section from style i'm going to change the color and paste the color code right here just take a look and we can simply increase the color a little more okay so just take a look how it is looking like now if you just notice we have got some padding stuffs happening here so simply i can click here again go to advanced from padding i can add some padding stuff on top let's say i want 100 and on bottom i want 100 pixels of padding 
Now, if I take you back here and just take a look how it is currently looking like here and how it is currently looking like here. We have got some spacing issues here, but I'm going to make them corrected soon. So first of all, let me take these things. As you can see, we have got this um, gallery. Simple, click here so that you will find this widget, widgets option. Then I'm going to make a uh, search like gallery and yeah gallery as you can see we have got five options this one is premium we won't, we won't be able to use this with the free version but these things we can use so i'm going to drag basic gallery right here and it is going to show us these options from where i will be able to add images here so let me upload few images actually select few images and let's say this one as an example if i click on create new gallery and if i click on insert gallery just take a look we have got these images added now here so from image size we'll be able to change the size to full and after that from the columns we want only two columns and just take a look how it is looking like right so this is almost closer if i click here again i'll be able to give some column gaps from let's say wider just take a look how beautiful it is looking like as of now now i want to add these things here right so in top or actually yeah so i want to give in this section in the bottom i want to give some like um, shape divider so click here and after that i want to take you to styles and then from shape divider from bottom i want tiled and hmm Okay, it, it is not going to be visible because um, we have got some padding stuff here. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the tile thing here. So let me click on this edit column. And after that, we are going to styles. And then from shape divider, we want some tile from the top. So if I select top and yeah, from top, if I select from none, we want tilt and just take a look how it is looking like. And actually I have to decrease the size or decrease the height of this tile thing, tile shape divider here. So simple. I can simply work like this and just take a look how closer we are. And then we can simply add this bottom uh, shape divider as well. Simple. Click here and then if you if I take you to bottom and then from here type I can simply select tile and just take a look how it is looking like but we have to make it like uh, in the right um, going so to do this we can simply click on flip and just take a look how it is looking like and then we can increase or decrease the height of this thing and just take a look now if I click on update and if I visit this page in a new tab by previewing just take a look how far we are with this website design or web page design right so this is that easy to work on a web page by using elementor page builder and this i'd love to keep this video this short because this has already been too long and i want to make it a conclusion and if you want me to keep going on showing you the complete website or complete web page build up for this page please let me know by commenting below and one thing i'd love to know from you as i have walked you through this lesson please let me know your honest opinion if you are being able to understand me properly or you are getting some confusion if you have got any specific question please let me know by commenting below and if you want to suggest me for any improvement then please let me know as well by commenting below and if you have found this video quite good and quite interesting and helpful please give this video a like share this complete course with your friends so that they will be able to learn as well you can share this playlist on your facebook your twitter your instagram or whatever social media platform you are using and please subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet so that you will not miss any future uploads and i hope to see you in the next video thank you so much for watching this long one have a good day and i hope to see you in the next lesson bye bye
Hello and welcome to the 16th lesson of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with WordPress and Elementor on Upwork, Fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on and so far we have learned almost everything we need to know about WordPress management and now we are learning about Elementor page builder. We are learning who, how we can create beautiful web page for our clients using Elementor and we are learning the lessons practically. In my most recent class, I have shown how we can create a beautiful web page similar to this one. I have covered this section, this section and this section. And now in this lesson, I'm going to cover this section where we have got this header and then this um, paragraph. Then we have got icon box with these buttons and we have got these sections as well. I'm going to cover this section which is similar to this one and this section. So now without further ado let me take you to my wordpress dashboard and after that let me take you to pages and then here is the page we have created in our most recent class and we have practiced now let me open this in a new tab and here we go this is the design which we have created in our most recent class and if you just notice this design which we have created is not pixel perfect obviously with the original document here and this is because just of the time shortage i try my best to provide you the education of the usage of the tools in a short period of time so this is the reason why it is not looking like pixel perfect please don't worry because as you are learning the usage of the tools if you spend some time you will be able to create pixel perfect designs for your clients and obviously we are going to create few pixel perfect works in our future lessons as i'm going to educate you about the base knowledge about the tools usage of tools and options available on elementor so that i will be able to work on the real project faster so that you will be able to understand as you will have the base knowledge which is required so without further ado and one thing that i would love to request you guys please practice the works whatever i am showing you on the lessons please practice as you will practice you are going to face some struggles you are going to face some troubles and then while you are going to overcome the troubles or the struggles you will be able to find out few uh, a few new uh, skills you will be able to learn new skills which is going to help you in the long run long run so now let me just delete these things from here delete this page section from here and i would love to keep our original document and the page where i am going to add the information so i want to add this part and this part throughout this lesson and i'm going to add them right here right after these sections okay so to start adding contents in this page i have to click on this edit with elementor button and now it will load the elementor page builder editing panel if i take you here in the bottom we are going to find these options as you can see plus so if i click on plus i would love to take this one column structure so let's click on one column structure and here we go now if i take you back to the original document and here we have got one heading and one paragraph so let me take them first so let me take you to widgets and after that this heading let me drag and drop it right here and after that let me take you to widgets again let me drag this text editor and drop it right here and i have got heading and paragraph text with uh, widget now let me take you back here if i copy this content from here let me take you back click here to select this element and then paste the information that you have copied and here we go and you already know how these things works if you have watched my previous lesson so now let me take you to from alignment as i'm seeing this alignment if i click on this center alignment we are going to get this heading aligned in center now let's go with the next option which we have got this one so let's copy this text and let me take you back let's click here and let me paste this information here so one thing that i have noticed is if you just notice this one is in two line this paragraph is in two line and they're in center alignment so let me take you back again and after that i would love to take it to center align first so go to style for text editor you have to go to style to find this alignment option and then click on center so now it is aligned in center and after that if you notice that we have got a break point in Loctus so they are in two lines and the line break on Loctus word so let me go back here and after that if I take you to content as it is selected now let me take you to text 
and then uh, from here it uh, tell us looked us here is the word so after looked us we can add in add a html tag to break this line and we have got one more option which is by using padding so let me use html tag first so that you'll be able to learn from this so from looked us sorry after looked us if i put angle bracket and br and then the angle bracket just take a look we have got this line uh, separated all right so if i click on update and let me preview this page in a new tab so that you will see the difference just take a look or change now let me take you back now i want to remove this br tag from here and let me click on update and let me reload this page just take a look we have got this line uh, paragraph in one line and now i want to break this line by using padding so if i take you back here on the editor panel of elementor if i click you to advanced from advanced you are seeing uh, seeing one merging and one padding stuff so i am going to work with padding so if i unlink this one and then from right if i provide 300 pixels of padding and then on left if i pull paste 300 pixels of padding just take a look we have got the exact thing done by using the html tag so if i click on update and if i take you back reload this page and here we go we have got the change done so now how these padding things work so padding works inside a box as you can see here we are seeing that in left side a border here in the right uh, top we have got border in right we have got border this bottom we have got this border so if we just notice here on top i have got zero and for this zero i am not seeing any space here and for bottom i have got zero for this we are not seeing any spaces here added in the bottom but in left we have got 300 pixels so we are seeing from left side under the inside the box from left side it taken 300 pixels and after 300 pixels we have got the content and from right side if i remove the right side just take a look how it is looking like from left side we have got 300 pixel gap but when i'm going to add right side 300 it is going to take some spaces in the right side as well and now they are placed in the middle with uh, these contents right so this is how padding stuffs work and we are going to learn more about these things for sure in our future lessons so let me click on update and if i take you back here on our original document it's time to work on these things where we have got this icon box and button so let me take you back to the editor and after that i want to take you to this widgets panel and then I'd love to take this inner section so that I'll have two columns added here. So let me drag this inner section right here. Here we go. We have got one column, two column. Now I want to click here on this plus icon so that you'll be able to see these widgets options. And now I want to type out here icon box or icon. You are going to get this icon box information. So let's drag this thing right here and just take a look we have got this icon and after icon we have got a button so let me take you back and then let's click on this widget and then let's type out here button or actually i am seeing button right here right so if i click here and drag this right here just take a look we have got this button added and as i am seeing the alignment appearing here so let me click on center so that it will be center aligned so now i would love to work on this one single button and after that i'm going to copy this button to save some time right so it will uh, it is a trick that you can follow or actually the way you can follow now i want to make the change as you can see here if i take you back let me just cross this out okay just take a look we have got this home icon appearing here so let me take work on this home icon so if i click here it is going to show me this icon if i click here then it is going to take you take us to this icon library now if i make a search for home we are going to find this home icon appearing so let's click on select and then click on insert now we have got this home icon so if i take you back we have got this icon colored with blue now i'm going to take you back and then go, let's go to style and then you can select this icon as you can see currently icon is selected and from primary color we can simply click here and then we can choose the color that you want to provide here right and then you can simply increase or decrease the size of the button based your need so i think 
35 is going to look nice here okay and then let's go back again if i want to change this thing copy and let's click here and then go to content and after that here is the title and description so if i change here title is here this one is title which is placed here so let me paste it here and this one is description which i'd love to copy from here copy the description let's go back and let's select this one delete and paste the description right here and just take a look how it is looking like right now let me take you back again here and if you just notice we have got this button and without hover the normal mode is we have got a background color added which is kind of uh, ash i'm not sure though the color and we have got the text color in blue and when we are hovering over we are seeing the blue background with white text so let me just make the change on this so if i click here and after that if you just notice we have got show more so let me just type out show more i have just clicked here and then we are seeing the options to make adjustment on the button so let me change the text from click here to show more and just take a look we have got this happened now let's stylize this button so we want to take youtube style and after that as you can see here text color which should be blue as of now the normal mode should be blue and the background color as you can see in normal mode the background color is kind of uh, i don't know what is the color but let me just figure out and let's see so background color if i click here i'll be able to find this option to choose background color and let's say this is the background color that you, that you would love to take or would love to keep okay and then we have got to change the hover hover color so let me click on hover from here and after that the text color is going to be white as you can see whenever i am hovering over the text color is changing to white and the background color is blue so let me take you back so i have just selected white color for the text on hover and then i want the background color to be blue and now if i hover it over just take a look it is being changed right so this is how you have to make the change here now one thing that you should already have noticed or you might have noticed so as you can see i have got some spacings and you already know how we add these spacings i have done this thing here right so now let me show you how we can do this spacing for this specific uh, column so let me take you back and i have to click here and after that just i have selected this whole column right this column inside then let's go to advanced and from padding i am going to give a pairing of let's say 40 pixels from top 40 pixels bottom 40 pixels left 40 pixels right 40 pixels now i want to copy this whole thing here so if i simply click here or right button click on the right button of your mouse and then click on duplicate just take a look how it is working for us now let's click here let's click on duplicate and we have got three columns now i want to delete this part from here just take a look within few seconds i have got two more columns added with the exact settings right exact styles now it's time to customize these things and if you just notice we have got some border stuffs added here so let me work on these border stuffs so if i take you back and after that i'm going to select this whole section and after that from style i'm going to border and then as you can see the border type is currently selected to none let's click here and then select solid and then we are going to give the border white to one pixels and i'm going to select the color as well so let's say this color just an example okay and now if i click on update and if i just simply um hide the panel from here we are going to see a border is being added now one more thing that we have to do here as you can see in the right side in the middle of these things we have got some borders in the right and in this part as well so let me show you how we can add these borders and we have to actually give these borders uh, in this specific column so let me take you back and after that let's just um, open up the editing panel and then i have to select this column which is just selecting this column right just take a look these dotted things are selected here now let's click let me take you to style from here and after that for this column i want to have a right border so if i take you to border and then from none i'm going to select it to solid and then i want to unlink this one and from right or on right i want one pixel 
and the color is going to be again this ash color now if i simply hide this one just take a look how we have got this border added as well now i am going to copy the style of this column to this column and it is going to look nice and exactly as it is looking like here so let me take you back and after that let's open up the editing panel and then if i copy this style from here or okay copy this style and if i um click on the right button of the mouse and then paste the style right here just take a look here we have got this um border added as well right so this is pretty easy pretty simple if you know the shortcut way it is going to save you a lot of time so let me just click here and then if you want to make changes on these things so let me just show you by changing this one so let me click here and after that we are seeing the icon is saving so let me see save or saving or bank yeah bank as you can see piggy bank so let me click here and let me click on insert and just take a look we have got this piggy bank added and i'm going to edit these things um uh, saving and then i would love to keep them as their this text okay exactly they're actually the similar ones okay so the same way if you want to make the change on percentage as you can see if you just simply click here go back here and then percentage here's the percentage which one okay this one and then click on insert just take a look how it is looking like then simply copy this text click here and then edit the title edit the description based on need and they are going to work nicely and if you want to uh, place some links on these show more buttons it is real easy i have shown the process so i don't want to spend more time simply go to content and you are going to just simply paste the link that you want to link right here okay so i'm going to skip these things as of now now if i want to get as you can see i have got few more options uh, sorry uh, one more row here containing these three columns so simple if i simply duplicate this whole section as you can see this whole section if, whenever i clicked here it is going to select this whole section if i click here and then click on duplicate just take a look i have just duplicated one more column so if i click here on update and if i preview this change in a new tab just take a look one thing that is a problem i which i am just noticing uh, we have got here we have got there one pixels but it as i have got one pixel and one pixel one pixel bottom and one pixel top for this uh, border i have got it two pixels been happened so i want to remove one pixel from here border so if i take you back if i click here and let's go to advanced and from okay not actually yeah from here if i take you to style and then from border as you can see it is currently selected to uh, one pixel so i would love to keep it to unlick and then from top i'm going to remove one pixel from here and then if i click on update and let me reload this page and just take a look it is currently looking real real nice and the way i have changed the information for these sections or these things you can simply change the information for these things so i'm going to skip these things to save some the some of your times so let me just give the alignment as you can see or the spacing as you can see here we have got 100 pixel and 100 pixels uh, top button padding stuff or margin stuff so let me just take you back here and after that actually here and after that i'd love to click here and then from advanced i want to give like let's say yeah on padding i'm going to give on top 100 pixels of padding and on bottom i'd love to give 100 pixels of padding just take a look we have got some extra spaces added and now it is looking really really beautiful right now let me just uh, okay so one thing i'm noticing here we have got some curves here right so border radius now let me show you how you can add this border radius thing so if i take you back and then if i click here and we have given a border right here right one pixel one pixel one pixel one pixel here so i want to give a border radius i'm going to unlink this one i want on top border radius i want five pixels and and on let's say on left i want to give five pixels or actually i i just top bottom okay 
so top and then i'd love to give like right actually it should be right five pixels if i click on update and let me just reload this page to see yes we have got this top and right uh, corners now it's time to give the same corners right here actually the border radius right here in the bottom part as they are available here so let me take you back again and after that if i select this border uh, section and then from border if i provide let's say from where is radius yeah here we go from i'm going to unlink this one first bottom should be five pixels and the left should be five pixels and just take a look they are working on bottom and the left here actually are in the bottom here and now if i click on update and if i reload this page you are going to find that yeah just take a look it's looking real real similar exactly in the pixel perfect work actually here right so this is how you have to work on these things and now i have to add a shape divider right here so let me take you back after that let's click here actually on this part hmm. okay and then from style we are going to find this shape divider and then on bottom we want tilt and then we have to hmm, i'm not being able to see any change and this is because the color is uh, white here so if i change the color first hmm, okay it should be like let me see yeah this one actually so it should be like from this side to this side let me take you back mm, okay okay one thing that i i am making a mistake here i don't need to place any shape divider right here so instead i have to add a shape divider on the other other section so let me just go for this section so if i click here and then let's take this one structure and then let me change the background color and for background color i'd love to use uh, pixie which i have used in my previous lesson and demonstrated few more things about this tool so control alter copy let me take you back and then let's click on style from background i am going to change the background color and here we go and now okay yeah let's say this color okay so let me cross this out and then from here i'm going to copy and paste the styles from here okay so i'm going to copy and paste the thing right here hmm. and then i'm going to remove this part and okay now i want to have my specialties on the title so let me put and i'm actually going to show you what actually i'm doing you might getting confused now please don't worry i'm going to make this so what i'm actually doing here as i have got the same structure here though we have got some change in the background color and etc etc but the structure is similar so i've just copied these things to save the time and you're going to learn about these things um soon you're going to understand about these works that i'm doing here pretty real soon so here and then i'm going to remove this part from here and after that we have got these things so let me take you back i'm going to remove these buttons from here remove this button remove this button and actually they are going to be image box not these um icon box so i'm going to remove these things as well they should be image boxes now let me take you back and from here if i type out image and here we go we have got image box i have to provide this image so let me open this image up in a new tab say oh actually i should have this image already in this page somewhere nope yeah here is the image so let me select and insert just take a look we have got this image added now let me oops sorry about the about the mess up so let me copy this real estate stuff from here adding real estate then we have got this um description and then i'm going to work on this 
first so as you can see we have got some border radius in this image simple go back to the editor and after that we are going to style then let's find out border if you can notice border right here no border okay go to advanced here we go on advanced we have got border and then we are going to give border radius to 50 and mm -hmm, it should be working here on the image so let's click here and then I have given this border radius to 50 it should work hmm. so maybe on this image image position let me see image image hmm. style white yeah here we go we have got this border radius here for this image edit image box and the border radius is going to be given here so if I simply take it to 50 it should look exactly is it is looking like here right and the column background is going to be yeah let me see yeah column background is going to be changed to white so here is it is going to be like this and just take a look how close it is so you might going to get confused by this part please don't worry we are going to learn more about these things i'm going to explain more about these things about these stops in our future lessons but for now let me go like this because i have just noticed something okay so i am going to give some gaps in between so if i click here and then from here column gap as as you can see here we are seeing i've just selected this whole section from column uh, from layout we are getting this column gap if i take it to narrow oops no narrow extended hmm. I'm not seeing any gap so in this case what we want to do here we can simply use uh, margin stops for each of these columns so if I click here from advanced from margin if I let's say uncheck this one and from uh, right if I want let's say 10 pixels of margin just take a look how it is looking like and if I copy this style from here and paste the style right here oops hmm paste the style actually paste style so that just take a look how it is looking like right so this is how we can make the adjustment of these images and other stuffs and now I would love to increase the size of this or height of this section and for this I have to take you back to layout and after that from height if I increase this height like this just take a look how it is looking like and then I'm going to give the shape divider on the top so if I take you to style from shape divider we are going to use this tilt and yeah from height we are going to select the height to this which is looking uh, quite similar to this one and after that yes it's looking great and after that on the bottom I'm going to add another um, tilt which is going to be tilt and it is going to be flip and the height is going to be a little lower okay so just take a look how it is looking like and we are almost close to this design as well now we can simply change the image based on our need like this and then simple choose it right here okay so this is the way and then if you want you can simply change this title change this description like this okay so this is the section which i have just clicked all right guys so this is how and one more thing that i'd love to show you the border radius stuff and after that i'm actually going to uh, conclude this video because i have to do some more work so if i click here and after that if you just notice here on style from border if i want to give some border radius let's say 10 pixels and just take a look we have got some border yeah and i'm going to copy this style paste this style right here paste this style right here and you are you should be able to see the change that you have made now if i click on update let me just preview this change in a new tab and just take a look that you have learned about these sections about this section about this section as well so this is it for this tutorial guys and i'm going to show you a few more works in my next lesson 
uh, we are going to work on these things and we might going to spend more time on uh, making this web page um, better okay in one of our future lesson so thank you so much for watching this for and i believe you have found this lesson helpful and interactive and if you have found this video helpful if you have learned something new please let me know by commenting below and please give this video a like and share this complete course with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and i have to see you in the next video thank you so much have a good day hello and welcome to the 17th lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with wordpress and elementor on upwork fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on and so far i am so glad to see the progress you guys have been sharing your practice works on our dedicated facebook group and i would love to start this video by showing you some of the examples as you can see from sibra's bot he followed the lessons he created this web page by using wordpress and elementor i'm so glad to see this work he have shared this work as well and we have got from kishan shield he shared his project as well and not only them we have got many more project um sharing on our dedicated facebook group and i'm so glad to see the works that you guys are participating on the um, practice works and i'm so glad to know that you are being able to understand the lessons properly and you guys are making the web page by yourself so that you are getting the real experience i'm so so happy for this and i really appreciate your hard work guys so here i'm seeing a new uh, project here and just take a look I'm so pleased you guys are making these things and now in this video I am going to show you how we can create this testimonial section of a WordPress web page using Elementor. So first of all let me take you to my WordPress dashboard and after that I'm going to take you to the page which is uh, from here all pages and we have been working on this Elementor web page design we have got two lessons we have covered this page and now this is the third lesson of elementor page building course or page building lesson so from here i'd love to click on this edit with elementor but before that let me show you how our web page is currently looking like which we have been creating so just take a look we have got this web page created step by step using elementor free version so far and now we are going to add the testimonial section and then i'm going to show you how to work on this section as well so that you will have a complete web page designed throughout three lessons so first of all let me take you back here I'm going to remove this part and this one from here and I'm going to keep um, only this web page which I'm going to follow the design from and then I'm going to keep this page to start adding contents on this web page so to start being able to add contents here I have to click on this edit with Elementor button right here so let me click here so that it will take us to the Elementor editing panel and from where we'll be able to make the adjustment we'll be able to remove any parts if we need and you'll be will be able to add contents to this web page uh, when needed and obviously you're going to add contents. so here we go we are going to add contents right here as you can see this is the plus icon which we are going to use so let me click on this plus icon and after that i'm going to take one column based structure so let me click here and here we go we have got this structure if i take you back to our original design here we have got this heading then we have got this paragraph so let me take these things first so let me take you to this widgets option and after that i'm going to drag this heading right here and after that i'm going to take you back to the widgets option then i'm going to take this text editor right here just take a look we have got these uh, two things appeared now let me just simply copy and paste these things and then we are going to learn about these um, testimony things so let me copy this uh, heading then let's go back here uh, click here so that we'll have this editing panel appeared for this heading option now let me just select and paste the text which i have just copied and from here i'm going to give the alignment to center as we are seeing this is center aligned now i'm going to copy this paragraph and let me copy this uh, information from here let's go back again to our editing panel and after that i'm going to click here so that i will have this text editor editing panel so now i'm going to select this content and then paste the content which i have just copied and after that i'm going to 
take you to style so that you'll be able to find this alignment option and now let's click on center and if you just notice here we have got two lines right here and we have learned two different ways of adding two lines in a single line of a elementor text in my previous lesson and now i'm strictly going to this part and i'm going to take you to let's say yeah i'm going to use advanced and after that i'm going to give the padding from right i'm going to give let's say 300 and oops i made a mistake so i should unlink this one first so let me click here so that it will be unlinked and then it will get the values wherever i am putting so on right i want to give like 300 pixels and on left i'm going to give 300 pixels and just take a look we have got this text appearing in two lines right so as we are seeing right here now let me take you back and after that if you just notice we have got these testimony things and to make this work for us to make this happen we have to take the intersection so let me take you back again here and after that i'm going to take you to widgets panel and then let's click on this intersection and drag it right here and just take a look we have got two columns added now i'm going to add the contents here so first thing as you can see we have got this star signs and then we have got this testimonial so let me add the testimonial first and then i'm going to add this star thing so if i take you back to the uh, editing panel and after that i'm going to click here so that it will show me this elements page or the widgets page and then i'm going to type out here test -E and just take a look we are seeing this testimonial option so let's just click and drag it right here and just take a look we have got this testimonial added now let me take you back here after that i'm going to copy this testimonial from here copy and let's go back to the editor and from this content i'm going to select the previous content and then paste the new content right here just take a look we have got the complete content appearing here now let me take you back again here and after that i'm going to take the name from here which is ricardo owens so i'm going to copy the ricardo owens name from here let me take you back here on our editing panel and if you just notice here we have got in name we have got john doe so we are going to delete this one and i'm going to paste the one which i have just copied which is ricardo owens and after that he is designer so we have got this title designer if you need you can simply uh, put something like this whatever you want like developer or ceo owner whatever you need so i'm just going to type out desig and your designer again all right so here we go now it's time to select the image so as you can see here you're seeing this choose image option you can simply click on this choose image and then you can upload the image whatever you want to upload here maybe one of your clients image or let's say uh, the any other image your clients might going to give you so you can simply use this upload option so as we are going to make the, make this website replicated so i already have this image on our media library and you already know how to use media library for sure so let me show you let me take you back to the editor panel and from media library if you just notice here here is the image right so if i click on it and then let's click on insert media just take a look we have got this image added as well now if i take you back right here just take a look we have got this star marks so we are not seeing anything to provide these stars but we have got few more options which you can just roam around we can try out few things to learn more so what i would love to do to get these star signs simple i am going to take you to this widgets panel again and after that i'm going to make a search for stars star just take a look star rating is appearing here so if i drag this right here and if i yeah just right here just take a look we have got this star sign added now i can give the alignment to center and after that if you notice here day stars are looking like a kind of light stars so in this case i'm going to take you back if you just notice here icon and currently it is selected to font awesome you can simply click here and then if you click unicode just take a look we have got the exact looking icons as it is here right so now let me take you back and if you just notice here we have got some spacings in between the stars so let me give the spacings if i take you back here and after that yeah uh, from here from style if i uh, show you from here you can simply increase the size you can decrease the size if you need but i think 15 is going to look nice or let's say 20 is going to look nice here and after that from spacing you can simply increase or decrease the spacing based on your need so i think uh, 15 spacing is going to look nice here so if i take you back yeah 
so it's looking almost similar and it is looking nice now if you just notice this box or this column has a border and then in between the border we have got some padding so now first thing that i'd love to do is i'm going to do the borders uh, border stuff so after that i'm going to give the padding stuff so that you'll have a clear idea you'll be able to understand the thing easily so let me take you back here after that i want to give a border only specifically in this column so if i click on these three dots and then just take a look we have got this edit column option if i take you to style then you are going to find this border option from here we'll be able to add the border so let me click here and after that i'm going to select the border type which is going to be solid and after that i'm going to give the border white to one pixel so that it will be a lighter border and from here we are going to change the color let's say i want to give this color as an example now if i click here you might going to see some change here just take a look we have got a border right here right so now if you just notice we have got some border radius as well in the corners of this border so let me show you how we can add these borders or border radius stuff so let me take you back again here and after that if i click here again then from style from border if i click on border it is going to show us the works that we have just done now just here take a look border radius where we have to work now so if i give let's say 10 pixels of border radius in the four sides like right left center uh, top bottom then if i show you it is going to look like this so if i just click on update and yeah uh, one thing i forgot to mention whenever you make any change on your using elementor please make sure that you are clicking on this update button so that the change will be saved now if i preview this page in a new tab you are going to find that we have got this box created but it has uh, it needs to have some more work as you can see we need to provide the padding stuffs in between the um, border and the text things or the content things appearing here so let me take you back to the editor again and after that if i click here and then if i take you to advanced from here you are going to find this margin and padding stuff so padding works in between the content so from the border to the content and margin works outside of the border so let me click on this border stuff or let's select this one so that i want the same parameter to whole site like top bottom right left every side so i'm going to type out let's say 40 pixels and just take a look we have got this 40 pixels of padding added into our uh, box here now one thing that i'd love to do i'd love to copy and paste this same work to here so that we will save some time so if i simply uh, click on right button of your mouse and then click on duplicate right here just take a look we have got another box created here or another column created here now i can simply remove or delete this one like this but one thing i am seeing here that is we don't have a space in between these boxes if you notice here we have got these spacings in between the boxes so now i'm going to show you how we can add these things so first of all let me click on update and yeah it's updated now if i click here then if i take you to advanced then i am going to give the margin so now i want to unlink this margin stuff so that wherever i want to put the margin it will work on that side only so let me just unlink this one and then i want as you can see this is the right side of this box and this is the left side so in right side i want 20 pixels of margin so let me give on right side i want 20 pixels of margin and now it's time to select this column and we want to give like 20 pixels of margin in the left side so that it will look much nicer so if i click here and then if i take you to advanced then from margin i want to unlink this one then from left side i want for uh, sorry 20 pixels here 20 pixels and now if i click on update yeah it's been updated and it is automatically loading here if you just take a look we have got these spacings added as well so we have had a question on our private group like uh, he was not being able to add these spacings in between the columns so this is the solution by using padding margin stuffs you are going to be able to add the spacings as you need 
all right so now what i want to do i want to make it much faster so now if we just notice we have got another image here with this same um, post or whatever you want you can simply put the content right here but you can simply change the image as you need so if i click uh, let me take you to the editor and then if i click here it is going to show me the editing panel for or the option to change the image for this box so simple if i click on chose image and after that let me select this image which is added right here just take a look we have got this image changed and we have got this similar looking boxes appearing on our wordpress website right so this is how easily we can create these types of testimonial uh, sections in our wordpress website using elementor page builder now i want if you just notice we have got four columns so we have got two columns already created and now i am going to make you uh, make it real faster it's pretty simple if i simply click here and click on right button of our mouse by hovering over on this complete section which is containing these two columns so if i hover over here and then click on the right button of your mouse and then click on this duplicate button and just take a look we have simply duplicated this option pretty easily right so now what i'm going to do i am simply going to give some margin stuff in the top side of this complete section so if i if i just click on update now and if i reload this page here you are going to see that we have got the boxes created but the sites are touching the lines are touching each other so we are going to give the padding stuffs now as you as you can remember we have provided for this box we have provided 20 for this box we have provided 20 pixels of margin that combines to 40 pixels so we are going to give like here on the top we are going to give like 40 pixels of margin so that it will look so nicer so if i take you back here and after that if i click on these three icons and then we are going to get this edit inner section if i take you to advanced then from margin i'm going to unlink this one and on top i'm going to give 40 pixels and if i click on update now you are going to see that we have got this change really really beautifully happened here right so pretty simple way of doing this stuff so this is how easy it is to use elementor page builder to create beautiful web pages for your clients now let me take you back again here and after that if you just notice we have got some spacings in the top in, we have got some spacing in the bottom so we are going to work on this stuff so simple i'm going to select the whole section and after that i'm going to take you to advanced then i'm going to give some padding stuff here so let's say from top i'm going to give um 100 pixels and from bottom i'm going to give 100 pixels and just take a look we have got these spacings added automatically into our wordpress or into this section specifically right so now if i take you back let me see where we are yeah this part is looking great and now it's time to work on this section right so simple we are going to take another section by okay let me just cross this out it is just making me um what is i don't know so let me just click here on this plus icon and after that i'm going to take another one column structure for this section so if you just notice we have got this one heading then we have got this paragraph and then we have got this button so three things we have to take so let me take you back again here and before that i'd love to change the image so it is a real quick job so i'd love to do this so that it will look much nicer and professional so here this image and this image i'm going to add them right here so let's click here choose image and after that we have this image and in for this column i have got the other image which is this one insert and just take a look how it is looking like let me click on update and here we go we have got everything happened properly or everything been done properly so now we have got let me just cross this out again and now i'm going to take this one column structure and after that if i take you back we have got this heading paragraph and then this button so let me take you back here now let me take you to widgets and then drag this heading right here then i'm going to drag text editor right here and then i'm going to drag this button right here all right guys so just take a look we have got the basic structure or the base structure already it's time to provide this information so let me just copy these things copy 
and paste them here and after that I am going to take it to the two uh, second line so I'm going to use now the HTML tag so you should know about the ways you should know about um, how things works so that you'll be able to implement them to make your client projects easier and easy to do actually so let me take you back so after lab dot we have got um, I'm going to provide this break tag and just take a look we have got two lines now I'm going to take them to center alignment and just take a look it is looking sorry it is looking real um, real like uh, similar to this one now let's just copy this paragraph from here let me take you back click here and after that i'm going to paste this information right here and then i'm going to give the html tag okay so it's showing me these codes which should not be so i'm going to delete this part and let's take text editor again so if you are getting these errors simply do these things and it will be gone so let me just provide this information and yeah i'm going to see the same uh, problem again so in this case i'm just going to go with the other way which we already know so if you are facing problems with one uh, way you are going to use the other way so this is the uh, reason why i have showed the two different ways so now let me take you to advanced and after that i'm going to give like the padding of let me unlink this one in right i want 300 pixels of padding and then in left i want 300 pixels of padding and then i'm going to take you to style then let me give the alignment to center just take a look how beautifully they are placed in our web page now let me take you back it's time to work on this button get started now so i am going to click here and then i'm going to type out get started now and then we have got this exclamatory sign and we have got this button in the center alignment so let me take it to center and then if you want to provide the link simply you can add the link right here right so now we are almost done it's time to get the color code and now i'm going to take pixie and come on yeah here we go pixie is opened already so i'm going to take the color code control alter copy you already know about this tool if you have watched my previous lessons now i am going to select this whole section from here let's go to style and after that change the background from classic i'm going to change the color to this color and just take a look how it is looking like similar to the bo bo bottom stuff so now if i okay before i go for that i'd love to give some padding stuffs right here in this section so let me take you to advanced and after that on top i'm going to give 100 pixels of padding and on bottom i'm going to give 100 pixels of padding now if i click on update and then if i preview this page in a new tab if i take you to the bottom of this page you should see your web page is looking like this now what we have to do we have to add this shape divider into the top part of this section it's pretty simple you already know if you have uh, followed the previous lesson so let me take you back here on the editor, editor panel and then i'm going to take you to style and after that from shape divider we are going to give on top it is already selected so we are going to type select the type which is going to be tile and then we are going to change the height to whatever we want to give so let's just keep this with this parameter and if i show you yeah so it's looking great now if i click on update if I reload this page here and just take a look how beautifully our web page is uh, looking like as of now. So this was it guys. We have created this web page step by step using Elementor throughout our uh, three lessons. So again, I want to show you the lessons which you have followed. Um, Rafi. So these are the lessons elementor web page with elementor easily part one and then the part two these are the lessons which we have used and learned creating this web page step by step so this was it now it's time to give some tweak on this web page to make it more more identical to our original landing page which we have got right here so Thank you so much for watching and we are going to learn more about Elementor, about the usage of Elementor, about the other options of Elementor for sure in our future lessons. And I believe you are 
also being able to understand the lessons easily as the other guys are sharing their words on our group and i really really appreciate their uh, practice works they are sharing and i'm so glad that you guys are being able to follow along and you guys are being able to create beautiful web page using elementor as a complete beginner all right guys so thank you so much again and please let me know your opinion by commenting below please let me know if you have got any question by commenting below and please don't forget to like this video don't forget to share this video and share this complete course with your friends so that they will be able to learn from this completely uh, or from this complete course uh, without spending a single penny all right guys so i hope to see your success and i hope to see you in the next lesson have a good day thank you so much bye bye Hello and welcome to the 18th lesson of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where our ultimate goal is to become job ready to start providing freelance services with WordPress and Elementor on Upwork, Fiverr or whatever freelance marketplace you would love to work on and so far our progress is real great. We now know how to customize a website, we now know how to build a web page using Elementor and WordPress and now in this video I am going to show you how to purchase a domain name. First of all let me show you the channel which is editor dev i'm going to purchase a domain name for this youtube channel and my targeted domain name is editor.dev so i'm going to take you to namecheap.com from where i mostly purchase the domain names and i'm going to attach the namecheap link into the description field below and after visiting the page you have to provide or actually you have to uh, enter the domain name right here to see if the domain name is available if the pricing is right or if you want to change the domain name if needed so i'm going to target this one agitr.dev so let me type out here agitr.dev and after that i have to click on this search button so if we click here it is going to show that if the domain name is available the pricing and other information regarding the domain name so let's just wait while it is being loaded and as you can see wow so this domain name is premium though i have seen this domain few minutes ago it was only 15 dollars but now it is 115 us dollars so i'm not going to take this domain for sure but i'm going to go with an alternative so just take a look the pricing wasn't good for me so i'm just ignoring so as you can see here agitor.org it is going to be cost you 8800 us dollars if you want to go with the domain and you have got few more options as you can see so let me just ignore i'm going to go with agitordev.com instead so let me type out agitordev dot com and let's see if we can find this domain name available yeah just take a look ops not co we want dot com and editor deb dot com is available for 8.88 us dollars for 9 us dollars we are getting this domain and i don't want to miss this domain for sure so i'm going to click on add to cart button right here and here we go we have got editor deb dot com added to our cart it's time to click on this view cart button and okay from this page you can select the time frame for how long you want to register this domain name so i want this for the first one year you can select up to uh, 10 years right here so i would love to go with the first year or let's say for the next um okay let's go with for one year and after that i can simply keep it to auto renew because i want to keep this domain name active and if i don't add this auto renew it is not going to be auto renewed i have to renew this domain name manually when the one year is passed so now i'd love to keep it to auto renew as i am planning to make this website a big one step by step and then from whizgard it is completely free so i'd love to keep it free forever so that my privacy is going to be protected no one is not going to uh, find my email address my name my phone number or the other details whatever i am going to enter here on my name chip account so sometimes we receive lots of spam messages spam emails spam calls so it is going to save us from these kinds of efforts so now if you if i want to take you to the bottom of this page if you can have these uh, other extra features as you can see you can purchase an ssl certificate for 
us dollars per year but i'm going to ignore this one and you have got few more options if you want you can simply select these options based on your need if you need them you can select these options so i don't need any one of these services and now i am going to go with this by clicking on this confirm order button so let me click on confirm order and after that i have to sign in if you don't have an account on namecheap you have to provide your information username password confirm password first name last name and email address right here and after creating your new account you have to sign in to your uh, namecheap account so i'm going to provide my account information right here so my account information is added rafi and then i'm going to select the password from here and now if i click on sign in and continue it is going to take me to the sign in or logged in page okay so they have sent me a validation email so i have to verify the code so i'm going to my gmail inbox where they sent me an email and here we go um this is the code so i'm going to copy and let me get, take you back here paste the code right here and it's time to click on submit and they are going to take us to the actual page as you can see 9.6 us dollars is going to be the charge by adding this icann fee and now if i click on pay now button yeah payment authorized order sent for processing zero out of two items has been completed and it is going to work as you can see all right guys so thank you for your purchase your order this number placed on this completed and they have charged my uh my card already so this was the process how we can purchase a domain name from namecheap and now i already have got this domain name if i want to show you here we have got ajaderdeb.com is active now on our account february 11 22 is the expiry date of this domain so as i have kept it auto renew it is going to get auto renewal automatically so this was the process of purchasing a domain name from namecheap and i believe you have found this video helpful informative if you did please give this video a like and share this video to help your friends and let's go for the next step we are going to build a complete website on this domain name step by step throughout our next lessons so i hope to see you in the next lessons thank you so much for watching this far have a good day bye bye hello and welcome to the 19th lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where we are becoming job ready to start providing freelance web design services with wordpress and elementor in my most recent class i have shown how to purchase a domain name from namecheap and now in this video i am going to show you how to connect a namecheap domain name with a hostinger hosting plan step by step so without further ado let me show you the domain name which you have got which is ajadadev.com and now we are going to connect this domain name with our hostinger hosting plan and for your information in case you want to support me and if you're interested to purchase a domain or a hosting plan i'm going to attach my affiliate link of hostinger and namecheap into the video description so when you will make a purchase by using my affiliate links i will get a small commission without adding any ex extra cost to you so it is going to help me for sure and now let me take you back to hostinger and i'm going to click on this login button and it is going to take me to my hostinger account panel and here we go i have got this hosting plan where i have already hosted multiple websites if i want to show you if i click on this hosting button you are going to see i have already got three websites hosted under one hostinger hosting plan on hostinger platform and now i'm going to add one more website to add a new website we have to click on this add website button right here and it is going to take us to this page where we have to provide our domain name and we have to add a password so let me just remove the information which we have already got so now i'm going to take you back to namecheap and after that i'm going to copy the domain name from here and let's go back to hostinger we have to paste the domain name here and after that we have to provide a password for this account so let me provide a password here and after that i have to click on this add website button and now it is going to be added right here under this list of websites 
and here we go website created successfully and if you just notice we have got ajadadev.com added into this list of websites option but we are not yet done now we have to point the name servers into the name chip host, uh, domain name so first of all let me click on this manage button right here and i'm going to cross this out from here and after coming here in this page as you can see we have got editor deb selected on this hosting account and now if you notice here hostinger name servers we have to we have got this name server one and name server two added here we have to point these name servers into name chip and to do this simply we have to click on this manage button right here and it is going to take us to the next page where we have to make the change and here we go if you just notice this name servers option currently it is selected to name chip basic dns but we have to make some change so to do make the change we have to click here and after that we have to click on custom dns button right here you are going to see two fields name server one name server two and in these fields we have to go back here we have to copy the name server one from here copy and let's go back we have to paste the name server one on the name server one field and after that i have to go back and after that i have to copy this name server two dns perking this one copy and let me put the name server to right here and after that we have to click on this right icon so let's click on this right icon so that our save uh, change will be saved and and here we go we have got this notification saved as you can see dns server update may take up to 40 hour, 48 hours to take effect so sometimes it takes around like 5 to 10 minutes then sometimes it takes a little longer so please don't worry this domain name is going to be connected to our hostinger account in real soon so let me just see if it is already been connected or if we have to wait before we start creating a website so let me just type out editor dab.com right here hmm, it's not been added yet but it is going to be updated please don't worry so while it is being updated i am going to show you the next step how you can create a website how you can install wordpress on this new domain name so let me from this page as you can see as a dip on the same page we have to go a little bit down and after that you will find this website option simply if you click on this auto installer button right here you are going to find the options as you can see installed applications we have already installed wordpress on these domains and now we have to install wordpress which is this one in this domain agita.dev.com so as you can see you have got few more options wordpress wordpress plus woocommerce zoomla and other so as we want to create a wordpress website we are going to select wordpress from here and after that you are going to find all these information from description and then we have got this domain name as you can see agita.dev.com it is not editable and we should always keep this field blank let's keep it as it is this is blanked and after that you have to provide the administration administrator username for your wordpress website and the password so i'm going to provide a new username here editor dab uh, one and after that i'm going to provide a password here and after that we have to provide the administrator email address by default it is going to take the email address which you have connected with hostinger so we have got this email address let me keep this if you want to make change you can simply delete and make the change but i'd love to keep it as it is and then here is the place where you have to provide the website title so i'm going to provide the website title which is going to be editor deb and after that we have got this language selection option where we can simply select it uh, like english then other languages as you can see we have got based on your need you can simply go with that so i'd love to go with english and after that database i'm going to create a new database for this website so let me select this create new database as it was and then here you can provide a database password if you want but i'd love to keep this blank or let me just give it a new database password okay and then simply keep them as they are and here we we can select this option always update to latest available version so that our website wordpress php version these are the things are going to be automatically updated and after that simply we have to click on this install button 
and okay so i have to must contain at least one number and one uppercase and lowercase so i'm going to change this password from here and then i can simply click on this install button again and now wordpress is going to be installed on our new what uh, new website which is azure.dev.com so it might going to take some time while the domain name and the hosting is being connected so please wait few minutes and after that try this option and then you will be landed to the wordpress dashboard page and i'm going to show you in real quick how what we can get from this setup so far so i'm going to update click on the save update right here and after that if you just notice we have got uh, this azure.dev.com we have got wordpress installed now to access the backend simply if you click here on these three dots and from details or sorry from manage if you click on manage you are going to see that you have selected azure.dev.com and more information about your wordpress website and if you want to visit the dashboard of your wordpress website it is pretty simple if you click on this edit website button it is going to take you to the wordpress dashboard if the domain and hosting is already connected other than uh, other than that you, you might going to see this notification or this page is appearing while uh, the domain and hosting is not connected yet in this case we might have to wait few more minutes or let's say hours to get everything connected but don't worry it is going to be work fine and after clicking on this edit website you will be able to access your wordpress backend for sure so this was it for this tutorial i believe you have found this video helpful if you did please give this video a like and share this video to help your friends and subscribe to my channel to learn more about WordPress, Elementor and freelancing with WordPress and Elementor stuff and I have to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to the 20th lesson of our WordPress beginner to advanced course where we are becoming job ready to start providing freelance web design services with WordPress and Elementor and so far we have started building websites on live servers and now in this video I'm going to show you how you can get a free domain and free hosting to start creating your sample or portfolio websites at the beginning stage. So without further ado let me take you to the website which I'm going to use to get free domain and free hosting. So here, profreehost.com, I'm going to attach the link of this website into the video description for you for sure. And first of all, after visiting to this page, you have to click on this create account. And then let me cross this ad from here. And after that, we have to provide our email address and then a password. So let me provide my email address here. And I'm going to provide a password. And after that, I'm going to click here on this right sign. All right, so here we have got account created on this website, but now we have to create a new hosting account inside this website. So as you can see, activate account, please activate your account first. Did not receive, okay. So they have sent us an email on our email address that we have provided, and now we have to activate the account. And it is pretty simple. Just go to the email address which you have provided. And after that, click, as you can see, account activation. Click here, and you are going to find this option, activate account. Simply click on it. And here we go. Your account has been activated successfully. And after that, we are just signed in on our account. And now, if you just notice here, you do not have any account yet created, uh, create one now so basically we have created an account for this website so far and now we have to create a new hosting account and here is the notification now it's time to click on this create new account button right here and after that as you can see we are getting a free domain if you want you can add a custom domain but we, we are talking about getting free domain and free hosting so obviously i'm going to select this you can select any one of these extensions like una ux or is it yro.com so i'd love to go with this one and after that let's keep the free domain selected and then you have to provide the domain name right here which you are trying to get on let's say i want to create a website like rafi one dot una ux.com so i'm going to put my name right here like um rafi one and just take a look rafi one dot una ux.com is available so now we have to click on this right 
icon. So let me click on this button right here. And as you can see, we are getting our hosting account created. So we have to wait until it just get uh, stopped loading this um, icon. So let's just wait. All right, so here we go. We have got the hosting account created successfully and I had to wait around five minutes to get this account activated. Now we have to go for the next step. Simple, we have to click on this manage button right here. And after that, we'll find all the information. As you can see, username, status, which is active. Then we have got this main domain name. So if I click on this rafi1.unaux.com, we are going to find a page where it is been activated as you can see congratulations your account is active now now you can get to work and they have got some uh, information here for us so we are going to come back later here but before that let me take you back to client area and now we want to get or visit our control panel of this hosting and to go for the control panel we have to click here on this button right here and it is going to redirect us to the control panel within like few seconds okay so i am seeing this your connection is not secure you don't have to worry about this stuff this stuff so we have to simply click on this advanced button and after that click on this proceed to cpanel so let's click on continue and now it is going to load after that you have to click on this approve button and it is going to redirect us to the cpanel of this web page and here we are we are on the control panel of the hosting and now we'll be able to see all the options as you can see online file manager directory directory privacy database domains add-on domains email then we have got so many options about security software that edc at edc so whatever it is available on a paid hosting plan so now it's time to go for creating our website to create our website with um, wordpress we simply have to go a little bit down until we find this software options and from here if you notice this one software colors apps installer if we click here on this button it is going to take us to the page where we'll find so many cms's or the scripts available as you can see wordpress zoomla avon then we have got so many uh, scripts which you can start creating website suite so as we want to create a website with wordpress obviously we have to select this one so let's click on install from here and wordpress is going to be uh, appearing here and now it's time to start creating our website as you can see version of wordpress which is the latest version and it just taken automatically and now as you can see we have got this website address everything looks good and in directory make sure it is always blank okay and after that here site settings site name here we have to provide a site name so i'm going to type out here free um, website for practice just as an example this is the website which we website with free domain and hosting okay now in right after this site settings like providing site name and site description we have got the options to provide the admin username for the website and the password so i'm going to provide a, an admin username which is going to be rafi and the password is going to be a, an easy one so i'm going to provide an easy password and after that yeah i'd love to keep this as it is after that you can change your admin email address if you want but i'd love to go with the email which i already have then we have got site language so as you can see select language we have got english selected but if you want you have many more options from here which you can select from so let's keep english as of now and after that we can simply keep these things as they are now it's time to go a little bit down i am not even going to install any theme from here we are going to select a theme from the back end of wordpress letter so now it's time to click on this install button straightforward so let me click here and it is going to take as you can see this may take around three to four minutes to get wordpress installed on this uh, domain name and hosting plan so let's just wait while it is being loaded 
and here we go we have got congratulations the software was installed successfully now we'll be able to access our wordpress backend from this administrative url if i click here it is going to take us to the wordpress backend from where we'll be able to upload a new, new theme we'll be able to start customizing the theme to build a beautiful website for us just take a look we have got this plan so now if i visit this web page okay so here we have got this by default page settled already so in this case we have got some instruction as you can see following are some suggestions to build your website quickly delete the html file before uploading your website so we have to delete this html file from the file manager from our control panel so let me take you back to the c panel from here and after that if you just notice this option from files we have got online file manager simply we have to click here and after that we have to go to htdocs and then you are going to find this html file index dot index2.html simply right click on this file and then click on this delete button and after that click on confirm and now if i take you back here on this dashboard and if i just click here on visit site just take a look we have got wordpress installed now let's say you want to change the theme and input demo content this is pretty simple i'm going to show you in real quick so from the back end if i take you to appearance from themes if i click on themes we are going to find few options already now i'm going to click on this add new theme button right here and after that i would love to upload a theme from popular and let's say i want to upload this uh, let me see which one cadence i'm going to click on install you can choose whatever theme you want to install and activate and we have got this theme installed already so now it's time to click on this activate button and we have got the theme already activated as well it's time to click on this install cadence starter template button right here so let me click here and it is going to install the um, extension which is going to help us get the starter templates and select the builder so where we have to select elementor and after that you can choose whatever template you want from this list so let's say i want to uh, i want to work on um this template as of now so i simply i have to click here and after that i have to click on this full site button and i have to click on start importing button right here so it is going to check and install the required plugin so here for this website it requires this elementor so it is going to download elementor and install it and after that it will activate the plugin for us and then it will start importing this uh, theme for us and it is going to give us a beautiful looking website within few minutes so let's just wait while it is being while it is working in the background and just take a look we have got finished view your site if i click on this view button right here you are going to see a beautiful beautiful looking website appeared right in front of our eyes just take a look how beautiful this website is so this was it guys i believe you have found this video helpful on getting a free domain free hosting and a beautiful website so if you have found this video helpful please give this video a like share this video to help your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more helpful videos in near future i hope to see you in my next videos thank you so much for watching have a good day bye bye hello and welcome to the 21st lesson of our wordpress beginner to advanced course where we are becoming job ready to start providing freelance web design services with wordpress and elementor in my most recent class i have shown how you can get a free domain free hosting to create a beautiful wordpress website and here is the website which we have created on this free domain and we have hosted this website on the free hosting and now in this video we are going to learn how to move or migrate a WordPress website from localhost to live server and as you can see we have got this website on the localhost which is on our computer this is the website and now we are going to transfer this website from localhost to this live server 
and to make this happen we are going to need to make few steps first of all we are going to reset this website so that we'll have a complete clean installation of wordpress and after that we have to upload or actually add a plugin here which is going to be for the migration purpose and then we'll take the export file we are going to upload that file here on this platform or this website and after that we'll have this website transferred on this side so without making this like a theoretical one so i'm going to show you how to migrate a website from localhost to live server real live step by step so first of all let's just go here and then i'm going to take you to the dashboard and we are going to start by resetting this website so let me take you to plugins and after that if i click on add new button right here we are going to find that plugin uh, additional page or the plugins page and after that i have to type out w p r e s e t and we are going to see some of the plugins which are which are mostly used for wordpress website resetting so i'd love to go with the first one wp reset so let me click on install now and this plugin in goes is going to be added right here on this website as you can see installed and now we have to activate this one so let's click on activate and after that if we click on let me click on dismiss and now if i click on this open wp reset tools it's simple let's click here and you are going to see all of these options so let's let me just take you from here we have to go till the down and you'll find this option as you can see i've got few options reactivate current theme cadence so i'd love to uh, reactivate this theme or let's just uncheck this one and i'm going to uncheck this one as well so we don't want this plugin to get reactivated after the installation so let me just type out here reset and let me click on reset site and let's click on reset wordpress and we are going to get a clean installation of wordpress website now after getting this reset things done right here as you can see resetting in progress please wait but usually yeah within few seconds we have got this website resetted now if i visit this website in a new tab you are going to see we have got a clean installation of wordpress now i'm going to cross this out from here and let me take you back to our local host or on the local server now i'm going to take you to the dashboard of local server and after that let me take you to plugins then click on add new and after that we are going to install a plugin which is going to be let's say all-in-one migration ATIO in migration let's see yeah here we go all in one wp migration this is the plugin which you have to install so let me click on install now and other than this there are a few more plugins as you can see wordpress backup and my migration then you have got duplicator backup and migration so almost all of these tools are going to work the same way how it works so let me just click on activate and i love using this plugin because i'm most familiar with this the usage of this plugin okay and it is really easy now we have got all in one wp migration right here and if you just notice here we have got this option added right here now it's time to click on this export button so let's click on export and after that you have to click here export to let me click on file and it is going to work start working like analyzing the size of the website how many data we have got and what is the size of this database so let's just wait while it is working in the uh, working for us as you can see done exporting database so let's just wait yeah so here we go we have got a huge database here 676 megabytes so let me click on this download local host button right here and after that i'm going to click on save and here we go we have got this export file actually we have got this file downloaded instantly now i'm going to click on close now if i take you back to our live server again we have to go to plugins and then let's click on add new and we need to install the same plugin here all in one wp migration and let's just wait while it is working here we go all in one wp migration which we have had here on this website right so let's go back we are going to click on install now 
and it is going to be installed on our computer and after that we sorry on our website and then we have to activate this plugin and after that simply we have to go here then let's click on this import button right here and after that well as you can see maximum upload file size is 10 megabytes only but the file we have up downloaded is 76 megabytes so in this case we have to click here on this get unlimited button right here and after that if we download this from here this from this page we are going to get like 512 megabytes of size so let me click on download and after that i'm going to click on save and let me take you back here let's say here on this page and after that i'm going to take you to plugins add new and we are going to upload the plugin which you have just downloaded this one is a plugin right so let me click on choose file and after that let me take you here and this is the plugin which we just downloaded right so let me click on open and let's click on install now and here we go we have got this uploaded now it's time to click on activate plugin right here so you learned the way how we can add a plugin from the library and how we can download and add a plugin from uh, manually okay so now if i take you back here on all-in-one wp migration and if i click on import you are going to see we have got 512 megabytes of size maximum upload size so now let's click here on these three dots or three lines and after that we are going to import the file and it is going to be this one which we have just downloaded few minutes ago let me select and after that click on open and it is going to start working and it might going to take some time it depends on the internet connection speed and on the file side so let's just wait all right so here we are almost done so let's just wait a few more seconds Alright guys, so here we have to click on this proceed button right here. So let me click on proceed. Okay, so now they have just started restoring the site from our backup. So let's just wait a few more seconds while it is working. And here is an important message. Please do not close the browser window or your import will fail. So you should not cross this out or close this window. Otherwise, it is not going to work. Okay. So this is really important keep it in your mind while you were um, just migrating your wordpress website from one server to another so let's just wait here now they are restoring your database okay as you can see here your site has been imported successfully as you can see we have got everything done now it's time to click on this finish button right here and if I show you, if I visit this web page in a new tab, you are going to see that we have got a new look to the website. Just take a look. We have we are on rafi rafi onexcom but we have got this site which is currently on our local host. As you can see, localhost last new site, we have got this site appearing on our live server so this is one of the process that we do or follow to migrate a wordpress website from a local host to live server so this was it guys i believe you have found this video helpful if you did please give this video a like share this video to help your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more helpful videos in near future and hello and welcome back this is ashkur rafi once again in this video i'm going to show you the easiest wordpress job you can do as a freelancer on fiber as a complete beginner on wordpress and i'm going to talk details about the job type and after that i'm going to show you how to do the job for your client step by step in real way so without further ado let me make a search on fiber so the service is going to be named like coming soon if I type it out here you are going to see on under services we have got coming soon if I click here you are going to see only 277 services available that means 
this service has less competition on fiber this far so if you just take a look here on the first gig this guy already have 68 five star reviews this guy already have 105 reviews this one have 31 reviews and this one have 241 reviews so if i open up few of these gigs from here to demonstrate the job type and after that i'm actually going to show you how to work on this on this website for sure so let me take you back here and after that if you just take a look i will create a beautiful coming soon page and after that if you just take a look on some of these works if i take you here from his client's project yeah this one is a client work which he has which this guy has done and just take a look how it was looking like then this one is another client work this one is another client work and if if you just click along you are going to find so many works that this guy have done for his clients and after that if you just take a look this guy is providing these services uh, basic coming soon page on html this is a html coming soon page but don't worry just take a look extra function wordpress uh, versus shopify on html he is providing five us dollars or charging five us dollars but when it is going to wordpress things you will, he is charging 15 us dollars right and if you take it to premium you are going to find more details so let's talk about wordpress as we are going to as we are actually learning wordpress things step by step from this playlist as you can see i have already got 21 actual lessons of this course and we are being able to create beautiful website like this one on a free domain and free hosting and we have covered everything along the way as you can see we have got so now let me take you back on the actual video of this one so if you just notice wordpress so we are going to create a coming soon page on wordpress for sure so let me take you back here so this guy is charging 15 us dollars here so let me take you back here and this one is currently working on working with one client and if you just notice again i will build modern coming soon or under under construction page on shopify so this this one is specifically uh, working on shopify so i'm actually going to cross this out let's go for wordpress only so i'll make an intro coming soon for your company or youtube channel okay so this one is actually a video i guess yeah so this one is a video but i'm actually going to cross this out but this one is for website i'll build coming soon or under construction page right so if you just take a look here responsive design with text and background image social media buttons and he's charging 10 us dollars on standard we have got five sections standard page package like if you just notice some of the works here from his uh, gig let me just click here just take a look these are the pages he designed for his clients and these are very basic very easy to do and i'm actually going to show you in few seconds just take a look with 30 us dollars he's he's adding like countdown timer i'm going to show you how you can add countdown timer completely free and then we have got social media buttons or icons and much more so i'm actually going to talk about this service pack okay and from premium he is going to provide a mini uh, website of short with all features of standard package okay. okay so we are going to talk about this feature right and then for uh, for this gig we are going to talk about this feature so now i'm going to cross this out and after that i'm going to cross this one as well out let me take this page here okay now i'm going to sign in to this page or actually on this uh, website so i'm going to type out wp admin and you have got this website completely free on a free domain and free hosting if you are a complete beginner learning wordpress then you can watch my video which i'm going to add in the link of the video into the description field below so that you'll be able to create these types of beautiful websites using free domain and free hosting for your practice purpose so let me take you back and after that here i am on wordpress backend and after that i have to go to plugins and after that if i click on add new button right here it is going to take us to the page from where we will be able to add an essential plugin so let me type it out here cmp and if i hit enter you are going to see uh, this one cmp coming soon and maintenance plugin by this theme so we have to install this theme so let me click on install now button right here okay so we have got it installed it's time to click on this activate button right here so that the tool will be activated and we'll be able to use this so here we go we have got this plugin here cmp settings so now if i click on this cmp basic setup or let's say from here if you just click on this cmp settings we'll be able to access the settings page so let me click on cmp settings 
and it is going to take us here on this page and if you just notice we have got this status as disabled so let's say if i visit this web page right here we are going to be able to see the home page um, as you can see here but whenever i'm going to enable this one by clicking on this enable and then if i click on see all chains and here from here you'll be able to select the page like whole website home page only or whitelist or blacklist so we are going to select whole website so whatever whatever url a person is visiting from this website they are going to see that our website is under maintenance so if i click on save all chains and after that if i reload this page right here okay it's working because we are already signed in so if i copy this domain from here and if i take you back and if you just notice here coming soon mode is currently on okay so if i take you to incognito and if i hit enter you are going to see that this page is under maintenance as for office portfolio something is happening right so we have got this coming soon page enabled already now it's time to make it little um, nicer so let's just go back here and after that if i take you back i'm going to cross this out from here and from here if you just notice cmp mode this should be on coming soon and landing page or you can select this one maintenance mode or redirect mode if you want to redirect people from this page to another page so i'd love to go with coming soon and landing page and after that we are going to yeah let me first of all click on save all change so whatever change we are doing or making here we should after making the change we should click on this save all change so that the save will be changed otherwise we'll lose the chains after that if i take you back you are going to see few templates available as you can see this one is currently active and then we have got few more options so one i was talking about as you can see here countdown timers social media buttons and much more will be able to get access to all of these stuff from here if you just notice we have got a countdown timer right here added on this template so if i click on this activate button right here now we have got if i take you back here let's say if i reload this page you are going to see we have got a countdown timer added as well now let's go back and after that we are going to see what are the changes we can make from here download more cmp themes if you want you can download these um let's say styles or designs which are really really beautiful if you look at some of the designs these guys have done for their clients if you just take a look these designs you can add these types of beautiful designs from here as well okay but you have to purchase them as they are paid some of them but if you got the creativity if you can use elementor you'll be able to build so so nice pages like these pages without spending a single penny okay so let me take you back and after that i have just pro added the template which is this one currently active with the countdown and now if i take you to content from here we are going to be able to make all the necessary changes as we want so if you notice here logo setup if i simply make it little smaller and let me take it here and if i just take it if i just show you here we don't have a logo added here but we want to have a logo as our client has here so let me add a logo so i want to select this one as you can see graphic logo so let's click on it and after that we are going to select a logo from here and let me select the logo which is this one and after that let's click on insert logo or we can simply upload a logo from your computer okay so let me take you to the media library and we have selected this logo let's click on insert logo and now if you click on this save all chains after that if you reload this page you are going to see we have got a beautiful logo added right here on our um coming soon page right and after that let me talk about these things main content something is happening no we are not going to give this text we are going to provide let's say um something better version is coming soon okay let's keep better version is coming soon if you want you can add an image here so let me uh just show you the difference after uh, without the image and with the image so if i have i have just hit it on the save all change if i reload this page you are going to see this text is already been changed now let me show you if i add some media right here or some other text this will be added right after it as well so let me add an add, add a media from my media library 
let's say I want to add um, this image just as an example let's click on insert into post and after that if I click on save all chains let's see what happens here so basically you have to um, you have to just play around with these things and you will you will just figure out like these are the things how it is going to look like on this website and just take a look how it is looking like it is looking real nice so let's say you don't want let me just make it a little smaller again okay so let's say you don't want this one to be happening here or actually appearing here we can simply delete this one and let's say save all chains if i reload this page and if you just notice we have got this just we, we got rid of this uh, let's say header text like right the heading text and just take a look how beautiful it is looking like and if you just notice this template is or this page is already a responsive template right so this is the easiest way how you can create a coming soon page for your client and i'm going to show you a few more options from here so let's say graphic background if you want to add a custom background here you'll be able to do this as well from here as you can see currently it's selected to default media but you can simply select it one to custom image and after that you can select from media library you can upload new images if you want so let me click on this media library and after that if you want you can simply upload images from your media library or you can simply go to media library or actually i am i'm sorry you can upload uh, images from your computer or you can add images from your media library so let's say i want to add um this image just as an example okay and if i click on insert and if i click here on this save all chains and if i reload this page you are going to see we have got a background image added right um on our let's say coming soon page although this is not looking good uh, comparing to the other background which which we had so i'm going to make the change okay so basically you have to spend the time to make the uh, make the make make your work looking nice okay and we have got few more options as you can see unsplash library you can uh, select image from random photo collection random from collection or random photo okay and we are going to give let's say something like um, we are going to give nature as an example and techno okay let's just keep the nature only okay and i'm going to select let's click on save all chains and if i reload this page you are going to see that we have got a different image added here on the landing page or let's say on the coming soon page if i reload this one again you are going to see something else just a beautiful work right if I reload again, you are going to see something else is going to be happen in the background. So this is real nice way how you can make a um, coming soon page more attractive to your clients and more beautiful to get five star reviews. So let me just make it little smaller. And after that, from here, if you want, you can add a video into the background as well. So if I click on this video and after that, YouTube is selected, you can add a custom video if you need or if you want if you have so i'd love to take a video from youtube and after that if i make a search right here youtube and let's say uh, nature okay and let's say i want to add this video just as an example if i copy video if i take you back here and if i put it right here and let me click on this save all change and again whatever change you make always click on this save all change button and now if i take you back here reload this page you are going to see that we will have a background video playing in the background right so this is the easiest way of making a um, coming soon page more attractive right so let me just make this smaller again so that i'll be able to explain a few more things easily to you and now i would actually going to go with let's say splash library random photo and nature only okay so it looks better uh, than this video as of now and after that if i take you a little bit down let's see what else i can show you countdown timer setup so let's say it is showing us 23 hours uh, 52 minutes remaining and six seconds so in this case we can select let's say we are going to launch this website on 5th uh, march 2021 
and after that if I click on save all chains if I reload this page uh, and just take a look we have got 3 hours 23 I'm sorry 3 days 23 hours and 51 minutes 23 seconds remaining to get our website live now let me show you a few more things right here uh, from this one countdown action so let's say you have completed or actually the time has passed and we have crossed this time limit now what this countdown should countdown should do so if you click here you are going to click on this hide counter disable coming soon or maintenance page uh, page or url redirect so let's say after having this uh, let's say date passed i want disable coming soon so that the website will be live people will be whenever someone will visit our website they'll be able to visit our actual home page right or actual website so let's click on save all chains and after that we have got a subscription form which is not selected or added right here but this is an extra cost you can charge to your client yeah almost all of these um landing page has this feature as you can see this subscription form so let me take you back and after that if i take you a little bit down you are going to find yeah this one subscription form so enable in page subscribe form or enable automatic subscribe form so i am going to select this one and okay and i'm going to click on save all chains and if i reload this page and here we go we have got this subscription form added so now it is not actually looking good because we have got this image so in this case i am going to remove this image as of now but we can simply work a few more things or actually you can do a few more things like custom css things to take it like this form to here and then we can remove this one or actually place this one under this uh, subscribe button right here so it will look nicer but for this video i'm going to i'm not going to go with the custom css this is just the basic things or the things that you actually need to get started these are the things i'm going to talk about here in this video right so if i take you back here after this one we have got this subscription form if you want okay and after that we have got this social media things right so now we can simply select which are the social media things that you want to use let's say i want facebook i want twitter i want instagram and let's say i want linkedin just an example and after that we have to provide the user id so let's say my my facebook and then my instagram my okay and i'm going to cross this out my linkedin I'd love to keep only these things three things and if you want you can simply drag these things here and drop it like this and after that let me click on this save all chains you are going to see that the, the things are going to be appearing here if I reload this page you are going to see we have got these icons just take a look with beautiful effects so now I want to make these icons a little bigger so that it will look much nicer so if I take you back and from here social icon location footer so in this case we are going to provide below content with big icons so if i click here if i save click on this save all chains if i reload this page you are going to see how beautiful these icons are looking like now if someone clicks here they are going to visit my instagram if someone clicks here they are going to visit my facebook so this is how you have to connect your clients information on each of these let's say social media things and just take a look how it is looking like right so this is pretty easy stuff guys but you can make a decent amount of money by providing this service and after that we have got this copyright thing so if you just notice made by this with love so we want to make the change here so we are going to provide let's say copyright see Rafi if I click on save all change and if I reload this page just take a look we have got this copyright thing changed as well let me take you back we are done with the content stuff which I was supposed to show you I believe I was able to cover everything now let me take you to customize from here and after that you can select from active color as you can see we have got this color shim so let me change this color by clicking here and after that if I take you right here okay let's click on save all chains and now if I reload this page you are going to see that we have got a color matchup here on this button and everything working fine right here right 
so font color if you want to change the font color you can do that as well so i think the white color of font is looking great here on this website and after that we have got few more things if you want you can change the font family from here and after that we have got more information like font size font weight it depends on your need right so you can simply make the change based on your need so i am going to skip all of these things as of now and i think you already know about everything if you have watched my previous tutorials on wordpress beginner to advanced course and i'm going to attach the course link into the video description which you can watch completely free now let's go to seo and analytics so here seo title so if you want you can change your fab icon so select the fab icon and we have got this fab icon as of now which is looking great so we don't need to make the change but if your client is providing a different fab icon let's say this one your client has provided simple click on insert fab icon let's click on save change and if you reload this page just take a look we have got this fab icon changed so i am going to take you back to our previous one which was looking good so let's click on save change and after that for seo purpose you can provide more information here seo title seo description which, uh, which your client is going to provide your your client is supposed to provide you and after that seo image if you want to add an image so these are the things which the SEO stuff so the, let's say the marketer stuff are going marketer people are going to do so this is not something that we are uh, going to be um, concerned about okay so let's keep them as they are but if you're interested to learn from me please let me know I'd love to add up more information about these things how SEO, th SEO things works and how to implement them on our website now we have got this website analytics this is currently selected to disabled but if your client needs to track how many visitors have landed to their home page or website when they were in under construction simply you can select your google analytics page just provide your google analytics tracking id right here you you can ask your client to provide that id and after that click on this save all chains and you will be all done right so whatever or whoever people are visiting your website your client will be able to see the statistics now we are done with this picture it's time to go to custom css and after that here is the field where we need to actually you need to learn more custom css stuff to be able to make the necessary changes but as you can see this is a quite interesting and quite uh, good looking um, coming soon page which you can design completely free without having the coding skills right so if you want to learn more from me about the custom css stuffs and other things please let me know it would be my pleasure to help you out now what i'm going to take you uh, where actually i'm going to take you on this advanced where we might have to do nothing at, at all cmp page whitelist okay so we don't have to work on these things uh, so everything looks perfect now we can simply um, take you back right here if i make it bigger and let's say yeah we are we are done we are actually done with everything so if i reload this page just take a look we have got this pretty nice um, uh, coming soon page designed for our client so this was the process guys so guys so if you are interested to learn more advanced stuff like making these types of landing page these types of landing page and a dedicated video about only landing page please let me know by commenting below and it would be my pleasure to show you how you can design more beautiful advanced landing pages but the one which you have just designed here this is looking real great guys and it is full functional as you can see this one by adding up this countdown timer and these social media icons this person if i take you here um, this person is charging 30 us dollars for this simple work okay so this is how easy it is to design a landing page on uh, wordpress websites using a simple free plugin right so i believe you have found this video helpful if you did please give this video a like and please don't forget to share all the lessons of this wordpress beginner to advanced course where which you, you are going to find on my channel wordpress basic to advanced course or this one financing with wordpress and elementary and we, and we have got many more lessons here added on this channel about wordpress elementor and other stuffs other web design stuffs okay so i hope to see you in the next video and please let me know your comments by uh, commenting i'm sorry let me know your opinions by commenting below share these videos to help me help your friends 
and subscribe to my channel to get more helpful videos in near future i hope to see you in the next video thank you so much and have a good day bye bye hello and welcome back this is Ashul Rafi once again in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a beautiful coming soon page just like this one using a free WordPress plugin and in this coming soon page we have got this countdown timer we have got social media icon links and to collect emails we have got this form added as well and I'm going to show you how to set up everything completely free throughout this video so without further ado let me take you to my WordPress dashboard to show you the step-by-step -step process all right so here I am on my WordPress backend and now I have to take you to plugins and after that let me click on add new button so that I'll be able to add the required plugin so after coming here we have to make a search using CMP and it is going to load the plugin which we need here as you can see coming soon and maintenance plugin by this theme named CMP which has got 100k plus active installations with 229 five star reviews so this is one of the greatest plugins used for coming soon page design so let me click on install now button right here and now we have to click on this activate button right here and you are going to see some changes right here in this left side and just take a look we have got cmp settings added and you are going to see that on plugins page we have got thank you for installing cmp and here is the plugin we can now go to the settings page by simply clicking on this cmp settings or from here if we click on this CMP basic setup it is going to take us to the same page so let me click here and it is going to take us to the settings page and just take a look we have got CMP status currently disabled and we have to make it enabled so now while it is disabled I'm going to take you to an incognito mode and after that if I type out the domain name here you are going to see we are going to be able to visit the page of the website right everything is visible here but if I take you back here on this page and after that if I click on enabled and let's select whole website and let's click on this save all change and now if I take you back here and let's reload this page here you are going to see we are not going to be able to access the website anymore it is going to show us this coming soon page template now if I take you back here and let me explain few things here so CMP status is currently enabled and you can see coming soon mode is currently on and after that we have got three options here one is for whole website so that whenever someone is going to visit or someone is trying to visit your website from let's say contact us page services page or any other page they are going to see this status activated but if you click or select home page only whenever they are going to visit your home page they are going to see this status other than that they will be able to access the other pages easily and for this option if you have selected any whitelist or blacklist then you can select whatever page you want to select and after that we have got this CMP mode where we have three options one is redirect mode so if someone is going to visit your home page and if you want them to redirect to any other pages you can simply select redirect mode and then choose the page URL and then give the delay time then we have got this maintenance mode and after that we have got this coming soon and landing page so I'd love to go with this coming soon and landing page and then I'm going to select save all change so whatever change you make here make sure you are clicking on the save all changes button other than that the change won't be saved now if I take you a little bit down you are going to see we have got few themes available here as you can see available themes currently this one is selected but we want the theme which has countdown timer which has the sign up form which has the social media icons which are clickable so for to make this happen we have to select this theme and from here we can simply click on this activate button right here and now if I click on this let me take you back click on this save all chains again and after that if I take you back here on this page and if I reload this page you are going to see some difference is going to be happened 
and just take a look we are already seeing some change now we have to make the change on the logo we have to make the change on timing heading and we have to add the social media icons with the clickable links and the sign up form so let's do this we are going back here on this editing panel and after that we have to go to this content option so let's click on content and after that from logo setup we have selected text logo and which is collecting information from this website but now i want to add a custom logo to do this simply i have to click on this graphic logo and after that i have to select the custom logo so let me click on select logo and from here you can upload a logo by clicking on this select files or if you have got the logo already on your website simply go to media library and then select the logo which you want to use in this case i'm going to use this logo and after that let me click on insert logo and after that if i click on save all change and now if i take you back here on the project and if i reload this page you are going to see we have got the logo added so this is how simple it is to change anything on the coming soon page so let me take you back again and after that we are going to make change on this heading so let me type out better version is coming soon just as an example and after that if i click on this save all change and if i take you back here currently we have got something is happening here but if i reload this page you are going to see better version is coming soon so this is pretty simple pretty easy right so now let me take you back and now we are going to change the background image and for this you have got few more options if you want you can use a video which you can use from youtube or you can upload a video file manually so let me show you by uploading a video from youtube or adding a video from youtube if i take you to youtube and let me type out here nature just an example and after that let's say i want to add video link copy video url and if i type it out here you are going to see that this video is going to be added up if i take you here and then click on this save all change and now if i take you back here let's reload this page and it is going to load the background video just take a look how it is looking like right so let's say you are creating a website for birds or bird industry you can add this beautiful um, video background so let me take you back into the editing panel and after that i am going to work on actually i'm going to add the custom image so let me click on custom image and after that i'm going to click on this media library and from here i am going to select this image which i have downloaded from pixels if you want free image you can use pixels which is completely free and here is the image that i have just downloaded you can download any image from here and use on your website completely free so let me take you back and after that i'm going to click on insert image and then if i take you and click on this save all change if i take you back instead of this video background we are going to see that our image is added but we want to add some opacity in the background so let me take you back and after that if you just notice after image we have got few options as you can see set background overlay so we are going to add some background overlay which is currently selected as black color but we are going to increase the opacity of the overlay so it will look nicer so let me take you like to six okay just take a look how it is going to be darker a little bit darker okay so i'd love to keep it to six or seven so let's try six so save all chains and if i take you back here let's reload this page yeah it's looking much better and the text are appearing um, quite right and clearly so let me take you back and i'm going to show you the other things uh, as we have got the social media icons and then this sign up form with this custom uh, footer menu so let's add the social media icons so let me take you here on the editing panel and after that if i take you a little bit down you are going to see uh, yeah here we have got this countdown timer so let's select the countdown timer currently it is 
enabled right so now let's say you want to add a specific time let's say you want to publish this website on 6th march 2021 at let's say 10 instead of 10 pm let's select am and 10 am okay now if i click on save all chains right here okay and if i take you back here you are going to see instead of this 23 hours we are going to see something else it is going to be changed so based on your need you can add the timer as you can see 4 days 11 hours 38 minutes and 23 seconds remaining now let me take you back and i have got few things to explain here uh, one thing actually so as you can see here countdown action so when this time will be passed sorry not here when this time will be passed what should this timer do so if i take you back here we are going to select this from this option we can hide the counter let's say the date or the time frame is passed we can hide the counter we can disable coming soon or maintenance page so that people are going to be able to access our website as it was normally and or you can select url redirect let's say you want to target or uh, redirect your visitors to a new website you can simply do this as well so let me take select this one disable coming soon or maintenance page and after that i'm going to still click on this save all chains and it is going to be uh, all right now if i take you a little bit down again then we have got this subscribe form which is really important so as you can see we have got enable automatic subscribe pop-up if you need a pop-up form you can select this one but i would love to go with the basic one which is the static subscribe form so i'm going to select enable in page subscribe form and after that you can add few more gdpr things or any other message if you need but i'd love to keep this as it is it is completely fine and after that if i click on this save all chains and if i take you here let's reload this page you are going to see we have got this subscribe form added now let's say instead of this color here on this button we want a color like this as we have got this color shame so in this button so let me show you how you can change the color so let me take you back and after that let me take you here oh, okay so i'm actually going to show you the work on the next step on the customized things so let's keep this as it is we are going to add few more things right here so let me take you back and after that if i yeah here we go we have got social media things so let's say i want to add facebook instagram and linkedin as our social media things and i want to make the change let's say for facebook i want to provide my social media id here which is ajhar rafi for instagram i'm going to provide my id here for linkedin i'm going to provide my id here now you can select social icons location currently they are selected to footer small icons so for this reason we are seeing or actually they're not appearing yet so let me take you back but now if i click on small or sorry save all chains you are going to see if i take you back again reload this page you are going to see that we have got these icons too small and they're touching the footer bar so we want to make them a little bigger and we want them placed right here or here so let me take you back on our editing panel after that if i take you back or actually at the bottom of this page you are going to find social icons location we have to select from here below content big icons so let's select this one let me click on save all chains and now if i take you back right here if i reload this page you are going to see we have got big icons and they are working nice now if i click here on this facebook or let's say instagram they are going to take us to the click clicked link okay so we have connected our pages here so we have to uh, you have to connect yours now let's go back here on this editing panel and after that we are going to work on the footer uh, which we currently have like this made by this thing so we are going to make the change right here so let me take you back here and i'm going to delete everything from here then i'm going to type out copyright then this copy and let's say yeah 2021 just as an example let's click on save all chains and now if we if i take you here if i reload this page you are going to see everything changed copyright see 
Rafi 2021. Everything is looking great. Now, let me show you something else here regarding this stuff and then I'm going to show you how it is going to collect email address of your visitors from this page or form. So let me take you back on this editing panel. We are going to customize and after that we have got this color here as active here. So we want to make the change. So let me click here and after that if I take you to this color and you can simply select by providing the color code if you have got the color code. So I'd love to go with this way as of now and now if I click on save all chains and if I take you back here let's reload this page just take a look we have got the exact color scheme added right here so everything looks good now one thing I was about to show you is how this form is going to collect emails so let me provide an email address here or let's say another email mm. I'm providing just the email which I don't use usually and now if I click on submit you are going to see thank you your sign up request was successful so your visitors are going to see this message now let me show you where can you can get this email address which is just been submitted so if I take you back and from here if you select this one CMP subscribers so if I click here you are going to see this person has just subscribed to your email address or sorry email list and you can see the IP address first name last name if you added okay so now if I take a, take you back on CMP basic setup again and from where we were on content and from actually not content we are customized and from here we have changed the active color and after that we have got font color so as of now with this white color it is looking great so we are going to keep this as it is but if you want you can change the color from here and then we have got these options heading font if you want you can change the font family you can change the font weight font size then the letter spacing and other information based on it so i am going to keep them as they are because these are the basic stuffs i believe you already know how to make the change if you know how to uh, use microsoft word okay so let me click on save all chains and after that we have got SEO and analytics from this page you can provide your website's title which is SEO friendly and from here SEO description provides some information about your business so that it is going to work on regard your on regard of the search engine optimization and ranking okay and after that I, it is currently selected to discourage search engines from indexing this site okay so you can simply uncheck if you have provided everything properly here on with SEO optimization so let me just click on this one and then if you want you can add Google Analytics on this um, landing page or coming soon page so that whenever someone will visit on your website you will get a signal like someone has visited on your website so if you click here you're going to be able to provide the Google Analytics tracking ID right here and after that you have to simply click on this save all change button and it will be totally fine to move forward then we have got custom CSS if you know custom CSS works you can and if you want to stylize a little more and if you want to add more functionalities of this uh, coming soon page you can go with custom CSS works then we have get, got advanced stuff where we basically have to do nothing at all as you can see so in this case we are going to keep it as it is so no worries now if I click on save all chains and if I take you back on the project page if I reload this page and here we go we have got the exact landing or uh, coming soon page which we intended to build okay with just a few uh, chains like we have made some change here and we have made some change here other than this we have got everything similar to the other page so this was it guys i believe you have found this video helpful and if you did please give this video a like share this video to help your friends let me know your opinion by commenting below subscribe to my channel to get more helpful videos about wordpress website management and how to build wordpress websites professionally so thank you so much once again and i have to see you in my next video have a good day bye bye